Block 2 clearly has no qualms taking a life. It would seem still very odd to see someone just explode like that for seemingly no reason. Glinder, she's dangerous. Ozpin, nodding my head I say, yes, all hunters and huntresses are, but I am well aware she is beyond just dangerous. Trust me, all the more reason I want her near so I can keep an eye on her. I don't believe for a second she is around because of that young man's semblance though. Glinder, agreed. Ozpin, but there is a connection. Let's try and find out what it is while they attend school. We should also look into the boy's background. Could give us a clue. Trust me, Glinder. We need to be very precise with how we handle this woman. My instincts are telling me she can be of great help in our war with Salem somehow. With a sigh, she nodded. Glinder, fine. I don't like this, but I understand your reasoning. I can see the point in keeping her where we can literally see her. Nodding. I say, good, now, we both have things to do, I have a few calls I need to make as well, need to talk to a certain old crow for one, 213, chapter 27, sometimes, to defeat evil, you need another kind of evil, after what felt like years of waiting, it was finally time for my master to take his test with the rest of the students, as such, we were all on the cliffside outside of Beacon listening to Ozpin talk about the trial. Well, the students all were. I was just staring at Ozpin. Well, more like looking at his soul. He is rather old. I can't tell if he's as old as I'm though. Close maybe? He's at least 100,000 years old. I remember Ozma and Salem ruled over the humans when they popped back up. But I can't remember the exact time frame for it all. Ozpin took a quick break to drink from his legendary cup, and tried to sneak yet another peek at me. It's clear he didn't buy Jake's story about me being his summon. Well, I'm his summon, technically, but not because of his semblance. I was broken out of my thoughts when they started to launch the kids into the forest to start the trial and Ruby yelled in glee and fun. Ruby, we ee ee, Johnny, no, really, what is the land in gay ee 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 ee, Jake? Saba, I want you to catch me before I crash, okay? Saba, 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 say I be be ear. As Jake was sent flying off into the distance with the other students, I was still just staring at Ozpin. Ozpin, you, you, you going to do as he commanded? Turning my head to look at the still screaming Jake flailing in the air like the pathetic mongrel he is, I could only mentally sigh. Artoria. TCH. Bending my legs slightly, I jumped off the ground cracking the cliffside as I launched myself after my pathetic master. Coming up to the still screaming pile of disappointment, I grab him like the sack of potatoes he is and tossed him over my right shoulder. As we continued to fall down to the forest, I heard Ruby yell birdie no, followed by several gunshots from a few people. I always thought it was clever how they used the force of their weapons to slow their descent. Not bothering to pay any more attention to everyone falling, I crashed down onto the forest floor, creating a small crater. I then dropped the shivering child inelegantly onto the ground. Jake, oh if that was horrible. They made it look like they had so much fun in the show. But that shit is terrifying in real life. Ozpin is fucking insane to just launch us like that. Jake then got up from the ground and started to dust himself off while talking to me. Jake. You could have been more gentle with me you know. When I didn't answer him he looked up, only to find me just silently staring at him. Jake, I don't know why I keep forgetting who I am dealing with. Whatever, come, let's go. I started to follow him as we started making our way north, towards the goal of this little trial. As we were walking, I kept searching the souls around myself. None of them were particularly strong in the grand scheme of things but a few were of note. When I first saw Ruby, I was surprised by how strong her soul was. It felt on par with Glinder's soul. Honestly, the entire main cast has strong souls, while a lot of the extras had average souls. Still though, to be that age and have a soul as strong as Superman? Damn impressive honestly. Or, could simply be because of Aura. I was broken out of my musings by several growls around us. Jake, R. Looks like the puppies have come out to play. Alrighty, Saba, do your thing. Rolling my eyes, 
I just walked up to the closest grim creature, a bewolf I think it was called. What was really interesting to me though, was it not reacting to me in the slightest. Even when I poke it on its grim mask it just looked around in confusion. Source, https colon slash slash v dot fandom dot com slash wiki slash bewolf. Jake, huh, neat. They can't see you. How does that even work? Ignoring him, I did my final test and directed some killing intent towards the Grim. This did catch its attention, as it turned to look directly at my position and quickly pounced at me. I simply, and rather lazily, backhanded its head clean off its body. I then made quick work of the rest of the Grim that had us surrounded. After the last of the Grim was fading away into black particles, I turned to look at Jake and spoke with as much annoyance as I could. Artoria, I was summoned for such weak foes. Are you so weak that this needs me to raise my hand? He smiled dryly at me and said, Look, they'll get stronger, and we are not as powerful as you, Saba. We're only human after all, yeah? Shrugging his shoulders he then started to make his way north again. Jake, I am surprised I have not run into anyone yet. As we continued making our way to the ruins with the relics, I noticed one of the stronger souls had started to hover around us, turning my head to look towards the soul. All I saw as a bird atop of a tree. Ah, that must be Raven Bramwin. Raven kept watching for a while before she flew off somewhere else, probably to watch Yang, her daughter, some more. Never really understood how her and Crow could turn into birds. Was that ever explained? While I was thinking about the feathery siblings, we broke out of the forest and into the clearing that led to the temple ruins. Jake, how did I not run into anyone yet? Geez. Just then there was a loud yell as a girl was singing I'm the queen of the castle. While playing with a rook chess piece. Jake, R. Just in time I guess. Let's go join them, Saba. As we were walking up to the group, Yang spoke up as she saw us. Yang. Oh, you are real. Cool armor girl. Blake, what do you mean real? Yang, I mean, look at her. She's see-through. I thought I was hallucinating when I saw her at the launch pads. Hee <laughs> hee. Blake, I guess that is fair. Source, both are from the https colon slash slash v dot fandom dot com website. Yang see how long on the left with Blake Belladonna on the fight. Before anyone could say anything else. Ruby then joined us as a loud monstrous roar came from the forest. We all turned to see Pyre burst into the clearing, being chased by a deathstalker grim. A giant scorpion basically, source the same as the last two pictures. Ignore the useless journey hanging from the deathstalker tail tilde. Blake, did she just run all the way here with a deathstalker on her tail? Jake, don't worry everyone. I got this, or, rather, the spirit my semblance summon will. Saba, kill that grim. Releasing an annoyed huff, I appeared above the grim instantly and exekicked its head. A loud explosion sounded out from the force of my kick as half of the grim vaporized instantly from my attack while the kinetic force of the kick blew apart the earth around it. Blake, did she just teleport? Yang, forget that. Did you see the power behind that kick? How awesome was that? Everyone was interrupted by a scream coming from above us. We all looked up to see Vice Shni screaming as she hung on for dear life to the talon of a rather large knee vermor. Source, same as before Tilda. Jake, that one as well, Saba. With an exasperated sigh I bent down and then jump, cracking the ground heavily again, my way up to the grim and Vice. Arriving in no time. I simply backhand this one as well, obliterating most of its upper body with my attack. As we started to fall back down to the ground, Vice coughed to get my attention. Vice, hello, um, nice to meet you. However, if I could impress upon you to save me if you are able to, I would be eternally grateful. Looking at her, I sigh. I move over to her, and hold her in the princess style. Vice, thank you very much. Miss shaking my head at her, she wrapped her arms round my neck and prepared for the impact. Much to her, and everyone's, surprise when we hit the ground there was no large impact or crater. Honestly, I didn't want to deal with her bitching about how hard the landing would have been. More so when a little splash of magic could prevent me from hearing her complain. As I let her down, she nodded to me as she thanked me. Jake however, 
Just had to speak up. Jake, what the hell, Saba? I knew you could have made the landing smooth. Yang, that was awesome. Thankfully for me, Yang's outburst pulled everyone's attention from Jake as she rushed up to me. Yang, that was so awesome. How did you do that? You were like Zoom, boom. Do you normally fight with no weapons like me? Blake, Yang, let the poor woman go. We got our piece. Let's go finish this test. Yang, R, right. Get your piece, Ruby. I'll meet you back up at the meeting point. Ruby, R. Okay. She then poofed into quite a few red rose petals before cheering. Ruby, who? Last one, and it's a horse eye. Jake, wait what? What do you mean the last one? We all turn to look at Ruby, and all the pedestals. The empty pedestals. Jake, oh, what the hell is this? Does this mean I failed? Yang, cheer up dude. You killed some powerful Grim. That is to count for something. Well, I mean... She did. You did jack squat, but you know what I mean. As the group started to make their way back, Jake was just grumbling and generally bitching about the situation, Tilda a while later, back up at the Beacon Cliff Tilda. As we all arrived, Ospin waved at us with a smile on his face and a cup in his hand. Ospin, welcome back everyone. Jake wasted no time in speaking up though. Jake, Headmaster Ospin. There were not enough chess pieces for everyone. I was unable to get one because of that. Ospin, really? Oh my. How strange. Maybe I am getting forgetful as I am getting older. Well, how about this? Since you completed the trial with everyone here, I'll just add you to one of those teams. Jake smiled and nodded his head. Jake, yay, sure. That works for me. This smells like a play by Ozpin. I bet he was counting on this kind of scenario to happen, so he could control who Jake was teamed up with. Why, though? He should more than likely be able to watch Jake, or more precisely me, regardless of which team he ended up on. Ozpin. Wonderful. I'll have you join Ruby's team, since you are already familiar with her more or less. Now then. Congratulations for passing students. Let us return to the academy and get the show on the road. Students. Yeah. Woo. Tilda Beacon Academy dorms at night after the rewards Tilda. As all the kids were getting their areas set up on the frankly rather old and piss poor looking beds. I just watched from the side of the door. Co-ed bedrooms are still a little wild to me. But a different world with crazy man-killer monsters would shift how society works in a lot of ways. Looking around at most of the main cast from the internet show, I couldn't help but notice and then sneer at the slowly forming lewd look on the plankton's face. He had finished setting up his corner of the room rather fast, and was now just watching the girls like a damn creep. Truly, nothing but hormonal garbage. If he does anything like that to me, I am going to rip his D. My thought was interrupted by Yang walking up to me and addressing me with excitement in her voice. Yang, I still really love your armor. Let me introduce myself properly. I'm Yang. Nice to meet you. What's your name? As Jake was about to open his mouth, I instead answered her myself. Artoria. My name is Artoria. Jake, what the hell? Saba, isn't it bad for people to know your true name? I merely scoffed at him and said, there is no holy grail war going on, master. I sense no mana signatures of other servants or masters. I can't even sense the grail itself. Hiding my name has no meaning here. Ruby, mana, grail, Jake. Don't worry about it, Ruby. Vice, by mana, do you mean magic? Blake, magic is real? Artoria, of course magic is real. Vice, I don't believe that. Anything magical is clearly just an unknown semblance. Artoria. Then it is a good thing magic does not need nor care if you believe in it in order to work. I then decided to leave and started to sink into my shadow slowly. The girls all gasped at the action, with Blake muttering how cool that was. Jake, whoa, hey, Saba, where are you going? Slowing down my descent even further I look at him and said, that headmaster of this school, he interests me. His soul is old, but he is so incredibly weak. I want to know why. Jake, oh, you, okay, um, yay, sure. Just be careful of what you say about me. Without saying anything else, 
I quickly disappeared. Following my senses to the strongest soul in the school, I appeared in a shadow near the wall in Ospin's office. Source, https colon slash slash v dot fandom dot com slash wiki slash Ospin percent 27s underscore office. He was currently seated behind his desk taking a sip from his coffee cup while he and Glinda were listening to Crow talk about something. Deciding that I didn't feel like wasting time and spying on them, I started to rise out of the shadow. To all of their credit, they reacted to my presence almost instantly and turned towards me. As I finished leaving the shadows and stepped into the room proper, Ozpin spoke up. Ozpin, ah, Saba, welcome. Artoria. Artoria, Ozpin, I am sorry, Artoria, my name, it is Artoria, using my class has no meaning right now, Ozpin, class, Artoria, ask my summoner, I have no desire to explain, Crow, I understand what you two were talking about now, Ozpin, I have to agree with Glinda on this one, she is causing all of my instincts to go off, in a bad way, Ozpin, nonsense, we have nothing to fear from Artoria. You, right, Artoria. I answered him while I looked around his rather empty room. Artoria, unless my summoner commands me to attack you, or you attack him or myself, I have no reason to wantonly slaughter such weak humans or extremely disappointing ones. In your case, I looked directly at Ozpin when I had said the last bit of my sentence. Ozpin, oh, and... Why am I such a disappointment in your eyes? Artoria, your soul is old. Maybe even as old as me? But you are so unbelievably weak. It nearly disgusts me. Everyone's eyes widen at that, as the gleam in Ozpin's eyes sharpens as he leans in and rests his chin on his hands. Ozpin, you can see my soul, and... How old are you exactly? And how old do you think I am? I tilt my head a little as I answer, yes, I can. As for my age it is rude to ask a woman, but I will humor you so I can get some answers myself. I am over three and a half million years old. As for you, I want to say a hundred thousand years at the very least. Crow, damn. You are ancient. Glinda smacked him on his arm for that outburst, while he scowled at her. Ozpin, well, you are quite a bit older than I am. I am around one hundred and fifty thousand years old. Give or take a few thousand years. Don't keep a very accurate count, you see, Artoria. And yet you seem to be hardly any stronger than the other humans in this room. How disappointing. Ozpin, you see, there is a reason for that. I. But he was interrupted by a portal opening behind me and a woman with a grim mask attacked me. I was wondering when the little birdie would make her move. Source, the wiki tilde. I didn't even make a motion to defend myself as Raven's sword went for my neck. Much to everyone's great surprise, when the blade met my neck the expected outcome didn't happen. In fact, nothing did. As her blade hit my skin, it just stopped and released a soft ting sound. Raven, wah. I then vanished from in front of Raven, and appeared behind her. I gripped her by the back of the neck tightly and raised her off the floor. She gasped in shock and tried to pull at my hand with one hand while trying to stab me with her sword in the other. Artoria, at least you have a warrior's mind even in this situation. Still trying to attack instead of whimpering like a babe in her mother's grip. I recognize your wonderfully grey soul from the forest earlier today. Give me a reason why you attacked, and I might very well spare your life if I can understand it. Crow, Raven. He then brought out his scythe from Tearwind knows where, and was about to charge me when Glinda put a hand on his shoulder to stop him. Ignoring the little outburst, I loosened my grip a bit to let Raven talk. Raven, you are a monster, you feel. Just like her. No. Worse. I won't let you be near my daughter. Artoria. Her? Her who? Sadly. Raven went back to struggling against my grip. Damn it. I was so close to learning about Salem. Well whatever. I'll find a world map soon to see where this dragon-shaped landmass is. Most people believe that is where Salem is. Artoria, so you attacked out of a desire to protect your kin. I can respect that. 
I then tossed her towards Crow rather suddenly. Crow, whoa. He dropped his scythe as he caught his sister while she was coughing and Crow was making sure there would be no lasting damage. Ozpin spoke up. Ozpin, sorry about that, Artoria. Artoria. I cannot begit a mother's wrath at a perceived threat to her offspring. But, who was she comparing me to? Ozpin seemed hesitant, as he tossed a glance at Glinder. Ozpin, no offense meant, Artoria. But I do not think I trust you enough yet for that information. I nodded my head at that and said, that is fair. I will just task my summoner then, it matters little to me where I get the information. Everyone's head snapped to me at that remark. Ozpin, what do you mean? You ask your summoner, Artoria, just that. He seems to have some advanced knowledge about this world. I am sure he will know who the little bird was talking about. Glinder, and for what reason do you think that child will know what you seek? Artoria, he has already displayed he has knowledge about events yet to happen. He sought out that child, Ruby, so he could get into Beacon early like her. He specifically ordered me not to kill all the attackers because he didn't want to give up the advantage his knowledge had so early. Crow, why are you telling us this? Didn't your summoner, as you call him, tell you to not spill the beans or something? Artoria, his exact order was, be careful what you say about me. So I am. I'm being careful to get every detail right, and proper, as ordered. Crow, oh. That's all he managed to say as he was a bit dumbfounded with my response. With this, they should understand more about the relationship between my summoner and myself, and how I view it. With a sigh, Ozpin just shook his head at the whole situation. Ozpin, I will of course be looking into that, but still, you'll have to forgive me if I don't take your word for it and still not tell you. I shrug my shoulders and say, like I have stated, I care not where the information comes from. Coughing some more. Raven finally got herself under control and pushed herself out of her brother's arms to stand up. She glared at me with obvious hostility. Raven, what are you even, creature? Why did my weapon do nothing to your neck? I turn my head to face her and calmly ask, and why should I answer your query little bird? What do you offer for such information? Raven, TCH. She just huffed and crossed her arms over her chest as she continued to glare at me. I just gave her a shit-eating smirk and said, not used to not getting your way, little birdie, not used to being unable to do anything about it either, I bet. I swear I was able to see the angry tick mark from anime appear on her forehead as her glare intensified. Artoria, humans are always so fun to torment and mess around with. Even in another world, you are all the same. Glinder, another world? Looking at her I say, Yet another item to add to the list to ask my summoner about it seems. Noticing a world map on one of the walls, I walked up to it and examined it. Artoria, another world, indeed. I turn around and start to sink in my shadow as I address them one last time. Artoria, I do hope we continue to meet in a peaceful manner like this. It would be a shame if you did something stupid to earn the ire of my summoner. Ignoring the shouts and questions quickly directed at me, I fully enter the shadows. That little useless warning should slow Ozpin down a bit from questioning my master and give me time to check out Salem. I really want to see how the black pools of Grim react to my black water. Stepping out of the shadows in the forest where they took their little test, I jumped up into the sky and headed northwest, crushing the meager speed of sound. It took me no time at all to pass the ocean and arrive at land once again. I continued onward, further inland. As I was passing over the land, it was quite noticeable to see just how the very earth itself started to darken. And soon enough, I started to see black tar-like spots appear dotted over the landscape sparsely. I kept going for a while before I found a pool big enough to catch my attention. Coming to a stop in the air, I then let gravity take hold as I fell down and landed with a soft thud near the liquid. As I was leisurely walking up to the pool, a bow wolf was forming in it and started to crawl out of it. After it finished crawling out of the pool, it shook off the remainder of the black liquid and then ran off in a random direction. Ha! Huh. I felt some kind of mana surge when that was created. So, these work off magic then? Well, not overly surprised I guess. They were created by a god after all. Walking up to the bank, 
I lowered myself and reached to touch the black tar, but much to my surprise, the liquid lurched away from me to avoid my touch. Question mark colon now that is an interesting reaction to an equally interesting creature. What are you? And what are you doing in my lands? Standing up, I turned around to see who was talking to me, and as I expected, it was the big bad herself, Salem. Source. Notice a pattern yet? Artoria, it is common courtesy to introduce yourself first. Or have you lost your manners when you were blackened? She peered at me for a moment, before she gave an ever so slight nod. Salem, you may call me Salem. Now, I asked you a question. 233, Chapter 28, but make sure you do not simply trade one evil for another. Artoria, my name is Artoria Alter, as for what I am, I turn away from Salem back to the grim pool and bend down. I reach out to try and touch it, only for it to lurch away again. Artoria, I am a summoned corrupted heroic spirit. Salem, a summoned spirit, is it? And, what are you corrupted by, exactly? A small smile forms on my lips as I stand back up and face her. My own black water starts to drip off parts of my armor, splashing lazily on the ground only to move to my feet and disappear. Artoria, all the world's evils. Salem's eyes widen ever so slightly at my display. Salem, now, that is very interesting. I can tell this water falling off of you is like the black pits the dark brother god left behind. But, also not stopping my display. I give a nod while I motion to the pit behind me with my hand. Artoria. It is the same with me. Do you know why your pits do not want to touch me? Salem frowned slightly at that and walked beside me and reached down to the black tar. Salem. No, I do not. I have never seen such reaction from the grim pools. Normally, they are all too eager to embrace someone. She scooped up some of the pool and started to pour it between each hand, like one would move a slinky. She then motioned for me to hold out my hand, which I did, but as she went to tip her hand to have the grim waters fall into mine, it just stayed in her hand unnaturally. Salem, most curious, frowning lightly. I looked toward the pool and asked Salem a question. Artoria, are you willing to sacrifice this pool for an experiment? Salem hummed in thought for a few seconds before responding. Salem, yes. While it is one of the bigger ones, in the end it's not a keystone pool. What are you thinking of doing? Giving a nod, I start to walk into the pit itself. All of the black tar started to move away, like I was splitting the Red Sea. Artoria, I am going to force this. When I was about waist deep in the grim pool, I started to release my own black water, and had it backtrack the way I walked in. Soon, more and more of my lovely black water started to rush out, and surrounded the pit. Salem had taken several steps back to avoid touching my black water, and was watching with great interest. When I felt like I had enough black water flowing around the entire pit, I made it create a dome over the pit. As the black water was forming over the grim pool, it started to violently vibrate. It almost looked like the grim pool was looking for an out, for some way to avoid what was about to happen. Artoria, there is no escape, so stop struggling. I had no idea if the grim pools were sentient in some way, but I spoke out regardless. Soon. The dome was finished forming, and I smiled as I gave my next command. With a thought, the black water obeyed, and it all came crashing down into the grim pool. But much to my shock when the black water started to merge with the grim pool, the pool started to release a loud and unnatural screech. It sounded like the dying screams of some great beast. While I winced at the volume, I was also just blinking in confusion. What the hell was that? The screeching only lasted a few seconds before it blessedly became quiet once again. As soon as the scream stopped, the mix of the grim pool and my black water started to rush towards me. I did nothing but stand there and let the liquid run over me completely. Soon, I could feel it start to change me. I trust my black waters, so I did nothing to resist this, but I could feel I was changing on a fundamental level in some way. POV Switch Salem. I had watched with great interest as this new creature, this spirit of sorts, had entered one of my grim pools, 
It was intriguing to see the pools react in such a way to her presence. As I told her, I have never seen the pools reject someone in all my life. I was even more surprised when the dome she created collapsed, and there was an unearthly scream. It couldn't have come from the woman, by the simple fact it was too feral sounding, much like a beast in its last desperate throes of life. I wasn't given much of a chance to ponder the source or meaning of this scream before the pool changed. I was now staring at an egg-shaped mixture of her black water, and my grim pool, though, you would never be able to tell they were different at this point. There was a symbol of sorts on the front of the egg facing me. I had no idea what it was, but it was purple, and had what looked like. Fox ears. Strange. This whole situation is so strange. But I welcome it. When I first sensed such a dark presence entering my lands, I was greatly shocked. The darkness I was sensing was almost like myself, but not quite. I wouldn't say more powerful, but chaotic. Yes. Chaotic is what I would say now that I am near her. With my darkness, and my grim, we had one purpose. Death and destruction, but with hers, it was everywhere all at once. Like she would destroy a city, only to turn around and save another one the next second. It was this great chaotic darkness that made me seek her out, and open a dialogue. It is also interesting that none of my grim can see her. I can't even see her through their eyes. I'll need to ask about that. I was broken out of my thoughts by a pulse of power from this dark egg in front of me. Several seconds later, the egg started to get glowing red cracks all around it, while the power I could feel inside was building ever more. I was prepared to leave should the egg explode outwards, but much to my surprise everything just stopped. And then there was a sound like glass breaking and the egg shattered and fell down turning back into a liquid. The woman was soon revealed as the liquid dropped off her floating, changed, form. The feeling I got from her now, was much darker than before, if such a thing was possible. When she opened her eyes, and looked at me. I couldn't help but shudder a little in an unknown feeling as I looked into those glowing golden eyes. POV switch Artoria. As I opened my eyes, I saw Salem staring at me, choosing to ignore her for now. I noticed I was floating above the grim black water pool, as I floated down to the ground near Salem. I tried to take in my changed form, for I was indeed changed. I could feel it. My connection to my black waters was as firm as it has ever been. I could feel it flowing through my veins as if I had a real body. The anger I would always feel just under the surface was also tamer. It was still there, even more so, in greater romance still, but I felt like I had a lot more control over it. Waving my left hand, I created a mirror out of ice, like I had done the first day I became the new me. As I took in my new look, a cruel smile seemed to find its way on my face but with black's clearer and glowing gold eyes. Source, https colon slash slash wallpapers.com slash wallpaper slash anime fate series fate zero saber alter silver hair armor sword black ribbons red eyes 21306 question mark page equals. Just now I noticed I was holding both my beloved sword Excalibur Morgan, and its sheath, not Havilon and how they had also changed. I quickly finished gazing at my new form, and with a nod I turned back to Salem as the mirror shattered into mist. I feel absolutely amazing. I would even say I feel more complete. Not fully complete, but more. Which is strange. I need to ask Lady Lilith what is going on with me. Salem, it seems your experiment was a success. Giving her a nod I say, yes, it would seem so. I feel great, and more complete. Would you like to take a dip? She shook her head at my question. Salem, no. I can tell that new substance will change me on a fundamental level. I have come too far to change who I am now. Artoria, suit yourself. With a thought, the grim black water came rushing at me, and was quickly absorbed. I instinctively knew that I could change the effects my waters had on people if I so chose to, or they could mostly stay the same as before. I also felt I had another new ability with my water. With a thought, black water started to bubble on my right shoulder. Soon however, a raven with a grim mask was formed. It spread its wings out and let out a little core as it got comfortable on my shoulders. Salem narrowed her eyes at the raven, 
and simply stared for a few seconds. Salem, that is not a grim. Shaking my head, I pat the bird. Artoria. No, it is not. It's simply my black water, taking a new form. But it is still very much my black water. I held out my left hand, opening my palm up. The raven could once more before it jumped from my shoulder and splashed down on my hand like water. It quickly reformed in less than a second later however. Artoria, this is a simple construct, really, but also so much more dangerous than a mere grim. You can't kill water, after all. Well, it's not even water really, but you understand. Salem gave a slow nod at that while keeping an eye on the raven, with another thought. The raven melted back into black water and was absorbed in my hand. Lowering my hand, I spoke to Salem. Artoria, by the way, I had a talk with a soul that was as old as yours. His name was Ospin. During this talk, a woman named Raven compared myself to another, calling me as much, or worse than her. I have a feeling it is you. Salem's face seemed to get a little darker as she responded to my question. Salem, I see you meet my ex. And yes, if Raven was comparing your darkness to someone, it was indeed most likely myself. Why were you talking to Ospin? Artoria, my summoner is attending his school. And I saw how old his soul was, but how weak he is. It caught my attention. You are much like him. Old, but not nearly as powerful as you should be for your rage. Why? He was going to tell me before Raven interrupted that. Salem, you can see souls interesting. As for our strength, I don't know what to say. I have tried numerous things over the course of my existence, but I have found that knowledge gives me the most power. Knowledge and experience. Artoria. I guess that is fair. Not everyone can keep growing I guess. Salem, you said you were a summoned spirit. I have a few questions about that. Arto era, why not? We'll take turns asking our questions to each other, to keep it fair. Salem gave a small nod as she asked her first question. Salem, you said you were summoned. Summoned from where? Artoria, another world, obviously. I am normally summoned for something called a holy grail war. I honestly have no idea how that little human managed to summon me to this world. It doesn't have the grail on it to begin with. Salem frowned slightly as she mumbled another world. Artoria, my turn. Why do you not want to take a dip in my black water? Salem waved her hand dismissively when she answered. Salem, as I said, I do not want to change on such a fundamental level. It would inevitably change my goal. And I have worked so long that that cannot happen. Giving a hum in acknowledgement, she asked her next question. Salem, speaking of goals, now that you have been summoned here, what is yours? I cracked a cruel smile at that. Artoria to crush the light in this world, and subdue it, make this world mine, as I have a plan for it. Salem frowned at that and said, do you now? I think your goal, and my goal are very much opposed. Artoria, oh, and, what exactly is your goal, little witch? Ignoring my little jab she said, a few things. I will gather the relics left by the brother gods, and summon them. They will see a humanity divided, and destroy everything. If even this fails to kill me, then I will wait until humanity will inevitably return again, and when they do, I will rule over them as a goddess for eternity. Artoria, so, you seek death, and failing that, you seek to rule, why go and summon some gods just to try and die though? Salem, I have been cursed with immortality by the brother gods, I will always revive after being killed. The God's curse states that so long as this world exists, I will live, so I will have them destroy everything. I hummed in thought while crossing my arms over my chest. Artoria, do you remember the exact wording of your immortality curse? Salem's face lightly twisted in anger and said, yes. So long as this world turns, you shall walk its face. You must learn the importance of life and death. Only then may you rest. After hearing the curse. I could only laugh in her face. Salem, please, do enlighten me. What is it that you find so funny? Artoria, your plan will fail. All normal plans will fail. The key to the curse is the last bit. Narrowing her eyes, she asked me to clarify. Artoria, you have to learn the lesson those gods want you to learn. Nothing will free you of this curse until you do. Hell, I bet this entire planet could explode 
and the curse would simply reform the planet with you on it. Salem. And why do you think this to be true, Artoria? Because most gods can be assholes from my experience, and that is something I would expect an asshole to do. They cursed you with immortality in the first place right? Why would something as simple as destruction free you from it? Salem looked down in thought over my words, as I just shook my head at her. Artoria, so naive. But, to be expected of one so young. Salem looked up and scowled at me. Salem, young? Artoria, indeed. Ospin said he was around 150 years old. I assume you are also around that. If so, yes, you are young in my eyes, Salem, and, pray tell, how old are you? Giving her a cheeky smirk, I say, I'm over three and a half million years old. Salem eyes widened a smidgen at my retort. Salem, oh, I see. Then yes, I would be young to someone such as yourself. Shaking my head, I then sigh. Artoria, anyway, it looks like our endgame goals will conflict. Why not skip the attempt at suicide by gods, and just skip drooling? I do not care if you oversee everything, honestly. I want to give this world to the dark goddess Tiawin. It matters not to me if you rule it. What does matter though, is if it's a pile of rubble or not. Salem, goddess Tiawin? I have never heard of her. Artoria, and what a big shock that is. Look, I am giving you a choice. Either I have you rule this world, and lead it into a dark, golden age, kicking and screaming if need be, or I remove you from the chessboard as it were. Salem huffed as she crossed her arms over her chest. Salem, I have just told you, I am immortal. Your threat is meaningless. Giving her a cruel smile, I draw Excalibur out of its sheath. Artoria, Salem, I can, and have, killed gods with this sword. Your little curse will not save you. Salem had taken an involuntary step back when Excalibur Morgan was fully drawn. Salem, you expect me to. With a small rush of air blowing past her, she flinched a little. I then sheathed my sword and smiled at her. She raised her right hand to her cheek, and touched the blood that was slightly leaking from the cut. Salem, I couldn't even see that attack. And it's not healing. It's... It's not healing? Salem's eyes widened at the realization that her wound was, for once, not healing after she had received it. I was about to say something when I felt a tug from my master as he called for me. Artoria, TCH. Seems my summoner needs something. Think it over, Salem. I could kill you. But, you have the knowledge and skills to run this world better than anyone else. And as you said, a dip in my black waters would change you. Think it over. Salem was still standing there holding her lightly bleeding cheek in shock as I sunk into my shadow. Seconds later, I rose out of the shadow of my summoner who was standing in a bathroom of all things. Artoria, you desire something from me? Hearing my voice from behind him, he spun around and started to whisper yell at me. Jake, Saba, what the fuck did you tell? You look different. I really like it. Wait no, never mind that. What the hell did you tell Ozpin when you visited him? He wants to talk to me about some knowledge I shouldn't have. I tilt my head, and feign ignorance. Artoria, I didn't lie to him or anything. I followed your instruction, and was very careful that what I told him was the truth, as I knew it. Jake's eyes widened at that as he yelled, that's not. He coughed and spoke quieter. That's not what I meant when I said that, damn it. He turned away from me as he brought up his hands to his head and growled in frustration. Hey, serves you right, you little horn dog. He started to mumble to himself, but a word caught my attention. I smiled internally as I started to pick on my master some more. Artoria, reincarnation? Jake startled, seemingly to have forgotten I was here. Jake, R, yay, I am a reincarnator not originally from this world, but that doesn't matter, what does matter is what I am going to tell Ospin about how I know things I really have no place or reason in knowing. Artoria, indeed, how do you know these things? You seem like you can see the future. Jake's eyes lit up like he had just gotten a great idea. Jake, that's it. I'll just say it's a part of my semblance, that I can see parts of the future to a degree. He's rather stupid. So it should work. Raising my eyebrow, I then remember I do not have my faceplate on. 
I quickly remedy that situation and summon it. May not cover my entire face, but it does help hide some of my reactions after all. And Ospin, stupid, yay, no, the man is so much older than you will ever be, little boy. I was broken out of my thoughts by Jake slapping his cheeks. Jake, all right, I'll go with that. Nothing could go wrong. Okay, Saber, I want you to just go back to my team's room and wait for me to return. I don't want you fucking up my meeting with Ospin. I can salvage this. I know I can. I'm me after all. Right, I got this. With that, he left the bathroom with all the confidence in the world. Artoria, TCH, idiot. I sank into the shadows, and appeared in the team's dorm seconds later. Looking around as I stepped out of a shadow on the wall, everyone was in their beds sleeping. With a small wisp to myself I say, I think I have played around long enough. I then started to summon my new and improved Blackwater and began to flood the room with it. I also started to form ravens and had them leave to go and take a dive into any grim pool they could find. Artoria, time to get the show on the road. 242, Chapter 29 Because you may find that this new evil is so much worse. Announcement Buckle up, my dear readers Tilda. This is a longest chapter because I couldn't find a good spot to end it. So, enjoy this 5905 word chapter tilde. When I started to create my wonderful black water, I had only given it one command, and that command was show me something beautiful, show me what you can now do. As my black water was flooding the room and ravens were forming to leave under the door, I started to produce even more black water. Forget this small room. I am going to sink this entire city. Responding to my desire, the black water started to gush out from all around me like the torrent of a raging waterfall. This caused the door I was standing near to be blown off its hinges as it was smashed into. The noise had woken up Team RWBY, but sadly for them, it was much too late. Yang, Wa, Ruby, morning already? Blake, Yang, why are you so loud in the morning? Vice, I need my beauty sleep. People, I watched on as the black water surged towards all the girls. They all yelped in surprise before the water washed over them, and they disappeared from their beds. An interesting thing I made note of was that I could feel my waters changing them, and forming some sort of connection to myself. And it wasn't just Team RWBY either, as my water was making its way throughout the entire school I could feel it taking people into its embrace and changing them. All the while I could feel connections starting to form with everyone converted. Now that is an interesting development. I guess my black water has taken on more than just the ability to form grim-like constructs, from the grim pools. Soon, the four girls surfaced from the dark depths of my waters and to say they were changed, would be a massive understatement. As the girls all groaned, they steadily started to become aware of their surroundings as they looked around. The room was still completely flooded with my black water, as it was running over the walls and ceiling. They all closed their eyes in seemingly content as the water droplets from the ceiling dropped on them. Ruby, ah, but then Ruby broke them out of their daze when she noticed I was standing there watching them. She swiftly got up to one knee and bowed her head. The others followed suit as soon as they saw her and then myself. Girls, mistress, command us. Currently, I was glad I had replaced my faceplate, because my eyebrows were so high on my face they threatened to launch into orbit. Okay, I was not expecting that at all. I guess that is what the connection is for then. Quickly schooling my face, or at least my eyebrows. I took in their changed forms in order, Ruby, Blake, Vice, Yang, Source, https colon slash slash www.dvantar.com slash dishwasher 1910 slash art slash grim 7733452131. Peas, they have some NSFW stuff, so be warned before you check out more of it. And I have to say, they look damn awesome. Shaking my head slightly to clear it, I ask them a question. Artoria, do you remember everything? Girls, yes, mistress, we thank you for our change. Artoria, good, you also remember my summoner? Ruby, summoner? Oh, you mean the human male that was on our team? 
Jake, Artoria, yes, him, he is not necessary any longer, play with him as you will, but when you're done, remove him, Yang, yes, the little bastard always keeps his eyes glued to my chest, didn't even try to hide it, the prick, Blake, agreed, mistress, do you know where he is, nodding to Blake I say, yes, he's currently with Ozpin, in his office, why don't you all go and say hello while you're at it, do try to get Glinder into the waters, but not Ospin. No, I have a different plan for him, but if it's too much trouble, just kill everyone but Ospin. Vice. You will be done, mistress. Come on girls, we got a simpleton to hunt. Ruby, a shame about Jake, honestly. He has such a nice face, but everything about him besides his looks really ruins it. Yang, ha, huh? don't worry. Sis, we can find a better match for you Tilda. Much to my surprise, they all stepped into one of the shadows on the wall of the room, and disappeared as they bantered with each other. Well, that's a good thing to know. I guess they get several new abilities beyond just their changed bodies. <laughs> By now, I could feel that my black water had covered the entire ground floor of the school, and was now making its way up the school not wanting to stop my production of the water for even a second, I instead walked out of the room as the water continued to freely flow from me. As I was walking through the school halls that were now dripping with black water all over, I felt an immense calm wash over me. Even the screams I could hear every now and then when someone was pushed into the waters by their former friends only added to the serene feeling I had. I felt more and more connections start to form as I made my way to the front of the school. As I walked out of the school, I looked out onto the plaza with a cruel smile. I said I would drown this city and I intend to do just that. With a thought, my waters formed like a tidal wave in front of me, and started to sweep forward. As I watched my black water rush forward, I had an amusing thought. My summoner was so worried about changing the plot and giving up his advantage he thought he had with his foreknowledge. Well, swine, here is a new plot. Everyone submits, and a new dark world order is set in stone. My cruel smile widened when a familiar soul came rushing at me from the sky. Looking up, I saw a raven flying towards me. Or should I say, I saw a raven falling towards me. Raven, ah, what have you done to my daughter, monster? She had her sword drawn, and was ready to unleash hell on me the moment she got close. When I deemed she was close enough. I taunted her a bit before taking action. Artoria, care for a dip, Raven? Your daughter would give it a five-star rating, you know Tilda. And before she could even retort a thin wall of water shot up in front of her, and Raven disappeared into it. The water wall rippled a little as she entered before it collapsed and joined the rest of the now flowing lake of black water. Soon, I not only felt a connection form to Raven, but hundreds and soon thousands of people as my water finally reached the city proper. I calmly waited for Raven to change, and before long I was rewarded with such a wonderful sight when she surfaced. Source, https colon slash slash www.dviantart.com slash dishwasher 1910 slash art slash nevermore 7982849522. She groaned a little before looking around confused, much like her daughter had done before her. Soon however, she saw me and took the exact same position of submission as Team RWBY had. Raven, Mistress, Artoria, go. Help your daughter contain Ozpin if she needs it, and if Crow is there, have him take a swim as well. Raven, at once, Mistress. She then sank into the waters and I felt her presence instantly shift to where Team RWBY was. Oh, now that is a fine detail. They can also move via the waters. <laughs> Turning away from the direction of the city, I looked at the school, and sure enough, the entire thing was covered in my black waters. As I was smiling at this new water temple of sorts, I felt something from my waters. It almost felt like a question, or like it was seeking permission for something. As I focused on that feeling, I was made aware that my black water had reached the harbor, and had stopped. It was now, seemingly, asking my permission to corrupt the entire ocean. Artoria, you know what? In for a penny, in for a pound they say. With a thought, I granted my permission to my waters, 
and I could feel it get to work as it started to merge with the normal water. I stopped my creation of the black water, as it felt like I didn't need to produce it anymore. I sank into the waters and appeared next to the harbor to check on the speed at which normal water could be converted. Artoria, well, damn, that is pretty swift, if I am being honest. It's only been, what, 20 seconds and over half the harbor is now black water. As I was just casually watching my black water convert more and more of the harbor, I felt a tug on my consciousness. Raising an eyebrow, I focused in on the feeling, and soon Ruby's voice echoed in my mind. Ruby, mistress, we've taken out the human you told us to, and we've gotten Ospin, Glinda and my uncle Kraus around it. We cannot enter the bubble Ospin has raised though. We don't know what he is using to power it. Artoria, good work. Ruby, I'll be there in a moment. Sinking into my waters, I rose out seconds later next to Ruby in Ozpin's office. Looking around, the entire thing was like the rest of the school. Positively soaked and covered in my black water. Turning my attention to Ozpin, and the bleeding glinder with a dusty old crow holding her in his arms, I could only smile. Artoria, how cruel of you. Or does the lady know you're using her life's blood as fuel to power the protection bubble? Ozpin glared at me and simply said, You, giving him a small cruel smirk I say, me. Ignoring them for now, I look around at my new subordinates. Still while this is possible with my black water now, I am going to so abuse this. Rose and Yang were more or less fine. But Blake was missing an eye and even an arm. Turning to my left. I could see a beheaded vice laying on the ground and a dead raven pinned to the wall via a scythe. Artoria. My. You really are cruel. To kill a child and a relative. How in the world did that even happen? <laughs> Ruby. Let me. Mistress. I can tell you. Smiling that Ruby still had her energy. Even like this. I gave her a nod to continue. Ruby. So. It happened like this. Ye. Tilda with Team RWBY after getting the order from Artoria. Tilda, POV switch Ruby Rose, as my team and I stepped into the shadows after our mistress gave us our orders I couldn't help but ponder out loud. Ruby, you know, I am surprised how easily we know how to use our new abilities. Even more so, by how absolutely great and free I feel. Yang, I was just thinking the same thing sis. Lady Artoria is pretty damn amazing right? I knew she was super strong from the way she killed those grim. But what did she did to us? Easily takes the cake. Vice. Quite. Lady Artoria is full of surprises. Blake. I am glad she decided to bless us like this. Personally. I am with Ruby. I feel so free. The new abilities are just an added bonus really. Girls. Agreed. We were already at our destination, but we have not left the shadows just yet. Inside Ozpin's office, we could see the old man wasn't alone. He was with Glinder, and my uncle Crow, along with our target, along with some woman in a grim mask. Ruby, any idea who the lady with the snazzy mask is? As I looked at the girls, they all shook their heads. I hummed in thought as I tried to make a plan of action. Ruby. Okay, I know Lady Artoria said we can play with the human, but I honestly don't care about him enough to do that, and with the other three in the room, I think it might be better to just kill him fast and dirty, then move on to the others. Yang, Dibs, I want to do it. He stared at my breast so much. I need this sis. Laughing. I gave her a nod. Ruby, no problem. Yang, Yang, yes. She pumped her first excitedly and cheered. I guess she really took offense to his leering. Oh well, Blake. So, what should we do about the others? Kill them as well? Vice. We can't kill Ozpin. Lady Artoria has a plan for him. Remember? Blake. Right. Right. The other ones are free game. Ruby. Yay. We could also just delay till the mistress's water makes it up here. I can feel it expanding at a rather fast pace. Vice. That's true. Yang. Then why don't we just a fun, and fight Tilda? If we kill M, we kill M. If not, the water will get M. Ruby, works for me. Everyone else good with the plan? All the girls nodded, and I nodded back with a cruel smile forming on my lips. Ruby, ah, remember, we are dealing with the elite of the elite of hunters here. And the big boss, expect heavy resistance. Everyone, 
We are a lot stronger because of Lady Arturia's blessing, but don't overdo it, okay, everyone, right? Yang, me first. Before anyone could even react, Yang was already in the room with her first through the poor guy's chest holding his heart. Damn, she was really annoyed by his lecherous behavior it seems. Well, he got what was coming to him because of his own actions. I then saw Yang lean next to the boy's ear and say, I know you really liked me, Jake. By all the blatant staring at my chest. So, why not go the extra mile? She then viciously ripped her arm out of his chest while still holding his heart. Yang, and give me your heart for all eternity. Everyone was wide-eyed at the scene in front of them and stunned. Which was understandable honestly. We look so different now, so I can't blame them. The boy stumbled forward a few steps before falling to the ground, dead. Masked woman, why Yang? Yang, is, is that you? Yang, taking that as a cue, I signaled the rest of the girls to attack. We all blitzed out of the shadows, and attacked. And as we expected, even by taking them sort of by surprise, they were able to easily defend against the attack. I had chosen to go after my uncle Krau while Vice went after the masked lady. Blake had gone after Glinder, while Yang was taking a bite out of the heart in her hand. That left me a bit surprised to see after our first clash, as we backed up from everyone and regrouped. I couldn't help but ask a question to Yang. Ruby, really? Yang, really? Yang, what? I couldn't resist, okay? It looked so inviting. And, I'll be honest sis, it's not terrible. I mean, I wouldn't give it a full ten tenths for taste, but it's at least a seven. Blinking, I look at her dumbfounded. Ruby, ah really? Yang, mmm, try some? As she was handing the half-eaten heart to me, my uncle Krau called out. Krau, Ruby? Is that you, Ruby? What the fuck happened to you? Ruby, I'm turning to look at my uncle. I took a bite out of the heart. My eyes widened at the taste. Ruby, whoa, you're not lying. Yang, this is actually pretty good. Yang, hey, see, Blake, hey, can I? But before she could even finish asking, I quickly shoved the rest of the heart in my mouth and ate it. Blake, or oh, vice, such a glutton, I swear. Crow, this can't be happening. Someone wake me up please. There is no way that this is happening. I just gave my uncle a big smile to assure him. Ruby, don't worry, Uncle Crow, you'll be like us soon. It'll be fine Tilda. He only looked at me with horror in his eyes though. I tilted my head in confusion. Ruby, why do you look so scared? It's not a bad thing. Vice then let out a sigh and said, Ruby, your mouth is covered in blood. Yang, yay sis. I mean, I think it makes you look adorable, but I can see why a human would be unsettled. Ruby, ah, my bad. I then started to lick my lips and wiped off the blood with my sleeve. I then tried to give my uncle another award-winning smile. Crow, this isn't happening. This I sent you happening. Ruby, oh come on, what now? Ozpin, Ruby. What happened to all of you? Ruby, <laughs> Lady Arturia blessed us, that's all. And soon, you'll all join us. All four of the adults narrowed their eyes. Well, at least I think all of them did. As the one lady still had a mask on. Masked woman. I knew she was horrible news, Ozpin, damn it, I'll kill her. She then slashed at the windows, and burst forth turning into a bird like my uncle can, flying off towards Lady Artoria. Blake released a small giggle while covering her lips with her. Tend to Kalam, tend to Kalam, Blake, someone is eager to join us. Couldn't even wait a few minutes. Yang, how did she even know me? We all just shrugged our shoulders, honestly. I can't believe these hunters are letting us stall like this. The black quarter of Lady Artoria is nearly here, and we only had to exchange blows once. This is a bit too easy, isn't it? As if to mock me for such a thought. Ozpin took up his cane and activated its weapon mode. Ozpin, I know you are hurting right now, Crow, but that is no longer Ruby. That is a twisted abomination. We can't save her, only release her. Come you two. Take up arms. Ruby, TCH. I am still me. Crummy old man couldn't wait a few more minutes. Oh well. Come on everyone. Let's play some. We all charged. As Yang yelled dibs as she attacked Ospin. 
I once again went after my uncle, merely treating this as another training session, but with a twist. The twist is death. He heed Hilda, as my uncle and I were trading blows. There was a flash of golden light and then Yang flew past me with a yelp. She then got embedded into the wall rather deeply. Yang groaned as she pulled herself out of the wall. Yang, magic sure is some bullshit Tilda. Oh well, let's turn up the heat then. She then activated her semblance and rushed back to Ozpin. Meanwhile, out of the corner of my eye, I could see Blake and Vice seemingly having the time of their lives attacking Glinder. Vice, come now. Professor, do keep up, Blake, you're a teacher at this grand academy, how can you let two newbies pressure you like this, <laughs> Glinder, brats, I could hear the giggles of both Blake and Vice at her retort, ducking under a swipe from my uncle, I then countered with a thrust with the butt end of my weapon, he spun to the left much to my expectation, and was met with an elbow to the face as I jumped to meet it, Crow, fuck, after a few more clashes, we backed off to resettle our stances. It seems he wanted to waste some time talking to me, which I was more than happy to allow. I could feel Lady Artoria's water was so very close now. Crow, Ruby, you need to snap out of it. You need to fight this. Please, come back to me. Spinning my scythe around in a flourish, and then embedded it into the floor as I smiled at him. Ruby, there is nothing to fight. Uncle, Ozpin, the old goat had it right from the start, what Lady Arturia has done, cannot be undone, and, even if it could be, I don't want it undone, you'll see, Uncle Crow, I feel great, and so free, just give up, Uncle Crow, I'd much rather you join us, than have to kill you, honestly, I don't want to kill you if I don't have to, but Lady Arturia was quite clear in her orders, if you prove to be too much trouble, I have to slay you, and you're making it really hard to not consider you too much trouble so far, Uncle Crow. Our conversation was interrupted by a sudden shout from Glinder. Glinder, enough, with a flash from her semblance, Blake and Vice were pushed away and slammed into the wall. Glinder then sent some very sharp-looking ice sheets at both of them. Vice was then beheaded by the attack, while Blake merely faded away into smoke, a sign of her semblance usage. Rose or, not vice. Yang, see, I told her she would never get ahead with her stuck-up personality. Eh, eh, Blake rose out of my shadow and stared blankly at Yang who was still fighting with Ozpin, but somehow managed to still find time for a bad pun. Blake, that was a terrible pun, Yang. I merely shrugged, and sheepishly smiled while I said, I mean, it was kind of funny. Yang, see, sis gets it Dilda. Don't be such a stick in the mud, Blake. I could see Ozpin frowning at our remarks, while my uncle and Glinder had looks of shock on their faces. Crow, Ruby, your friend just died, and that is how you're acting? I just shrugged and said, she died doing what she, all of us, loved doing. Blake, following Lady Arturia's orders, she died a proud warrior's death. Besides, it was your friend that killed her. Our little back and forth was interrupted by a yelp from Yang as she was blown back once again by some magic mambo jumbo from Ozpin. Ignoring the fact that our shadow movement is most likely magic, Ozpin opened his mouth to say something, but was interrupted by a blood curdling scream from Glinder. We all looked at her and saw a sword being slipped out of her back by a newcomer. She then jumped backwards away from the now heavily wounded woman when Ozpin attacked and entered a portal. A portal then opened up near Yang, and she stepped out. Crow, no. Not you too. The woman looked at Yang, and her eyes went soft. She then put her hand on Yang's head and gave her some head pats. Question mark colon we'll be talking after this, you and I. Yang, you. Okay, quick question. Who are you? She stopped patting her head, and took up a ready stance to fight before answering. Question mark colon I am your mother. Raven. Yang, say what? I've been looking for you. Raven, I know, and that is why we are going to talk later. Blake. Yang, your mum looks like a total badass. Ruby, agreed. Raven huffed, and said, thank you girls. Now, stand back while I deal with the humans. What happened next was crazy. 
to say the least. Raven then charged my uncle with crazy speed, almost like she had a speed semblance even. My uncle's eyes widened when she attacked, but then they quickly started to exchange blows. My attention was briefly taken away from the action though from some bubbling noise behind me. Smiling as I turned around I saw that the black water had finally reached us, and it was starting to fill the room slowly from the elevator. Turning back to the action, I was very impressed with Yang's mum. She was a total badass. She was using her immense speed and semblance to portal around him, and was slowly chipping away at him. Cuts slowly appeared all over his body. But I think my uncle's semblance, bad luck, had kicked in and Raven seemed to trip on nothing suddenly and tumbled a bit. This gave Ozpin an opening, which he took. He swung his golden glowing cane at Raven. There was a loud explosion of magic as the sword and cane met. Unfortunately for Raven, her sword couldn't hold up versus the magic explosion, and broke. A piece of her sword came flying towards us. As Uncle Crow dodged out of the way, Crow, whoa there. Sadly, Blake wasn't paying any attention it seemed, and the blade ended up taking her right arm clean off as it passed her. Blake, shit, as she turned with the blade's direction to grasp her now missing arm. It seems my uncle's semblance wasn't quite done. As the blade hit the wall, it shattered, and a piece flew into Blake's face, taking out her right eye. Blake, fuck, oh come on. I couldn't help but giggle at the situation. That was short-lived though, as Raven came flying towards Crow seconds later with a yell from Ozpin. Ozpin, damn it, Crow, do it. With a look of anguish on his face, he embedded his scythe into Raven's chest, using her momentum, and then let the scythe go. The result was Raven being pinned to the wall with a scythe embedded rather deeply into her chest. It was then that Ozpin called out and had Crow pick up Glinder while he created some sort of shield. Just in time too, as the water had finally filled enough of the elevator shaft to start flooding this room rather fast. As I was watching the water flood the room, and Blake was moaning in pain on the ground, Yang walked up to her mother. Yang scratched the back of her head, and sighed. Yang, damn it, I just finally got to meet you and you go and die. Just my luck. She then turned to Ozpin's shield, and walked up to it. She tapped it a few times with her hand and sighed again. Yang, we'll have to call Lady Artoria. I don't think we can get through this shield easily. Ruby, oh oh, I'll do it. Tilda back to present Tilda. POV switch Artoria. Ruby, and that's what happened. As I was listening to Ruby inform me of what happened I was also looking at the bodies of Vice and Raven. Their souls are still attached to their bodies. I gave Ruby a nod, while also giving my black waters a command. It quickly swallowed Vice, Raven, and Blake. Blake, oh, Blake had let out a little surprise gasp before she was swallowed up. Moments later, all three of them surfaced from the waters, and all three looked complete and whole. Blake, oh. This is nice. Thank you, mistress. I was not looking forward to having to deal with one arm and die, truth be told. I gave her a nod. As I looked at the other two, and much to my surprise and delight, they both stirred and started to groan. As they sat up, Crow and Ozpin spoke out at the same time. Crow, that is not possible. Ozpin, what unholy magic is this? Shaking their heads. Both Vice and Raven got up and stretched a bit. Vice, I'll tell you, getting beheaded was not fun. Raven, ye, try getting impaled by a scythe through the chest. She pointed at the scythe that was still stuck in the wall, with black blood all over the blade and wall. Vice, no thank you. I'll pass on that. And just assume it was very unpleasant. Raven, you do that. Yang, yes, you're not dead, mum. Raven, yay, I'll be honest Yang. I was feeling pretty shitty about dying just after we met. Yang, it's okay. At least you died like a total boss. Raven coughed slightly and just nodded her head at that. I just shook my head at the duo, and turned to the shielded humans. Walking up to it, I ran my knuckles against it lightly while looking into Ozpin's eyes. Artoria, having a bad day, Ozpin? He glared at me and said, you could say that. Crow, what have you done to Ruby? What have you done to my little girl? Looking over Crow, 
For a few seconds, I only shrugged. Source, https colon slash slash v dot fandom dot com slash wiki slash crow underscore branwin slash relationships hash ruby underscore rose. Artoria, improved, blessed, set free, pick whatever you want, really. Ruby, do you like what I did to you and, well, everyone else in the city of Vale? Ruby. Yup, love it Tilda. A cruel smile appeared on my lips as she answered, Artoria. You don't have to worry though, Crow. You'll be joining her soon enough. This little bubble can't actually stop me. I am just waiting. Ozpin, the what? A large smile formed on my face, as I felt a connection form that I was waiting for. I focused on the new connection, and told them to come to where I am, turning my head at the person who was now rising out of the waters. I could only smile even wider, Artoria, her, as the person fully rose out of the waters. They spread the large wings that were on their back to stretch a little, and then took her knee like the others before her. Salem, mistress, I have come at your call. Source, https colon slash slash www.dviantar.com slash dishwasher 1910, p.s. NSFW warning again for the rest of their work tilde. Artoria, welcome, Salem. How do you feel? I am happy you decided to take my offer. Salem huffed a little before answering while looking up at me. Salem, you didn't leave me much choice, mistress. With every pool that one of your ravens dived into, I felt my connection to the Grim weaken. And when one such raven landed in front of me, I knew my time to think was up. She reached up and touched the cheek I had cut just an hour ago. She then sighed as she spoke again. Salem, I was almost tempted to take up your offer, and embrace oblivion finally, but something stopped me. A little nagging feeling, if you will. When I looked at your raven, I made my choice. I could give ruling the world in a golden age a try, and if I didn't like it in the end, there was nothing stopping me from asking you to end me anyway. I clapped my hands together as I was pleased with the reasoning. Artoria, what a great line of thought to have, Salem. Now, I have a present for you. I turned back to Ozpin and his little bubble. Salem, so I've noticed. What are your plans for him, mistress? Artoria, he's yours to do with as you please, Salem. A wonderfully cruel grin appeared on Salem's face as she looked Ozpin dead in the eyes. Salem, then, if you would be so kind, I would love to have him untainted, and chained, so he is forced to watch me rule the world, and see that after all this time, all this time, his struggle was worthless, and I was right all along. I barked a laugh at that, and nodded my head. Artoria, how wonderful. Ozpin, it won't happen. Salem. The people will rise up. They always do. I could only let out a loud, belly-filled laugh. Artoria. Oh, oh, that was a good one. Ha. Silly Ospin. There won't be anyone left to rise up. I am corrupting the world's oceans with my black water as we speak. This entire world is going to be bathed in wonderful darkness. Just think. No more wars. No more suffering. Well, maybe to the suffering bit. I shrug my shoulders as I continue, but everyone will be connected via this transformation. And with the world's water supply tainted? Well, it's only a matter of time. And unlike Grimm, I don't aim to destroy. Honestly, I am perfectly fine if everyone lived a happy life, as long as that life is under Goddess Deerwind's rule. And now, your world will be added to that list. Tilda, ignoring his confused face, I tapped the barrier with my knuckle causing it to shatter. I then used some magic to rip the cane out of his hands, and lift him off the ground. As all of this was going on, my black water surged forward and took in Crow and Glinder. As I was turning around to say something to Salem, I suddenly found myself standing in a pure white looking temple. In front of me, was a large being of pure white, sitting on a pearl looking throne. Question mark colon foul creature of the dark. You have made an enemy today by taking a world from me. I instantly knew what I was dealing with. A god of light. A cruel smile appeared on my face as I responded to him. Artoria. It matters not. 
false god. All of those who belong to the light faction are my enemy. Any who attack my goddess, are my enemies. Be they tools of the light, or the gods of the light? Question mark colon so brazen, you are. Do you truly think that the mark you have from the Null Kit soon will save you? I could only bark a laugh at that. Artoria, if you don't respect Lady Lily, that's on you. But, no, I do not expect her to bail me out every, or any, time. She expects me to be entertainment for her, and what could be more entertaining than some dark creature coming out of the woodwork and murdering the entire light faction? Question mark colon you are nothing but a frog in the well, a big fish in a small pond. The Null Kitsun has sent many agents over the eons to both sides of this eternal war for her entertainment. You will not change anything. I crack a smile at that as I say, yeah, but all of those sent before me were very different. The entity leaned forward and asked in an almost bored tone, oh, and what, pray tell, makes you different? Artoria, simple, I'm me. I am Artoria Alter, and for the offense of attacking my goddess. I will break your faction upon my sword. The entity lightly chuckled at my declaration, and simply waved a hand in dismissal as he leaned back into his throne. Question mark colon sure. You do that, be gone from this place then, creature of darkness. I tire of your stain upon my light. I was then back in Ospin's room, looking at Salem. Salem, mistress? Is everything okay? You stilled for a few seconds there. I smiled and waved her concern off. Artoria, it's fine, Salem. I just had a meeting with one of the light faction gods. Salem, I see. And, how did it go? I beamed a massive and cruel smile at her. Artoria, wonderfully, Salem. It went wonderfully. After all, I now know of his dimension, and when I am strong enough, I can pay him a personal visit. 247 Chapter 30 New World Order, and the hunt begins anew. As I was thinking about what to do next, Ruby tapped me several times on the shoulder to get my attention. Turning to her, I tilt my head and ask, Yes, Ruby, something you needed? Ruby, sorry if this is a bit forward, mistress, but, you've not unlocked your aura yet, right? I shook my head at that and said, No, I don't even know if I can, honestly. This isn't a body of flesh like yours. I am an existence that is a bit unique. I am a physical soul. Salem. How interesting. Raven. Ah, so that is why my blade didn't hurt you when I attacked you? Nodding my head Raven I say, correct. To begin with, to even start to damage me, you need something that can hurt a soul. Mundane attacks without anything spiritual are just useless against me. And even magic is pretty useless unless it is extremely powerful, or tailored to deal with the soul. Ruby, I see. Blake slash vice. No, you don't. Ruby slumped her shoulders and nodded. I don't. I chuckle a little while giving her a pat on the shoulder. Artoria. Don't worry Ruby. It's true magic that made me like this. If we understood it, it wouldn't be true magic. So, even I just accept I am what I am. But... Why don't you try unlocking my aura? If I get it, I get it. If not, well easy come easy go. Ruby's eyes sparkled as she gave me a nod. Ruby, great. Leave it to me mistress. She then went behind me and placed her hands on my back. Taking a quick peek, I could see she had her eyes closed and was focusing rather hard. After a few minutes, I was about to speak up when all of a sudden I felt something wash over me. I looked down at my hands, and I could see that I now had a subtle glow of red around me. I also noticed it looked like I had purple-black flames flickering off me randomly all over. Hearing a splash, I turned round and saw Ruby on her butt leaning back on her hands. Ruby, wow, that took a lot out of me. Phew. She then threw her arms up in the air and just splashed down into the water to float there in comfort. I looked at my left hand as I opened and closed it in a fist. This definitely felt really weird. Like I had something over myself now, providing protection. Well I do, I guess. I mean, I can literally see it. Salem. My my. Isn't that a wicked feeling or are you of their mistress? I thought the magic you constantly leak gave off a dark feeling. But when compared to your aura. Artoria. Oh. Giving a nod. Salem continued. Yes. 
If I had to compare it to something, I would say it feels like a mad beast, looking for its next kill. Salem crossed her arms in thought before speaking up again after some time. Salem, your magic gives off the feeling of darkness and evil, there is no denying that. Quite so, in fact, but it also gives off the feeling of being able to communicate, to reach some sort of mutual goal or understanding. Your aura however, there is none of that, only evil, only an all-consuming desire and need to fight and kill. Artoria, well, that is interesting. I mean, I love to fight, there is no denying that in the slightest, but I am not overly bloodthirsty I think. Salem just shrugged her shoulders and said, I don't know what to tell you, mistress. One Zora is an extension of their soul, so this does match you in some way. Artoria, so. What? I am using my bloodlust as a shield or something? Salem hummed in thought before nodding. Salem, that's an apt way to look at it, yes. Yang, well, I think it's great, mistress. Really suits your whole death worry a vibe you got going on. Do you have any idea if you have a semblance? After focusing inward for several minutes, I just end up shrugging my shoulders. Artoria, no idea. How does one normally force a semblance to awaken? Vice. They normally do not, mistress. It just happens. The way someone awakens to a semblance, if they have one, can be as unique as the semblances themselves. Artoria. This is also assuming I even have a semblance. I mean, for all we know my aura isn't even the normal aura you all know. Because, you know, a solid soul and all. Salem hummed in agreement and said, a valid point. Mistress Artoria. Anyway, let's move on from Aura and such. I looked down at Ruby who was still casually floating around on the waters. Artoria. You good Ruby? She just gave me a thumbs up, before her hand splashed down back onto the water. Artoria. Hey, good enough I guess. Anyway, I can feel that the entire city of Vale has been fully converted by now. And with my black water converting the planet's oceans, it will not be long before people all over the world start to join us. As such, it's about time for me to leave. So, as I told Salem, I'll be leaving her in charge. I'll send the command to the Black Waters, as well as everyone else. But you will all listen to Salem as if she was me. Am I understood? Everyone. Yes, mistress. Nodding, I look at Salem and smile. Artoria. I expect you to have a new world order set up eventually. The only thing I will impose upon you on how you run things is this. Everyone will worship the dark goddess Tiawin. Everyone. Am I clear? Salem bowed as she said, Yes, mistress. I will lead this world into an eternal golden age. And the world's religion will be to worship the dark goddess Tiawin. I clap my hands a singular time and nod with a smile. Artoria. Great. By the way, Ozpin. You've been very quiet. He just scoffed at me and glared. Ozpin, what is there to say? Abomination? Smiling up at him. I nod. Artoria. Exactly. Enjoy breaking him over the Ian Salem. I wonder how his reincarnation will work when there is only the black and left. Things to ponder I guess. I'm Salem. Salem. Indeed. Mistress. Interesting times ahead for our little world. I was about to say something else. When I felt a tug on my consciousness again, focusing on it, I heard Pyre's voice echo in my mind. Pyre, mistress, I have something to report. I do not know its significance, so I'd like to just tell you. Artoria, all right, come join me and give it face to face. Pyre, I'll be there in a moment. Mistress, did I need Pyre here for the report? Of course not. Did I want her here for it? Very much so as I was interested to see what she now looked like. True to her word, Pa rose out of the waters a few seconds later in a kneeling position. Artoria, stand, and give your report. She nodded and stood up. As she started talking I took in her new look. Source, https colon slash slash www.reddit.com slash rrwby slash comments slash 4z6tj5 slash grim underscore pyre underscore genwolfs parks slash nice. Very feral looking. I like it. Pyre, it's about Jorni. He didn't survive the transformation process. Artoria, oh, Pyre, yes. Well. He started acting a little weird since before even, 
Now that I think about it, after we returned from the assembly hall, he seemed to randomly faint for a few seconds after we checked up on him. He seemed different somehow, more confident. My eyes narrowed at that, as I got an idea of what was likely the cause. Pyre, and then when your black water broke into our room and started flooding it, he started yelling that this wasn't part of canon. Then, when the waters touched him, he started to scream in pain. It was then that I was pulled under and blessed by you mistress. But, when I emerged, I saw him standing on the top bunk still trying to avoid the waters. So, I moved behind him, and pushed him in, and when he hit the waters, he started screaming again, and then seemed to dissolve. When he went under, Artoria, I see. Thank you for the report, Pyre. She bowed, and then turned to talk to Team RWBY when I dismissed her. I quickly fell into thought myself though. So, that was a reincarnator. But, unlike all the other ones, this one seemed to take over the body of Jorni. Question is, were they from the light faction? I have no idea how a reincarnator from the dark faction will react to my waters. I really should have tested that. Oh well, no use crying over spilled evils. With a mental shrug. I send the command to the Black Waters that everyone should obey Salem as if they were my own orders. No sooner than I had sent that command, did a familiar portal open near myself. Artoria, alrighty everyone. My time here is up. Salem, I expect great things from you. Ozpin, have a terrible life I guess. Everyone else, have fun in this new world. Ozpin just glared some more, while everyone bowed to me. Everyone. Safe travels, Mistress Artoria. Oh, Salem, if you need me, and our connection doesn't work across realities, just pray to Goddess Tierwin. If she deems the situation worthy, and I am not busy with a task from her, she will inform me. Salem, I will do that, Mistress. Nodding once more to everyone, I step through the portal and into Tierwin's wonderful forest. Tierwin, Artoria. Dismissing my new armor, I opened my arms to the speeding Tierwin bullet heading to me. I embraced her, and rub our cheeks together. Artoria, hello, Tierwin, how are you? With a giggle Tierwin said, I am doing great. The new world, and thus reality, has already moved to join the rest of mine, and I can feel my power increase a bit. Artoria, that's great. As per usual. I headed to a nearby tree and sat down with Tierwin on my lap sitting sideways, as I started to give her head pats, she squinted her eyes in content before speaking up. Tierwin, you've changed, I can feel it, I also like the new look, very much. Smiling, I say, thank you, Tierwin, are you able to tell me exactly what changed about me? Tierwin brought up her right index finger and started to tap her chin in thought. Tierwin. It's hard to explain, but, I'll try my best. So, before you had your black water, or all the world's evils, right? Or rather, it was the source of your corruption that you could call upon. I hummed in acknowledgement. Tierwin, well, now there is no difference between the two of you. You are the black water, and the black water is you. A perfect way to explain it is this. Do you know about the soul weapons called Zanpakuto? Artoria. I do. Swords that have a spirit in them. Tierwin, it is so much more than just a spirit. It's a reflection of the soul they are connected to. Your black water could be now likened to a newborn Zanpakuto. It doesn't have a soul, mind you. But in that it is an extension of yourself now, a reflection of you. Hence why you and it are one and the same now. Artoria, and my new abilities with it. Tierwin, while some of them were indeed from the combination of the waters and Grimpool. Some were born from your desires, Artoria, and my aura, Tierwin. You were right on the money with your guess. You cannot unlock aura in a traditional sense, as you are your soul. You can't protect you, with you, right? Artoria, makes sense, yes, Tierwin. So, instead, your soul searched for a way to make use of the power Ruby injected into you and it came up with the ability to make practical use of the second most abundant thing available to you. Well, I say abundance, but your bloodlust is just as infinite as your mana at this point, really. Artoria, do you know why my soul reacted in such a way? Tierwin, yup, 
Big Sister Lilith told me it was one of the blessings she gave you. Infinite potential I think it was. Your soul, body will always adapt and grow to accommodate a new increase in power without limits. Artoria, I see. Tierwin, yes. So now, you have an aura, but because you lack an actual vessel for your soul to protect and channel soul energy through, it instead is going to use your unending bloodlust as a medium and power source. Really, it's just Tora? but with extra steps because you lack the fleshy bits. Artoria, and my semblance? Tierwin looked up to me and gave me a cheeky grin and said, with time chuckling at her antics, I accepted her answer and asked another question. Artoria, I don't really feel like I have a lot of bloodlust in me. Or at all? Tierwin just giggled at me, and patted my chest lightly. Tierwin, oh, you're silly Artoria. That's just because of the, frankly, absolutely stupid control you have over it. You've released your killing intent before, as I am sure you noticed. I nodded my head at that while a flashback to the second reincarnator I killed appeared in my mind. Tierwin. Well, killing intent is just bloodlust with a goal in mind. While bloodlust is just the desire to kill anything and everything you can get your hands on. You don't feel like you have that, because you have such solid control over it. Artoria, then. Why did the Black Waters, A.W.E., affect my personality after I lost my memories but not my bloodlust? Tierwin, oh, that's easy. At the time, the Black Waters were not a part of you. They were corrupting you, literally. But the bloodlust you have, is a part of you. Does that make sense? I just slouch a little and say, it'll have to. I guess that makes sense, my bloodlust was built up from all the killing I did as Arturia over the millions of years, while the ore was always just there, corrupting me, not actually being a part of my existence, so when I transmigrated, or rather when Lady Lilith replaced my memories, or did what it does, corrupt, Tierwin started to fidget in my lap, which meant she had to say something she really didn't know how to, Arturia, what's wrong? Tierwin, Tierwin, um, it's just, Big Sister Lilith asked me to tell you, to not corrupt entire worlds like that again, she says it's boring to watch, she doesn't mind you using it, naturally, but not on a global scale like that again, Artoria, ah, no worries, Tierwin, I hug her, and tickle her a little to emphasize I have no problems with the request, she started giggling madly at my tickle attack, and tried to tickle me back between laughs, we did this back and forth for a few minutes before we settled down and continued talking. Tierwin, dangerous, dangerous tickles. I giggle softly, and nod my head. Artoria, you are quite dastardly in tickles as well. Smiling at me, she then got an oh yeah, look on her face. Tierwin, right, you finished the divine quest I gave. I can unlock a seal for you. I smack my forehead with my right hand. Artoria, right. How did we forget that? Tierwin, tickles, they are a danger to everything. Chuckling, I nod in agreement. Tierwin, without further ado, Tierwin raised her right hand, and snapped her fingers. As soon as she did, I felt the immense power being released from the seal breaking, and the pleasure that went with it. Artoria, MMM, I'll never get tired of the feeling from the rush of power from a seal being broken. Tierwin clapped her hands in excitement. Tierwin, wow. That really is a huge power-up. I really want to unlock more. But Big Sister Lilith said it would be bad. Sorry. Her tails and ears dropped at that. I started to give her head pats as I said, Hey, now we've been over this. Lady Lilith knows best. Don't worry about it. Tierwin. She nodded her head, and then her eyes glowed pink as she looked at me. Tierwin. Well, with your new power, I'd say you can contend with most of the entities in the world with the last growth system user. Ah, but those four I mentioned before would still crush you. So be careful of them. Artoria. How strong am I compared to the normal people in that universe? Tierwin hummed in thought for a second, before responding. Tierwin. I'd say top 5 to 10. Easy. But because all of the stronger people in that universe actually use magic, they can damage you, even with your absurd magic resistance, though, it'll help a lot, for sure, and with your new aura, even more so, but, 
Even though you can fight a lot of those entities one-on-one -on -one easily enough, I don't think you could take on everything by yourself without just outright destroying the world, and that would be bad. Nodding at that I say, good to know where I stand then. Any requests for this world? Tierwin just shook her head. Tierwin, outside of killing the light reincarnator, and maybe the disgusting hero the world picked. No, could always spread your corruption around, but like Lilith said, no worldwide waters. I don't want big sister Lilith mad at you. With a nod of my head I agree with her. Having Lady Lilith mad at you, is just a fancy way to commit suicide. Tierwin then hopped off my lap and walked a bit away before creating a portal. Tierwin, alrighty, Artoria, go kick some light ass and make sure to have fun if possible. I always enjoy seeing what you did in the world after you get rid of the reincarnator. I smile up at her, before I stand while summoning my armor. Artoria, count on it. Tierwin, I'll see you when I have removed this garbage from your world. Tierwin gave me a little cheer as I walked through her portal. Several seconds of comfortable darkness later, I stepped out into an ally in some city. Before I could even think about what to do, I suddenly found myself in a dimension full of colors. A real kaleidoscope of colors even. Suddenly, a loud and powerful voice came from behind me. Question mark colon now what do we have here? What manner of draconic creature of darkness are you? And why have you come to our little universe? I turned around, and was looking right at one of the select few existences that could destroy me easily. Great Red. Well fuck. Now isn't this just a horrible start? Announcement. Here is the big ole chappy 30 for everyone tilde. Hope you liked what I did with it, and the direction I went with a few things tilde. See you in the next one tilde. 230. Chapter 31. A Blast from the Past Tilda. I quickly mulled over what to tell Great Red while looking at his massive form, but I came to the conclusion that telling him lies would quickly lead to my death. Source, https colon slash slash allfictionbattles.fandom.com slash wiki slash great underscore red. Artoria, as impudent it is of me to answer a question with a question, it will help me to understand where I need to start. So, with that said. Do you know about the multiverse, and omniverse? Great Red just huffed in an amused manner before answering. Red. Of course I know about them, little hatchling. What do you think I do here in the dimensional gap? Much to my dismay, I retorted before really thinking. Artoria, lays about, while doing cool flips and tricks and sleep, while also keeping an eye open for invasions from other universes. Great Red coughed a bit as his breath got caught in his throat. Red, all right. That is exactly what I do. But, never mind that. Back to my original question. Smiling ever so slightly, I nod and start my explanation. Artoria, so, your universe falls under the care of the dark goddess Tierwin. But, as she is a new goddess, there are other gods who are looking to take what is hers, most notably, the gods of the Light Faction. They have sent someone to this universe already, to try and take it from Tierwin. I am here to destroy that person, while also having a bit of fun myself. Great Red narrowed his massive eyes at me, and hummed in thought. Red, I'll be honest with you, little hatchling. The only reason I didn't instantly obliterate you, was because of the feeling you give off as a dragon. I thought you were the child of Drake, of all dragons. But, you are not. You feel the same. But that's about it. You are honestly a lot darker than any of the other dragons we have here, including the crazy evil dragons, and that is saying something. I am going to be taking a peek at your life thus far, and I'll judge you from that. Do not resist, and it'll be painless. I just slumped forward, and with a wave of my hand motioned him to continue. For a moment, his eyes glowed a fiery red before my world went dark. Moments later, I opened them and looked around in confusion. Artoria, where? Suddenly, a voice from the side of me spoke up. Red, we are in your soul's mind, young Dragon King. What an interesting existence you are. From that standpoint alone, an entity who is a physical soul, marvelously amazing. Turning to my right, I saw a very much many great red. He was absolutely tiny, and absolutely adorable. It took everything I had to not hug him like the plushie he now looked like. Noticing my look, 
Great Red released to Psy Red, and this is why I never shrink down. Speaking of down, why not have a look in that direction? Tilting my head, I looked down, we were currently floating high above a massive battlefield. There were bodies everywhere, and quite a few small hills of them all over, with a lake of blood under them all. A familiar yell attracted my attention. Looking a bit into the horizon, I could see some fighting going on still. Blinking, and we were now above the battle. Artoria. No, battle is too small of a word for this. Red. Agreed. War would be the apt term. Truly, you are a one-woman army, young dragon king. Below us, was me, and I was slaughtering an army of sorts. This was clearly after I had become a servant though and was tainted from my looks. But something was off with the army I was fighting. Looking at all the soldiers, both dead and alive, I could see demir humans mixed in with normal humans. Another yell caught my attention. Question mark colon hold the line, men and women of the world. We must stop the push of this dark war goddess the demon king has summoned, or else all will be lost. Army. Who who passed Artoria, at least you are all strong in spirit. Feel honored to be slain by my blade, and die with pride that someone such as myself has acknowledged you. My past self then continued to completely decimate the supposed defenders of the world. None were able to slow my advancement into the ranks, and none were spared. Looking back at the fields of corpses, I was impressed with myself. Artoria, one woman army indeed, there is what? thousands dead over there, red, hundreds of thousands, I let out a whistle, but then tilt my head in confusion, Artoria, why show this to me, great red, great red shook his tiny little head at me and said, I am not directing this per se, I wanted to see what drives you, and what you have done, in the pursuit of that goal, Artoria, I, see, you know I don't remember this, right? Nodding his head Great Red said, naturally, your mind was wiped by something that is well beyond me in terms of power. The memories are there, but you cannot access them normally, nor can I even. Hence why we are both watching it play out like this. Before I could respond, the memory flashed around us. My past self was now standing on a veritable mountain of corpses. It was truly a massive pile of them, and a river of blood was freely flowing down. I was standing next to some woman, with my sword through her chest. Past Artoria, you put up a great fight, Holy Saintess. But it wasn't enough. You and your forces fought bravely though. I commend that. The Saintess, who honestly looked like every Saintess to ever Saintess from anime, fell to her knees with a cough, blood leaking from both her wound and mouth. She looked up at my past self, Saintess, the gods will punish you for this, evil one. It is against divine law for a goddess to descend. The past me laughed, and leaned next to her ear and whispered, Past Artoria, I am no goddess, Saintess. You and yours merely started to call me that, but I can see why you all would be confused when fighting something like myself. My past self then slid the sword out of her chest, and let the girl fall to the ground. Again, the memory flashed, and now we were in some kind of throne room. It was obviously the supposed demon king's room, from all the demon-like spikes and shit everywhere. Past Artoria, it is done. I have completed the task you have summoned me for, and your race of demons are all that is left in this world. In front of us was myself and the demon king, from the looks of it, the massive demon nodded his head at my past self and spoke up. Demon king, thank you, dark spirit. It was truly a stroke of luck that I found the method of summoning you from one of the heroes the humans had summoned. My past self waved the demon king off with her left hand. Past Artoria, no thanks needed. All this killing also greatly served my goal. Demon king, oh, and what goal is that dark spirit? My past self started to shine with a black light and started to break apart. I assumed this was me being unsummoned since my past self was not screaming in pain. Past Artoria, to one day meet my goddess, and future younger sister. My eyes shut wide open at that. While I noticed great red nodding out of the corner of my eye. Red, and the peace falls into place. You toiled to have that very goddess you serve to be born. Interesting, that. The memory then flashed yet again, and sitting in front of us sleeping on some kind of throne, was my past self, 
a shadow of a woman suddenly appeared, and was floating in front of my past self. Much to both my, and Great Red's surprise though, she turned to us. I could feel her eyes on us, even though I couldn't see anything about her, other than the basic humanoid shape that had several tails. Wait, isn't this, Lily, that is correct, little Artoria? It seems you and a little lizard are taking a trip down memory lane, um, Tilda Red. You, Lady Lilith then waved her hand in dismissal at us. Lily, it is fine Tilda, learning about your past like this won't change your personality too much, anyway Tilda. So, just sit back and enjoy the trip down memory lane little Artoria Tilda. Lady Lilith then turned back to my past self, and spoke something to wake her me, up, past Artoria, who, what is going on, my past self then looked at Lady Lilith, and tilted her head, Lady Lilith started talking to her, but we could no longer hear her words, unfortunately, past Artoria, truly, I did that, Lady Lilith then snapped her fingers, and my past self frowned, past Artoria, I see, to think my past self was so, mundane and weak, she then slumped on her throne, and sighed. She soon then looked up at Lady Lilith and asked a question. Past Artoria. And, why have you told me this, God? Er, uh, Lady Lilith. Nodding to whatever Lady Lilith was saying, she spoke up again soon after. Past Artoria, I see. We could suddenly hear Lady Lilith's voice again as she spoke. Lily, I give you two choices. Work towards the birth of a new dark goddess, that you will be the older sister of, when you eventually ascend from the wishes your past self has made, or don't, and ascend by yourself and face eternity alone as a goddess of war and death. My past self hummed in thought before asking a question. Past Artoria, and, what is the advantage to helping with the birth of a dark goddess that I would become my family? Lady Lilith just answered with clear amusement in her voice. Lily, are you really asking that question? Little Artoria, my past self sighed, and shook her head. Past Artoria, no, I'm not, not after everything you have shown me. I just have bad memories of family, as you know. We could no longer hear Lady Lilith's voice anymore as they continued to talk. Lady Lilith then turned to Great Red and I again. I could almost feel the smile I couldn't see, before the memory flashed, as we found ourselves over another battlefield. Artoria. So, that happened. Great Red just numbly nodded his head. Red. Yes, yes it did. He then shook his head and spoke up again with more confidence in his voice. Red. Right. Anyway, so it's clear that your goal is ascension to goddesshood, and to be with this new goddess as family. Artoria, so it would seem. It is no wonder I feel such a connection to Tiawin. A large smile formed on my lips at the realization that my past self, the self that was truly Artoria Alter in mind and soul, had chosen to help bring Tiawin into existence for us. I don't even care if Lady Lilith had a large hand in this or any of that, Tierwin is adorable, and my life would be so much worse without her in it. Well, if Lady Lilith showed my past self Tierwin in any way, it's a no-brainer we'd both agree that she is awesome. She's Tierwin after all Tilda. Red, oi, you there? Snapping out of my thoughts, I look over to Great Red and give a slightly embarrassed smile. Artoria, sorry was lost in my thoughts a bit. Red, so I noticed. Your memory actually flashed quite a lot already while you were zoned out. Artoria, oh, you, what did you learn? Red, what I needed to. Also, your goddess Deerwin is adorable. I can see why you are so infatuated with her. His eyes glowed a fiery red again, and I blacked out. Seconds later, I opened my real eyes and was looking at a, once again, giant great red. Red, so, I understand what drives you, and your goals, young dragon king. I've seen what you've done on the other worlds, and what you are willing to do for your sister, goddess. As long as you don't destroy this world, I am fine with you hunting the agent of light that is attacking Goddess Deerwin's domain. You will most likely be the darkest entity that will ever grace our little universe, and others will not take kindly to you. You are strong enough to hold your own, but I suggest you don't go pissing everyone off. Artoria, right, Tierwin gave the same advice, so I intend to follow it. 
Nodding his massive head he said, Good, now off you go, young dragon king. Before he ported me away, I quickly asked a nonsensical question. Artoria, am I really that young to you at three and a half million years old? Great Red chuckled lightly and said, That is why I upgraded you to young and not hatchling tilde. Now, off you go. As soon as he finished speaking, I found myself standing on top of a building in some city, while looking around and trying to get my bearings, I couldn't help but think back to what I learned. That meeting did not go the way I thought it would. At all was nice to see some of my past though, and knowing about my connection to Tia Wynn from before I even met her, I wonder if she knows. Should I even bring it up? Does it even matter in the end? Not really. In the end, I guess. My end goal changed though. Went from just unlocking my seals for power, to unlocking my seals for power and ascension so I can truly be Tia Wynn's sister. I have a long road ahead of me, but it is looking better than ever. 236 Chapter 32 A Quick Visit Tilda, nodding to myself. My eyes then get a deadly glint to them as I look over the city, but I still have some garbage to remove from her worlds. After all, that one human had the right of it, you don't turn your back on family, and nothing is more important than family. Stepping off the side of the building, I plummet down to the sidewalk where I smoothly enter the shadow of a passerby. Seconds later I step out of a shadow on the roof of a school, as I ripped the door of the hinges to get into the school. I couldn't help but grumble a little bit. I can see the systems just fine, but I can never sense them. Such a pain that I need to actually get visual confirmation first. I can sense some rather powerful souls in the school at least, making it to the floor that had the first several strong feeling souls. I started to make my way towards them. I was rather unimpressed with the school itself as I made my way down the empty halls. Well. It would go against the entire point now that I think about it if the school kind of screamed supernatural things happen here, by just looking at it. Soon enough, I came up to my destination, beside the door there was a plaque that simply said student council letting me know who was most likely behind the door. Without wasting any time, I simply opened the double doors, as the doors opening drew the attention of the few people inside, I was quickly able to tell they couldn't see me. Not even Sona Saitri. Currently, she was behind her desk, working diligently while the queen of her peerage, Tsubaki Shinra, was in the midst of serving her some tea. Source, https colon slash slash high schooldx.fandom.com slash wiki slash sona underscore citri. Source, https colon slash slash high schooldx.fandom.com slash wiki slash tsubaki underscore shinra. One the couch that was facing inwards to the room, was a few other members of her peerage. That being Gen Shiru Saji and Momo Hanger Kai. Source, https colon slash slash high school dot fandom dot com slash wiki slash Gen Shiru underscore Saji. Source, https colon slash slash high school dot fandom dot com slash wiki slash Momo underscore Hanger Kai. They were all looking at the, to them, empty doorway with confusion. Gen Shiru, you Tsubaki that startled me, who opened the doors, as they were all just looking on, I confirmed that none of them had a system or appeared to be corrupted by the light like how Lily did to the blue roses, as I was about to leave, something caught my attention, I noticed that Sona was indeed looking towards my person, can she see me after all, having my interest piqued, I walked into the room proper and made my way to her desk, as I was walking up to her, she was indeed tracking my movements. She looked more confused than anything however. Sona, who? What? She managed to ask a question when I was right in front of her desk. Tsubaki, Sona? I lean slightly forward over Sona's desk and ask, Can you see me, child? Sona ended up frowning and tilting her head in confusion. Sona, I can't hear you. What are you? Never mind here. I can almost not even see you. Are you a spirit? or a lost ghost. So that's the way of it then. Her soul is just barely strong enough to even register me it seems, and not strong enough to actually hear me. I shake my head in a little disappointment, looking across her desk, 
I reached over and grabbed her little pile of sticky notes and a pen. Tsubaki, oh my, Genshiro, ghosts are real? Ignoring them, I wrote a singular word on the sticky note, and then tossed both the notes and pen back down on her desk. As I turn to leave, she reaches for the sticky note and reads it out loud when I am nearly back at the doors. Suna, Hunter, leaving Sunu and her peerage. I left the room and turned towards the next soul with some strength to it. Reaching the ground floor, I frowned as I got closer to the classroom that had the soul I was tracking in it. That is a very powerful soul next to the one I am heading towards, and it feels almost familiar to me. Is this Drake? Turning to my left, I opened the classroom door. The act had caused the teacher to stop and look towards me. Ignoring everyone, I stepped into the classroom and peered over everyone. Again, no sister more light corruption. And there he is, the wannabe harem king himself, Isai Hayaudu, and even Asia Argento next to him. And I am super impressed with how pure Asia's soul is. If I didn't know she was a resident of this world, I would have thought she was an agent of the light with how pure she is. Source, https colon slash slash highschoolx.fandom.com slash wiki slash. I started to make my way over to Isai, and much to my expectations, neither he nor Asia were tracking my movements, though Isai was looking around in my general direction as if searching for something leading me to believe that Drake can sense me and is trying to point me out to his current host. Speaking of the Welsh dragon, as I got close to his eye, I was able to see a faint red aura over his left hand. It felt distinctly familiar and draconic. Artoria, I know you can sense me, red dragon. We will need to have a talk later, when your useless host isn't in the middle of a bunch of mundans. Though, I don't know if I should be disgusted, humiliated or laugh that a dragon that feels so familiar to me, is trapped in a thing connected to a human. Taking another glance at Asai's impressively pure soul, I confirmed that no one in the class is corrupted by the light. Satisfied for now, I sink into a shadow and leave the classroom. Stepping out of the shadows near the back exit of the school, I look beyond to where the occult research club room should be at. Following the pathway to the club room I was able to confirm three souls within it. I arrived in front of the club after a few minutes of walking, and could only whistle at the looks of it. Devil Princess really got a good place for her base of operations. Source, https colon slash slash highschooldx.fandom.com slash wiki slash occult underscore research underscore club. Not feeling like going through the front doors, I sink into my shadow and step out of one along the wall inside. Looking around, I see Rhea's Gremory and her Queen Akinaheim Jimmer talking to each other at her desk. Much to my expectation, neither of them reacted to my presence at all. I took a look around, and let out another whistle. Source, random screenshot from the anime. Source, https colon slash slash highschooldx.fandom.com slash wiki slash Rhea's underscore Gremory. Source, https colon slash slash highschooldx.fandom.com slash wiki slash akino underscore heimjima. She's got good taste, I'll give her that. As I was starting to ponder exactly what I should do, I suddenly felt two familiar souls making their way towards the ORC. I guess he or Drake, or both really, really couldn't wait till after school. I was able to sense Isai and Asai making their way over to our location. At a relatively fast pace, a few minutes later, Isai came bursting through the doors yelling, Isai, President, Drake said. He startled the two girls who were working moments ago. But before anyone else could say anything else, Drake appeared on his eyes left hand. Drake, what are you? You're not my child, even though you feel so much like me that it crossed my mind for a split second. Isai looked down at his arm and tilted his head in confusion. Isai, Drake, Artoria, really impatient. Aren't you hatchling? He he, I'll tease a bit and take a page from Great Red. After all, I think I am far older than Drake. Drake. Hatchling? No, never mind that, that is not important. What are you, Artoria? I'll give you an easy hint. The once and future king. Drake, the once and future. You mean to tell me you are King Arthur? Artoria, I am. Drake, 
Bullshit. For one, King Arthur was male, and two, you feel much more ancient than it would be possible for King Arthur. Not to mention, while you feel exactly like a dragon, the darkness in you is staggering. King Arthur was pure, or at least, way more pure than you, Artoria. I said I was King Arthur. When did I say I was your King Arthur? Drake was silent again at that retort. While Isai was trying to get him to talk and tell them what was going on. Isai, damn it, Drake, answer me. What is going on, and who the hell are you talking to? Drake, no need to yell, partner. Standing before you, as she claims, is King Arthur Pendragon. And while she feels nearly identical to myself, she also has a maddening deep darkness to her. Is I, she? Wait, King Arthur was a girl? Drake. No, King Arthur was a man. While Isai and Drake started to talk to everyone else in the room, I took notice of several souls approaching the O.R.C. Sun and her peerage, and a few I don't recognize. It didn't take Sun long to arrive, and she entered when Isai was still getting confused by what Drake was trying to say. Riz, ah, Sunna, welcome. What brings you here today? And welcome back Yato. Kiba, President, Source, https colon slash slash high school dot fandom dot com slash wiki slash yeto underscore Kiba, Sona, Riz, hello, I am here because I had an, oh, as she was about to explain her reason for being here, her eyes passed over me, giving her a small smile, I nod my head and point at his eyes left hand, Sona, what is going on? It seems the subject of the topic I wanted to talk to you about is already here. Riz, huh? You, the Red Dragon Emperor was talking to someone. We think? He said she is Arthur Pendragon. Sona's eyes widened at that, and she turned to me. Sona, you're King Arthur? I simply nodded my head, while her eyes seemed to sparkle a tad as she adjusted her glasses. Sona, how interesting to think King Arthur was a woman, and not a man. Drake. Stop saying the damn it. King Arthur was a man. I would know. I was around when he was. Sona, wait. You were lying? I shook my head and said, I'm not. I am King Arthur. Real name is Artoria though. Sona sighed and said, I still can't hear you, Drake. But you can at least see her. Sona then walked into the room along with the rest of her peerage and sat down on one of the couches. Sona, I can. However, she is horribly transparent. I would easily never notice her if I didn't pay attention. Is I, wait, someone is actually standing near me. Ghosts. Ghosts are real. With my voice laced with exasperation I say, I am not a ghost fool, I am a heroic spirit, corrupted heroic spirit, but still. Actually, to be fair, I no longer know what I exactly am. I think I am well beyond being a heroic spirit at this point. Corrupted or not. Drake, heroic spirit. Is it? Is I, spirit? So she is a ghost. Getting annoyed, I accidentally let out a tiny bit of killing intent at being called a ghost again. Everyone in the room stiffened like a deer caught in the headlights of a car. Quickly realizing my mistake, I get my killing intent back under control. Artoria, little whelp, tell your host to stop calling me a ghost, or I'm going to send him through a wall. Drake, all right, partner. She really does not like you calling her a ghost. Don't. Or she said she'll send us through a wall. Isai gulped and nodded his head vigorously while saying, Right. Sorry King Arthur. Sighing I say, Drake, tell them my name is actually Artoria. Just Artoria is fine. Drake, she says her name is Artoria. And to simply use that instead of calling her King Arthur. Isai, see can do do. A Artoria. Artoria. Such children indeed, to be shaking so much by such a paltry amount of killing intent. Releasing a sigh. I just shake my head. Artoria, whatever, not important. I came by to make sure the target of my hunt wasn't among these children, or if they had infected them. As both seem to not be the case, I have other things to do. I am going to go check on the other soul I feel in this building. While I do that, Drake. Tell the master of your host to contact her brother for an immediate meeting. Stepping backwards into a shadow on the wall before Drake could respond, I slipped on over to who I assume to be Gasper. Stepping out in the middle of the room, since it was pitch black, I take note that he is indeed like the rest, and free of light's corruption. 
source, https colon slash slash high school dot fandom dot com slash wiki slash gasper underscore vladi. Well, it's good that they are not getting changed, but where the hell is the reincarnator? Don't tell me I have to deal with another pigeon? With a sigh at the thought of having to deal with another angel, I sensed some magic going off back in the main room of the ORC. Without wasting any more time, I sunk back into the shadows and returned there. Gravia, and who am I taking to Serzak Sama? Rhea. She stopped talking and spun around the moment I stepped out of the shadows. Artoria, that would be me. Good sign that the strongest queen can at least sense me. Unlike the other children here, she narrowed her eyes at me, and looked me over for a few seconds before speaking up. Gravia, and who exactly are you? Maria's Sama was sparse on the details of the personage who wanted an immediate meeting with Serzak's Sama. Artoria, you may call me Artoria, and that will have to do for now. I grow tired of repeating myself, so I will expand on who I am in the meeting with Serzak. Peering at me again for several seconds she says, Fine, but I should warn you. If you try anything, Artoria, there would be absolutely nothing you could do about it, Grafia. I care not for your less than idle threats and warnings. Let's go. She released a small huff, and then nodded her head while motioning me to stand near here, trusting in the strength of your husband and yourself a little too much there, Wonder Maid. Oh well, it works for me. She then turned to the children and gave a small bow, Grafia. Until next time, Riaz Sama, Suna Sama, Riaz, ah, right, it was nice seeing you, even if it was for so short of a time, Grafia, Suna, good day, Grafia, and with that, the Gremory magic crest appeared under us and lit up, the feeling of their teleportation magic was actually rather pleasant, and practically unnoticeable, always appreciate teleportation methods that don't make you want to puke, Grafia, this way, Artoria Dono. Dono is it? Hey, we had appeared in what seemed to be the lounging room of their main house, or I guess I should say, mansion. As she led me down the fancy halls of their home, I could appreciate their taste in decorating a lot of dark colors with even more purple. Most of it gave off the style of a classic royalty feeling that the old kings and queens used. We eventually ended up in front of a pair of double doors, which Grafia knocked on. Grafia, Serzax Sama. I have brought the guest. Soon, we heard him giving her permission to enter as she opened the door and led me into his office. It took a quick glance around. Was a pretty standard looking office, with his main desk at the back of the room with a window behind it. In the middle of the room was a coffee table, with two couches flanking it. Most of the walls were covered in books. Serzax looked up from his paperwork, and looked me over while I did the same to him. Serzix and Grafia. Source, https colon slash slash high school dot fandom dot com slash wiki slash Serzix underscore Lucifer. Serzix. Welcome Mississippi. My name is Serzix Lucifer, the Satan in charge of domestic affairs. I narrowed my eyes at him, and after a few seconds I introduced myself as Grafia made her way to stand behind him. Artoria, I am Artoria Alter, champion of the dark goddess Tiawin. And you, I then summon Excalibur Morgan, causing both Serzix and Grafia to snap at attention with a very noticeable grimace and get ready for combat. Artoria, have been corrupted by the light. 217, Chapter 33 Calling a Satan evil, is par for the course, right? Seeing as I haven't outright attacked them just yet, Serzix spoke up while eyeing my blade with extreme unease. I also took notice that one of them cast something, as there was a thin layer of magic covering them. Serzix, let's keep our calm, and not escalate this. Miss Artoria, let's start with what you mean by me being corrupted by the light. Artoria. It means exactly as it sounds. You are slowly being corrupted by light. Swayed from your natural path, and towards the light. This will eventually change everything about you, including your soul. He frowned at that, but was still very much ready for a fight. Serzix, I do not feel any different though. And, how can you tell I am, as you say, corrupted by this light? Artoria because I am hunting the one who did this to you. I've seen their kind do it before, though, not to one as strong as you. 
and naturally you wouldn't notice it, it's changing literally everything about you. Your likes, dislikes, thought patterns, everything. Eventually, you'll even lose access to your demonic magic, and be filled with light magic and mana. I am glad Eowyn gave me the primer on what exactly this light corruption is, so I am not talking out my ass. I turn to Greyfear and say, you must have noticed something off about him every now and then. Something that stands out ever so slightly about a choice he has made. His corruption isn't far enough that it can't be removed and exchanged. But it should already be making changes. She narrowed her eyes at me, and thought for a few moments before slowly nodding her head. Gravia, there have been very minor things that have caught my attention now that you mention it. Serzak's eyes widen slightly. As he asks Gravia, what do you mean? She hesitates a bit, before speaking up. Gravia, your attitude towards devils and fallen angels lately, has taken on a bit of a harder stance. You get slightly more annoyed at their conduct, and make some offhand comments about it, more so than you normally do. Serzix frowns and looks back towards me, and eventually his eyes fall back onto my blade. We were interrupted by a knock on the door. Question mark colon Sir Lucifer, are you okay? We can feel a very oppressive holy energy coming from your room. I reach behind me, and touch the door and say, reinforcement. A red black glow spreads from my hand, and soon covers the entire door, and it continues to flow all around the entire room. Artoria, you have two options, and only two options. Either I remove the light from you, and blacken you, or... I will kill you both, and inevitably the entire mansion when I release the hold on my aura when they die from being unable to handle the pressure. Serzix, you would be so eager to make an enemy out of the entire devil race? I scoff and say, my only end goal is to remove a light that has invaded this universe. I care not for what people think of me nor of the enemies I may make. Serzix looks at me, then to my sword, before asking a question. Serzix, what will happen to me? When you blacken me, Gravia, Serzix, you can tell she is truly surprised because she dropped her maid persona completely. Now, the question is, do I have the grim effect as well, or just the blackening effect? Serzix's face hardened, while his eyes softened as he looked at his wife. Serzix, Gravia, you can sense that sword as easily as the rest of the mansion can. The only reason you're not burning to ash from the holy aura it's giving off is because I am covering both of us in a thin layer of destruction magic. That sword will be able to cut through our magic and defenses as if they were nothing but her. Do you really want to risk fighting a swordswoman in close quarters with a sword like that, who is also proficient in a form of unknown magic? Grafia scowled and looked back at me. TCH. I do not like this, but I can understand your reasoning. Artoria, done with your lover's quarrel? To answer your question, it will be the reverse of what is happening right now. But, unlike the light's corruption, this type of change can leave your personality mostly intact if I will it. You'll just fall firmly into the lawful evil category. You'll have your values still, but the way you go about them will very much be a non-issue if it comes to a body count, as an example, Gravia, if you will it. And how can we be sure you will do such a thing? I gave her a smirk. You can't. But you also have no choice. It's death, or being blackened. I leave and be so kind, and to blacken you as well, Gravia. That way, you won't mind his new outlook on life. I guess I can be that nice to them. I'll just do the OG method for my black waters, and just flip their morality like what I did to the MHA world, Serzix. And after you have done this, you'll no longer be hostile to us. Giving him a nod I say, yes, that is correct. I am here to purge the light from this universe, either by blood, or by blackening. And I don't mean good when I say the light. There is nothing stopping you from continuing to do good when you're blackened. Serzix seemed to have an inner struggle before he just slumped and sighed. Serzix, fine, do it. I don't want to risk my wife and the clan's lives over this. I started to summon my lovely black waters, and it made its way over to the pair of devils. They both backed up out of instinct it seemed, until their backs pushed up against the walls of the room. Artoria, excellent choice. Don't worry. It won't hurt, and if it does, 
It won't hurt for long, Pilda. I gave them a coy smile as my black water surged forward, and swallowed them both as they yelped in surprise. The waters settled and formed two large puddles where they had been standing. While they were converting, I fell into thought. The fact that the reincarnator was able to corrupt such a powerful person worries me. If I recall, Serzix is classified as High Satan, almost Super Devil. I was broken out of my musings by the devil pair surfacing from the black water puddles. They both let out coughs and expelled some water that was in their lungs. Serzix, that cough was very cough cough unpleasant. Grafia simply nodded her head. As I looked on, they both had the telltale signs of being blackened by my waters. Their hair was now much duller, pale skin, and red corruption lines over their bodies. As they both shook off the experience and stood up. Their eyes were also the dull yellow I expected. Serzak stretched around a bit, and then opened and closed his hands several times before speaking up. Serzak, well, I feel freer, that's for sure. Things I considered problems before don't seem as bad now. But, I see you were serious. I don't mind the idea of sacrificing the other factions now if it would guarantee mine would be better for it. But at the same time, new ideas are coming to me already on how I could use them to make the devil's lives easier. HRMMM, Gravia, don't start a war now. That'd be really annoying to deal with, Serzix Sama. He barked a laugh and said, Don't worry Gravia, I won't. I dismissed my sword, and asked him a question that's been on my mind. Artoria, Serzix, I am curious. Why didn't you use your power of destruction on me? He scoffed a bit, before looking at me. Serzix, oh, trust me Miss Artoria, that thought did cross my mind for a second there, but the moment you pulled out that sword, my instincts were screaming at me. I suspect my power of destruction could maybe slow you down some, but it won't actually stop you. And with that sword, and you clearly being a swordswoman, in this close of an environment, I couldn't risk it that I could get a lucky shot off. I know nothing about you, but that sword gives off such an oppressive holy aura while also giving off a vile feeling, I at least know you are not a normal person. Artoria, well trained instincts it seems, and a wise move to listen to them. Anyway, I want you to call the rest of the Satans for a meeting. I have an inkling that they are also corrupted by the light, if not, I'll still blacken them, to prevent the light from being able to. Serzix just sighed and nodded his head. Serzix, do you mind if we do it somewhere else though? I don't want it to be around my people if one of them decides to fight. I wave off his concern with my hand. Artoria, I do not care. Nodding his head he said, great. It'll take at least a day or two for everyone to be able to convene. I can host you in our territory in the meantime if you desire. I shake my head and say, no, I am going to look around for more signs of the garbage I am hunting in the meantime. I'll stop by here in a day to get the time and place for the meeting. Serzix, that works. Miss Artoria, I would say it was a pleasure meeting you, but, again, I wave him off. Artoria, don't worry about it. I'll see you in a day then. With that, I sank into my shadow while releasing the magic I used on the doors and room. POV switch Serzix Lucifer. I sigh as there, frankly terrifying, woman sank into the shadows and left. Serzix. Well, that happened. Gravia. Yes, indeed. I am surprised we didn't come to blows. I shook my head as I went and sat down and slumped in my chair. Serzix. What I said was true, Gravia. You felt that sword. You must have also felt the clearly draconic aura she was giving off to, yes? Don't even start on the magic she was leaking. My adorable wife sighed and nodded her head. Gravia, yes, I did. She felt much like a user of the boosted gear. But, we both know Ria's Sama's pawn has that. Serzix, which means, she is a dragon in some form. I sigh, and somehow slump even further into my chair. Serzix, stressful. So stressful. So... Do you think she was serious about this light business? My wife nodded at me with a frown. Gravia, I do. You were displaying some odd behavior every now and then. But, whether that is better or worse than what ended up happening to both of us, I can't say. I don't feel evil. But, I can also tell I've changed. 
I also don't disagree with the notion of sacrificing the other factions if it means our boy can live in peace. But, that act better not lead to a war, otherwise it would be pointless. I gave a cheeky smirk at my wife and said, speaking of changes, I have to say you really rock the pale skin, yellow eye look honey. She simply rolled her eyes before blushing a bit and looking away, Gravia, and you still look handsome, though I will miss your vibrant red hair. I sigh and nod, yes, I will too honestly, but, rather have some dull looking hair, than be dead, Gravia, do you think it was a wise idea to go along with that woman, we could have maybe fought her off, and escaped to find the one who corrupted you with light, I shrug my shoulders at the question before answering, Sussex, if everything she said was true, then I was slowly changing into someone completely different than the person you love. Can we really trust an entity who would do that to someone without telling them? It may be called the light but completely changing someone like that isn't a very good thing to do. So I don't think the line is as clear cut as it might first seem. My wife sighed while nodding her head. Gravia, you may be right. Only time will tell if we made a mistake or not. Now, what are we going to do about the other Satans? I brought up my hand and rubbed my chin in thought at that question. Sussex. We could subtly try and warn them, it's obviously too late for us, but then again, if they are truly corrupted by this light and it is genuinely going to change them, down to their very soul, is it right of us to not at least give them a choice? She just scoffed at that, Gravia, what choice? Become like us, blackened, or be killed off? Sussex, well, if they are truly corrupted, Gravia. They will still die. Being changed like that counts as a death to me. They won't be anything like their old self. She nodded her head at that. Gravia. That's also a valid way to look at it. I flex my hands a few times before speaking up. Sussex. Besides, Artoria is most likely telling the truth. She didn't lie about the effects of being blackened. So we know she is marginally trustworthy. Gravia. Also a fair statement. Sussex. For now. Let's trust Tartoria. With her, we have a small clue as to what exactly we are dealing with. While the person who infected me with the light is completely unknown. Gravia bowed to me as she went back into her perfect maid mode. Gravia, as you say, Sussex Sama 208, Chapter 34. It just had to be him. Uh, her? It's been two days and I am currently making my way to the meeting area Sussex informed me of. Much to my annoyance, I've not found anything about the reincarnator. But, they had to have had access to a Satan somehow, so that shortens the list. I swear to Tierwin, if they turn out to be another angel, I'll be so. So, I honestly don't know. Annoyed? Disappointed? Underwhelmed? One of those, I am sure. Grumbling to myself as I step out of the shadows, I look over the building that's my destination and sense for souls. So far, I can only sense Sussex and Gravia. Odd that there is a building in the middle of nowhere like this. Totally not suspicious. I guess they are expecting some form of trouble maybe. The building looked like a nondescript warehouse you'd find in the bad part of a city by the docks. Really, all that was missing was the docks, and city, and you'd have a classic low-level gang hideout. Shaking my head, I step into my shadow on the wall of the building and then out of one inside the room with a devil bear, looking around, it was actually a super fancy meeting room, a large circular wooden table was in the middle of the room, with about ten chairs around the whole thing, royal purple carpets and red painted walls with some gold outlines, some paintings of people were along all the walls evenly placed, devils to my guess, did not expect such an interior from the look of this building outside, looking at Sersex I ask, and the others? Sersex nods at me and says, they'll be teleporting in soon. Artoria, excellent. I then started to flood the entire room with my black water while I placed a hand on the wall. Artoria, reinforcement. As my waters were spreading all over the room, Gravia spoke up. Gravia, this black water no longer gives off such a horrible feeling like last time. It feels comforting now, even. Artoria, not surprised. You've already been touched by it, so you have nothing to fear from it anymore. And I agree with the comforting part as well. 
It always relaxes me to be surrounded by so much of it like this. A small smile makes it onto my lips as the black water finishes covering the entire room, ceiling included. I close my eyes and lean my head back to enjoy the feeling of my waters dripping down onto me. Sirzix, I have to agree. This is very pleasant, almost like I am in a hot spring even. The three of us just sat there, enjoying the black water for a few minutes before Sirzix spoke up again. Sirzix, so, not even going to check if they're corrupted by the light? Without moving I say, doesn't matter at this point. The reincarnator has expressed their interest in corrupting a Satan. I will not take the chance and let the others be corrupted if they already were not. Sirzix, I guess that is fair. As soon as he finished talking, the magic circle for the house of Sightry appeared. Soon after, Seraphal Leviathan materialized from the magic circle already in a magical girl pose while wearing one such outfit. Before she was even able to move a centimeter however, my waters surged forward and washed over her not even giving her time to yelp in surprise. Source, https colon slash slash high school dot fandom dot com slash wiki slash seraph or underscore leviathan. Her circle was quickly followed by the houses of Astaroth and Glazia Labellers. Much like Seraph although, both Ajika Beelzebub and Falbium Asmodeus were taken by the waters instantly. Source, https colon slash slash high school dot fandom dot com slash wiki slash Ajika underscore Beelzebub. Source, https colon slash slash high school dot fandom dot com slash wiki slash Falbium underscore Asmodeus. P.S. Yes. That is the best picture of his face. A few seconds after the two were pulled under, Sarah Fall broke the surface. Grafia quickly made her way over to her, and helped her up to her knees and patted her back. Sarah Fall. Thank cough cough you, Fiatan. That scared me for a second there. Being taken underwater like that before I could even do my intro. Grafia. You okay? Sarah Fall Sama. Sarah Fall wiped the last bit of black water from her mouth and shot to her feet. She then took up one of her magic girl poses. Wand included somehow. She had her left hand over her closed left eye with a peace sign and her left leg lifted behind her, with a large smile, and entirely too much energy for what just happened to her she shouted, something as simple as that won't keep the great seraph all down tilde. Sirzix. No, no I guess it wouldn't. Ha ha ha. She then relaxed and went to sit down, as she sat down she asked, so, what exactly just happened? Just as Sirzix was about to speak up, Ajika Beelzebub and Falbium Asmodeus both returned to the surface. Grafia also helped both of them to their feet as they were coughing out the water from their lungs. Ajika, thank you, Grafia. Well, that was certainly an experience. Falbium, I am sad it ended. It was quite comfortable after the initial shock. Everyone shook their heads at that, with Ajika speaking up. Ajika, only you, Falbium, only you. So, can anyone explain what exactly just happened? I am aware that I have changed, and judging by everyone's new look, we all took the same dip. And while we're at it, who is that woman standing near you Sirzix? As he was asking his question both him and Falbium took a spot next to Seraphul at the table. Sirzix sighed and said, it's a long story my friend. Get ready, because it's a bit of a doozy too. So, here is what happened. Sirzix then went on to explain what happened at the meeting between myself and him. Everything about it. Even the feelings he was able to get from myself and my sword, his reasoning on why he accepted the blackening and what it did and why it was necessary. After he was done explaining everything he stood up and bowed to his friends. Sirzix, I am sorry everyone, I thought we were going to give you a choice in whether or not you were going to be blackened, but Artoria here decided not to, and set up the ambush. But, in the end I did nothing to try and stop her or convince her otherwise as I truly think it's better to be blackened like this than to be corrupted by the light and be changed. Sarah Fall scary, if all that is true, then I 100% would rather have this happen to me, I have no idea if I'd still act the same toward my cute Sotan, that is something I won't risk, never ever never, Falbium, or worse, I could develop the desire to do actual work, 
and not sleep as much as I can. Truly, a horrifying thought. Everyone, including myself, rolled their eyes at that. Ajika looked at me and posed a question. Ajika, so? Were we all corrupted by this light? I gave a nod and said, yes, you all were. One thing I noticed is that all four of you had the same levels of corruption. Meaning, you were all corrupted at nearly the same time. Ajika hummed in thought while leaning back in his chair. Ajika, so, we happened to meet this agent of light at the same time, then, Artoria, reincarnator, in this case. But yes, it was at the same time. All four Satans frowned at the same time, and looked at each other. Sarah Fall, you don't think? Ajika, it would make sense. Falbium. Even I see the connection, and it fits with what happened to us. Artoria, what's up? You have an idea of who it might be? Suzix, possibly. Are you aware that we had a peace summit with the other two factions about a month ago? Artoria, I had no idea on the time frame, but I knew you did have one, yes. Or rather, I knew it'd happen eventually if it didn't yet. Suzix, well, during that small crisis... A third faction introduced itself to the supernatural world, representing the humans, and was being led by quite possibly the person you are after and who corrupted us. Tilting my head, Ajika answered the question I was about to ask. Ajika, they were being led by the reincarnation of Gilgamesh, a female, mind you, but she was very much Gilgamesh. She had everything one would expect from the original Gilgamesh, and then some. I was very interested in her, because reincarnation had never worked like that before. Yet, there she was during the battle, using an untold amount of weapons. Weapons from legends lost to time, like it was going out of style. What's more, is that she is also the White Dragon Emperor, or Empress in this case. Really? Gilgamesh? Well, at least I can get my revenge on the fucker in a way for all the shit he put me through during my time as a heroic spirit as I blatantly ignored the fact that this Gilgamesh was not the one I had a grievance with, and the fact that she was the damn white dragon. I asked a question, Artoria, in order for her to corrupt you, she'd need to touch you. She managed to touch all of you? Sarah Fall, well, she was so cute that I kind of hugged her after all the fighting was done. No surprise there, Suzix, she was also very polite to everyone, and introduced herself with a handshake to every respective leader in attendance. Artoria, great. So, she also managed to corrupt a few angels, fallen angels. Falbium, not just any, but the faction leaders of the two, and a few subordinates. She was overly polite now that I think about it, and was super eager to introduce herself to us one by one. Ajika, and now we know why. All of a sudden, Seraphal shouted out in a happy tone, yes. We all turned to her, and saw she had a small mirror in her hand while looking like her old uncorrupted self. Seraph all noticed we were all looking at her, and she blushed a bit before putting away the mirror. Seraph all, sorry, it's just I was dreading how to explain my new look. But, we can just use a bit of magic to use an illusion over ourselves for now. All the devils seemed to have an epiphany and then shimmered a little before looking like their old selves. All but Falbium. He noticed I was looking at him, and simply shrugged his shoulders. Falbium, what? That's way too much work to bother with. People will find out eventually anyway, so may. Artoria, fair. So, back on topic. It's looking a lot like the target I am hunting is the reincarnation of Gilgamesh, and she has likely corrupted the other faction leaders as well as a few of their close subordinates. And is this white dragon empress, that about sums it up? They all nodded their heads, while I sighed. Artoria, looks like I am going to war with heaven. Ajika, it would seem so, yes. Seraph all, yay. They wouldn't take kindly to you blackening two of the four strongest angels. It'll most likely cause them to fall, and well, damn it. I want to just corrupt all of heaven with my waters, but I think that would count as a global thing. Suddenly. All the color drained from the world around me and I was unable to move. I then heard the lovely voice of Lady Lilith in my head. Lily, I'll allow this exception. I think it would be absolutely hilarious that their heaven would be a corrupted place of darkness tilde. The looks on every soul's face that ends up there. Only to see it like that? 
Priceless Tilda. Go for it. I find that situation would be great. Tilda. The world then regained its color and Lady Lilith was gone. Well, that is great for me then. I might very well end up fighting everyone anyway though. Well, at least I have a backup plan that could also function as my main plan to deal with heaven. Closing my eyes, I focus on recalling all of my waters back. Sarah fall, or, it was nice to be surrounded by that stuff. Ajika, indeed. May I have some? Falbium. I would also like some. Artoria, sure. Then they both made some basic containers with their magic, and had me fill them. Rather large containers too. Artoria, anyone else? Everyone else shook their heads, while I nodded mine. Artoria, all right. I want to ask you all to help me track down this reincarnator so I can remove them. The sooner they are gone, the sooner you all can get back to whatever you normally do. Ajika. That's fine with me. I am honestly rather cross with her for pulling that shit against us. Everyone, agreed. Giving another nod I say, great, just leave a message with Surzix, as I'll check in with him every day, unless your communication magic can get a hold of me. All of a sudden, several of their family crests appear in front of me with their voices speaking out at once. Satan's, works fine. Artoria, I got it, I got it. I am not familiar with devil magic. So, if you catch anything about her whereabouts, contact me. In the meantime, I got some angels to turn. And maybe wipe out. As I was sinking into my shadow, Seraphal called out, have fun. I am going to go see Sotan. Shaking my head at her carefree nature, I speak to Sizix. Artoria, I want the location to the fallen angel's main base, or... You call their leader to you. I'll wait for you at your office while you finish up here. And with that, I fully enter the shadow and step out inside Serzak's office. It just had to be fucking Gilgamesh. While I am annoyed it could turn out to be fate Gilgamesh, I am also super excited to fight her. This could turn out to be a very real fight for once, if she was able to manhandle the attackers back at the peace conference. A cruel smile made its way on my lips as I was lost in thought. I hope you're ready, Jill Gay Mesh. I won't make this easy, or pleasant. 218. Intermission. Life continues in DC. Tilda one year after Arturia has left. Tilda. POV Zatanna Zatara. Zatanna. Nibmanisniak. I sigh as I bind the last man of some wannabe bank robber gang so the police may take them away. This is the third bank robbery attempt today alone. Shaking my head in exacerbation I hear a friendly voice call out my name from above me. Question mark colon hey, Zatanna. Turning around and looking up, I see the friendly smile of Shazam as he gives a wave to me while floating down to stand next to me. Smiling and waving back I say, hey, Shazam. How are you doing? As he softly lands next to me, he smiles and says, I am doing good. The crime rate is slowly getting better in my city thanks to all the help you've been giving me. Thank you by the way. I smile at him, but wave off his thanks. Zatanna, it's fine, Shazam. He then loses his smile and a look of worry crops up. Shazam, how are you holding up though, Zatanna? We haven't really touched base a lot since. Well. I watch the cops take the criminals away for a few seconds before I answer him. Zatanna. Better. I won't sugarcoat it though. My dad's death still hurts. But I am channeling my grief into something better than moping around. I can see a small wry smile creep up on Shazam's face a little out of the corner of my eye while he nodded. Shazam. Yay. I'll say. You've been incredibly active these past five months. You're not burning yourself out right? Or? I smile and turn to face him. Zatanna, I am not, do not worry. I won't lie though, I was in a very dark place for several months after their thing was pushed from our reality. I looked at every possibility to try and get the power to fight her, to go after her even. Shazam looked sad, but nodded his head in understanding while I continued. Zatanna, but, several months ago, I had an epiphany of sorts. I saw the light if you will. I already have the power to fight her. I am just not strong enough. So, I am changing that. I am working hard to get more familiar with my powers, more creative. After all, 
Nabu is of the firm belief that when she returns, none of us will be her match. Hell, there is a very high possibility that none of us would be able to even perceive her. So, I am working to change that. I won't lie to you, Shazam. This is about vengeance, as much as it is about stopping her darkness. Shazam nodded his head grimly. Shazam, no, no, I understand. Just, do me a favor, and do not lose yourself okay? I beam him a smile and nod my head. Zatanna, you don't need to worry about me, Shazam. I won't lose myself, I am very grounded. He smiled as he lifted off to float. Shazam, that's good, Zatanna. I need to go, league meeting. Not going to come again? I shook my head while he nodded his. Shazam, thought as much. All right, well, don't burn yourself out, or grind yourself down. Be safe Zatanna and keep in touch more. I wave at him, and shout when he starts to take off. Zatanna, you don't have to worry about me. I stand there for several seconds, before I turn around and my face becomes serious. Zatanna, after all, I have you to keep me grounded and on the right path, isn't that right, Glimmer? Yes, you don't have to worry Zatanna, I'll make sure you are not going to suffer burnout or lose your objective. But, Congratulations on completing one of your daily quests. Would you like to claim the reward now, or hold off for later? Later will be fine, Glimmer. I'll use the recovery option. Again most likely to keep up the pace. I have a long way to go if we are to be a much for that creature. Show me my status please. Sure thing, Zatanna. Tilda Zatanna Zatara Tilda. Race, human. Age, 28. Light alignment, 17%. Overall rating. E plus, target of, Righteous Hunt, Arturia Pendragon Altar, Praise Last Known Rating, AA plus plus, Skills, plus Expand plus, Abilities slash Spells, plus Expand plus, A long way to go indeed, Remind me, what does the light alignment do again? Okay, when that reaches 100%, the light will be one with you, and as such, it will be able to protect you better from the darkness's corruption. Empower your magic against the dark, among other things. You will most likely need it at 100% from what the gods and goddesses of the light think. Artoria is growing at an alarming rate, even more so since she has no system or anything of the sort. So, it'll take everything we have to make sure you're ready for the battle with her Zatanna. I nod my head with a serious look on my face, and a glint in my eyes. Right. Don't worry, Glimmer. I'm willing to put in the work. Now, the next daily quest, and after that maybe some more training in the tower. Tilda the Watchtower Meeting Room Tilda, POV third person. Several heroes could be seen sitting around the large meeting room of the Watchtower, which had been completely repaired. A rough cough sounded out, and every hero that was present took that as a sigh the meeting was about to start as they all settled down. Batman, today's agenda has a few things on it. But before we start that, Superman. How is the recovery going? Superman shook his head as he stood and spoke up. Superman, not terrible, but not great either as you all can see. Shazam and Black Adam were able to stop the magic from consuming my soul. But, there are still some remnants of her magic left which is causing my wound to not heal. Shazam thinks they will be able to fully remove all the magic afflicting me within a few months, and then I can have my fortress fully heal me in a matter of hours. Batman nodded his head and said, and I trust you are okay to work with that prosthetic for now? Superman nodded his head, as he flexed his life like metal arm. Superman, indeed. While this won't be able to fully replace my arm, it is a good substitute. It's made out of a bit of cryptium, so it should hold up to my day to day. While it was programmed with sunstone to make it more responsive than anything humanity would be able to do. Batman, good. The world needs a Superman and appearances are a factor too. Superman nodded as he sat back down while saying, I understand. Batman, next on the docket is the black water-like substance Arturia has left behind. We have successfully contained it for now, but this is only a stopgap measure. The liquid is slowly increasing in volume. Green Lantern, and how slow are we talking? Batman, as it stands, it will break containment within three years. It doesn't appear to be picking up speed in its creation, so the timing should be highly accurate. Green Lantern, 
The fact that it is growing at all, is worrisome. Everyone present nodded their heads at that. Shazam, yay. No kidding, more so now that we understand exactly what it is, or, at least we have a much better understanding of it. Green Arrow lifted his hand with a sly smile on his face. Green Arrow, ayuh, didn't read the file. A quick run down, Batman, depending on the strength of the soul of whatever touches the black water, the effects will vary, but the general theme is that a weak soul will have their body be completely destroyed by the waters while a strong soul will become corrupted. We are making a few assumptions on the corruption part. But the magic community thinks this is what is, has corrupted Artoria. Shazam, I mean, she kind of told us that herself didn't she? Batman, she did. We will need to count on the magic community to come up with a permanent fix for this situation though. A greater concern is there is a high probability that someone has broken in and gotten a sample of this black water. Everyone broke out in talk at that declaration before Superman managed to calm them all down. Wonder Woman. How did this happen? Batman, I found signs of some of the personnel being brainwashed. I move that we make finding this sample one of our top priorities, as it could be very damaging in the hands of evil. Everyone, agreed. Batman, and now the last topic, the secret society of supervillains and the ones that most likely stole the sample. 198, Chapter 35, War Games and falling a second time tilde. While I was waiting for Sirzix, I started to pass the time by fooling around with my black water. First I just formed some random shapes, but then got bored and decided to see how much my waters have changed from the infusion of Grim. I was about to make some more animals, when I had a better idea. I moved over to Sirzix's desk, and created a puddle on top of it, with but a thought. Tens of little people started to form and climb out of the pool. They all looked like the little green army men toys but black, highly detailed. No solid plastic connecting their feet and with grim masks. After they were done forming, which only took several seconds at most, they separated into two groups of twenty and all stood at attention towards me, looking over them. They all had a rather impressive assortment of weapons. While I couldn't exactly tell the details because of how small they were, you could see all sorts of guns, launchers and support items. I had the remaining waters morph into a little flag, and had the rest form some bleachers on the far side of the desk that faced me and the flag. Artoria, show me war, over this flag. You each have ten lives, after you die a tenth time. Watch the fighting from the little bleachers. They all stomped their right foot in sync while saluting me with their right hands, before rushing off to the sides of their bases. Each base was simply a stack of paper, and the area between them was wide open. When I saw they were all ready, I gave the mental command to start, and what I saw unfold before me, showed me how I had vastly underestimated my new control and ability with my black water. It was a legitimate war going on in front of me. While there was no sound of gunfire or shouts, you could hear all the splashing from the waters changing and reacting to what was going on. Each team had a single sniper, who was legitimately sniping. From across the desk, they had shock troopers, riot shield users, and shotgun rushes. They even had noob tubers and launchers going off. It was amusing to see the explosions go off as it was kind of like watching water balloons pop. Hell, they even got landmines, claymores, C4 and grenades. This is awesome. Each time one of them would die, they turned back into a tiny puddle of black water, that would race back to its base and reform. Any water from explosions or missed bullets would also just hitch a ride on the closest dead soldier. Soon enough, the bleachers started to fill up with little soldiers who looked like they were cheering for their side. Almost like a sports game. I noticed the teleportation sigil of the House of Grimmery, but I elected to ignore it in favor of watching this little war going on. The flag has been moved several times, and even captured three times. Once by the left team, and twice by the right team. All three times were from the riot shield users, as they were able to use the shield to block the sniper fire while running back with the flag. Sirzix, well, this is quite something. They give off the same feeling as the water you had us all bathed in. Artoria, as it should. 
They are all constructs of said waters, Sirzix. Fascinating. You have such amazing control over it to do something like this. This is very lifelike, Grafia. I agree. The attention to detail is most impressive, Lady Artoria. I simply nodded my head, as the fighting was starting to die down. Each team only had their snipers left, and a few others. Four units for the left team, and three for the right. A unit from the left side made a break for the flag while using his riot shield. When he got near it, he threw a long slim looking grenade. When it popped, the two shotgun rushes of the right team acted like they were blinded by raising their left arms over their eyes. Ha! Huh. Guess that was a flashbang. Was wondering why the pop was very subtle with little water coming out of it. As he grabbed the flag, and started to make a break for it back to his base the right side sniper stood up from behind his cover. A stack of erasers, but before he was able to take a shot, he got completely domed from the left sniper. His little body fell back and splashed into a tiny puddle. It then made its way over to the bleachers and reformed. The little man actually showed emotion and was stomping the ground a few times before he sat down with the rest of his team, who seemed to be laughing at him. Very lifelike indeed. These are so much more than mere constructs it seems. I wonder if they are pulling their reactions from my memories of how things like this would go, and acting accordingly. When the little riot shielder capped the flag I spoke out, though it was mostly for Serzix and Grafia since I could have just sent a mental command. Artoria, sudden death, knives only. One life, reset back at your respective bases. The few remaining ones saluted me, and did as I commanded. While their ones on the bleachers seemed to go wild with anticipation of what was about to happen. It was now four versus two, so the left side had the advantage. After taking a few seconds to reform their gear so they only had knives, the two sides then charged each other. When the two sides were about to clash, one of the units from the right side got cheeky, and had thrown his knife into the face of one of the lefts. He was also able to catch the knife that was thrown at him in response. Sirzix, what an upset. Seeing Grafia nodding along out of the corner of my eyes I thought. These two are really getting into this it seems. With a non-existent chuckle, I refocused back on the brawl. The cheeky unit managed to shank the one who threw his knife when he tried to get the knife that was left after his friendly unit despawned. So now it was down to a 2 versus 2, and they were all currently circling each other. I really should have added something to show which team they were on. I have no fucking idea who is who now. After a few more seconds of this standstill, they all just shrugged their shoulders and charged. It was a messy melee, filled with blood, black water, splashing everywhere. But soon, only one was standing, and the right side of the bleachers went nuts while they cheered and clapped. One way to tell I guess. With a slight smile and a nod of approval to the right team, I had everything splashed down into a puddle, and promptly absorbed it all. Sirzix, well, they were fun to watch, Gravia, agreed. Most entertaining, with a nod. I turned to Sizx and asked about Hazazel's location. Sizx, I do not know the location of his base exactly, but I do have a rough estimation. I could also just call him over. And you could ambush him? I shake my head and say, no. I would rather clean out his entire little group than just himself. If you can get me near his base, that'd be fine. I can then just search out for his soul. Should be rather strong like yours. Nodding his head, Sirzix snapped his fingers and a teleportation circle appeared under my feet. Sirzix, till next time Artoria. Waving him off. I was quickly teleported away. After arriving. I took a quick look around and noticed I was back in the human world. It was also around noon if the sun was any indication. Seems I am in the mountains somewhere. Classic place to hide a base I guess. Now, let's see if anyone is in range. I focused and spread my senses out to try and find any souls within range. A few seconds later. I was able to feel several directly below me a few kilometers. Only a rough idea huh? I am basically on their doorstep. Shaking my head. I sink into my shadow, and appear in a shadow near the strongest soul I could sense. Staying inside the shadow, I get a good look at who it was. Well, that's an interesting turn of events. 
before me doing paperwork, was as Azel, and he looked mostly normal even. But, there were a few things wrong at the same time. Source, https colon slash slash highschooldx.fandom.com slash wiki slash Azazel. First, his expected black hair and golden bangs were replaced with pure white hair, along with his goatee. The second, and major thing, was that his soul was a blazing white light as well. So, this is what a soul looks like fully converted to the light, huh, but why? Wasn't he infected at the same time as? Oh, is it because he was originally a creature of light, that being an angel? If I was correct, and that the light was able to convert entities that were originally aspected towards it faster, then I really would have to wipe out all of heaven and Grigory by the looks of it. I decided this was also a good opportunity to see just how strong someone like Azazel really was. I could ambush him, but my blood was boiling for a fight. And so with that in mind, I stepped out of the shadow on the wall into his room. He instantly looked up from his paperwork at me, and frowned. As Azel, I know the mistress said someone would be sent from the Dark God, but I was not expecting such. Well, whatever you are, no matter. I'll remove your darkness and help bring about a golden age of light, as planned. He then casually summoned a spear of light, and not light. I remember from the show that their abilities always were said to feel holy and had golden glows to them. His attack didn't feel at all like holy nor was it golden. It was pure white. Like his soul. Seeing he had aimed the spear to go through my heart, and while my instincts warned of slight danger, it was far from a fate blow. So I let the spear impact me. Azazel raised his eyebrow and scoffed when his attack hit. Azazel, really? Is this all of the agent of the Dark God? How dis a point ting? He quickly shut his mouth when he noticed I was not yelling in pain, or really reacting in any way. I kept my face strained on him, since I was fully armored he couldn't see my eyes, and slowly brought up my right hand and grasped the light spear in my chest. As I crushed it and caused the light spear to shatter away, as Azel's eyebrows both raised, I was uninjured from his attack and there wasn't any sign I had taken it in the first place. While that hurt a bit, not once did I feel like I was in danger of dying, I guess because of how my existence works and my unlimited mana, in order to kill me. They have to obliterate me all at once. No way to really check though, maybe they can overwhelm the rate at which I can repair myself, but it was basically instantaneous from what I felt. So good luck I guess, as Azel. Okay. This won't be as easy as I expected. Come then, filth. Let me show you the glorious power of the light and our righteous path. He then summoned two light spears to use as weapons, and charged at me. 215. Chapter 36. An unexpected turn tilde. As the fool charged at me, somehow thinking two of his little glow sticks would make a difference. I used reinforcement on myself and punched him in the chest faster than he could react to. Azazel, arg, he grunted in pain as his body shot through the walls of his hideout, and through the mountain. I was about to follow after him when I stopped as a thought came to mind. I don't want to have to hunt down every single person here. Some may also escape while I'm play. I mean fighting Azazel with a quick nod to myself. A rush of black water appeared around me in a whirlwind, with another thought, four figures stepped out of the rapidly moving wall of corruption and took a knee in reverence towards me as the whirlwind vanished. Odd, they don't have the grim masks like the little toy soldiers did. The four individuals kneeling in front of me were Team RWBY, but, unlike the soldiers, they are just highly detailed versions of them. No masks or any other color, just seemingly Team RWBY in the flesh crafted from black water. Weird. But whatever. With a mental shrug, I charged after Azazel while I sent only a single command to the four. Purge everyone. POV switch Ruby Rose. We all stood up as our wonderful goddess left to chase down whatever prey she was currently after. Ruby. All right team. You heard Lady Artoria. We got some cleaning to do Tilda. Yang clashed her fists together excitedly and smiled. Yang, this will be fun. You all can tell right? This is a whole new world. I wonder what kind of things we can kill are here. Oh man, I am pumped. 
Let's go. She then charged up to the door that was in the office while screaming, knock knock fuckers. She then punched the door, causing it to explode into the hallway, and practically disintegrate from the force. Turning to Blake as she released a sigh, she said, don't you not going into a room, Yang? Yang just shrugged and said, A hey, details, come on. Let's split up. Lady Artoria wants this place clean, and I am all too eager to do it. Vice nodded her head as she walked past me elegantly and said, Yes, we should not let her down. In our very first summons like this, while it was unexpected to be suddenly called by her, it is a great joy. Let's show her how much we have grown since she has left. Ruby, yeah, I can't believe it's already been a year since she has left think she would be proud of what we've managed to do in such a short, yet long time. I saw Blake nod her head while she started to sink into the shadows. Ever since she gained that ability, and saw our goddess do it, she's taken to using it as much as possible. Blake, I think she would be. Yes, Salem has been working hard, and it shows. Now, if you'll all excuse me. With that, she fully sank into the shadows and was gone. Giving a nod to the others we all split up and ran out of the office and into the halls. Vice and I went left, while Yang went right. While the two of us were running, suddenly several people turned the corner and we all stopped to look at each other. Question mark colon what in the world? What are those things? Question mark colon they look like people. Made of water? Are they a summons from some sacred gear maybe? I turned my head to Vice and tiled my head in confusion. Ruby, sacred gear. What's that? Vice just shrugged and said, no idea. But I am guessing they are referring to a weapon of sorts. I mean... We are not exactly here fully and are in these watery bodies. Ruby, true, but I feel like I'm all here. Like, everything feels the same to me. And I have access to my aura and semblance. Even Crescent Rose is here. Kinda. Vice, same. Well, the powers and abilities of Lady Artorio are well beyond us. So, no use in thinking about it. Ruby, also true. Oh well. Let's kill them. Question mark. Colon. Are they talking to each other? I see their lips moving, but nothing is coming out. Hearing that, I smirk and say, well, that's great for us. I could see a similar smirk on Vice's face as well as she said, yes it is. Now, I'll take the right few. I unfolded my baby, Crescent Rose, and gave a nod as I charged forward to my new prey. Question mark. Colon. Whoa. Attack. As we were charging them, a few spears of pure white appeared out of nowhere and were shot at us, but they were painfully slow, and honestly a total joke to weave and dodge around. Question mark colon first. I had appeared in front of my first target a lot faster than Vice had, and was swinging down my scythe. He brought up his hands in a cross position while summoning some more of those light spears. It did him nothing as my scythe didn't even register any resistance and I cut him in half vertically. Leaning back to dodge a fist, I countered with a boot to the face. The woman I hit screamed, as she clutched her face as she was thrown backwards and landed on her back. Writhing in pain, she continued to scream out causing a slight lull in the combat. Question mark colon it's like acid. Help. I feel it burning away at me. I jumped back to dodge another attack and Vice had joined me when she had stabbed another man in the chest, causing the same reaction to her target. I looked down at my foot in confusion, while Vice looked at her sword with the same thought. Ruby, odd, Vice, quite. Oh, remember? Salem was talking about the light and stuff like that once, and how several of the people we hunted down couldn't be converted by the waters and instead seemed to just dissolve. I think it's the same situation here. Ruby, Ah, little wonder Lady Artoria wants them all purged then. Abominations of the light. Both of our eyes gained a deadly glint at the realization that our targets were not normal in the slightest. Ruby, change is nothing, in the end. But I will take greater satisfaction from ending them now. Vice, agreed to be called by Lady Artoria for such a task. Let's live up to her expectations and flawlessly crush everyone. For my answer. I just charged back into the group of light abominations that were for some reason just standing around waiting. Question mark colon time's up. They are attacking again. Have you figured out what is wrong with Kelly and Fenuel? Question mark colon no. 
They keep saying it's burning them, but no visible damage is being done. Soul related? Either way, don't let them touch you. I had a cruel smile on my face as I beheaded another one of these abominations, and I could tell Vice was also enjoying herself. Don't worry, Goddess Artoria Tilda will be brilliant, and remove the stain of light from this area as instructed flawlessly. POV swap yank Xiao Long. As I pulled my fist out of another useless background mob, I could only sigh. Yang, these things are so worthlessly weak. Come on, I want some challenge here. Not that they can understand me. Suddenly feeling my instincts casually warn me. I tiled my head to the right as a bright white spear rushed past. Question mark colon impressive. To think a summon from a sacred gear could be this strong. What was Dadao thinking of when he created those damn things? Well, to be expected from a false god Ao, I guess, not thinking of the future at all. I turned around, and got a good look at who I was dealing with. Source, https colon slash slash highschooldx.fandom.com slash wiki slash barakil, an, just imagine him with white hair as well tilde. Yang, well, at least you look stronger than the rest of the garbage I've been dealing with, I say with exasperation and sulking a bit. Question mark colon it's very animated and lifelike for a summons, isn't it Sir Barakiel? Barakiel, yes, the sacred gear user must be rather powerful and have great command over it. Go, I will take care of this one. I heard we have three more to deal with. Tilting my head in confusion I think. The shit is a sacred gear. As the little sidekick was turning around, I vanished from my spot and went to attack. Much to my surprise and delight however, this barakeel was able to block my attack. It still sent him backwards a bit causing the little one to be pushed over. Barakeel, strong and fast. Very. Okay, enough fooling around, go quickly and gather everyone. It's safe to assume the other three are like this and they will need help. Question mark colon why why yes sir. As the little one scampered off, Barakiel started to wave his hands back and forth, as if trying to cool them off. Barakiel, that was a rather nasty attack, you're able to damage souls to an extent it seems, this will not be easy, come, creature of darkness, let's see what you got. Smiling at the prospect of finally finding someone challenging, maybe, I rushed him. As I threw a punch at his face, he brought up his hands to block. I noticed they were coated in what I assumed was some magic of sorts, but it didn't seem to do anything as much fist crashed into his. There was a small explosion of kinetic energy from our attacks and we were pushed away from each other. Barakiel, what sort of sacred gear created you? I wonder. You're able to completely ignore the power of the light that should be impossible. Ignoring his rambling. I rushed again and this time sent a kick aimed at his ribs. This time however, instead of trying to block the attack, he dodged. The force of my kick caused a large section of the wall behind him to be completely demolished. Barakiel, way too much power. I am starting to suspect you were created from a sacred gear contaminated by the dark god our mistress warned us of. Would also explain the nauseating feeling of pure evil I get from you. Now that I think about it, Yang, you talk too much. Making yet another rush, he raised his hand and an explosion of white expanded from his palm pushing me away. I ended up embedded into a wall further down the hallway. Doesn't even hurt, may not be my real body, but it acts like it, while also having some advantages it seems. Cool, prying myself out of the wall, I make a show of cracking my neck and knuckles. I saw the man frowned as he unfurled several bright white wings. Barakiel, not even an explosion of light did any damage then. Time to go all out I guess. Shameful, but needed. He then for once rushed me, and I was pleasantly surprised by his increased speed. Did summoning those ten wings make him stronger or something? Oh well, more fun for me. With that thought, I blocked the spear of light he used to attack and tried to counter-attack with a jab and a shot from my gauntlets. Barakiel, Arg, what was that? He rushed back to look down, and there was white blood leaking from the impact of my bullets. Barakiel, I can feel them burning my so. Having enough of all the chatter and delaying he does, I rushed him. His eyes widened as he went to defend with multiple spears, 
However, unlike the last time with the power that covered his hands, these spears didn't break when I hit them. This caused the man to smile and talk yet again, I see. I just needed to put in a great deal more mana to resist you. As we continued our little song and dance, I started to get more and more into the fight. He wasn't going down easily, and was keeping up with me. This is more like it. Yang, let's see how you deal with this. With that yell, I activated my semblance, and punched towards his chest. He must have noticed something was off as his eyes went wide as a bright white shield surrounded him. When my fist connected with his shield, there was a loud sound of glass shattering as I broke through, and smashed into his blocking arms. Barakil, impossible. ARG, he ended up spitting out some of his white blood, as my fist caved in his chest through his arms and sent him flying through several walls and eventually embedding him into what looked like rock. Right, we're underground. Totally forgot. I let out a whistle as I raised my hand in a mock show of blocking sunlight. Yang, da arm. He flew really far. Smiling at my achievement, I rushed after him, appearing near him seconds later. I was just in time to see him plop out of the rock face I had embedded him into. He was down on all fours and coughing up a lot of his white blood. I was impressed he was able to put any weight at all on arms that looked so mangled. Barakil, not pause. Possible. Erg. How did you break such a shield? And my ribs so easily? His body started to glow white as he mumbled something and stood up. I could see his wounds healing at a visible rate. Well, all the wounds but the gunshot wounds. He also noticed this, and frowned. Barakil, not that easy, eh? I'll have to ask them is. Suddenly, before he could even finish talking, a white line appeared on his neck. Seeing this, I just slumped forward disappointedly and sighed. Yang, Blake. Really? As his head rolled off his body, and it fell to the floor, one Blake Belladonna was seen with one of her tentacle arms covering her smile as she snickered. Blake, I really couldn't help myself. Yang, he was so unguarded and open. Besides, we're almost done with the cleaning up Lady Artoria commanded us to do. You've had enough fun slumping forward even more. I just sigh. Yang, no such thing as having enough fun, but I understand. Let's go I guess. POV switch Artoria alter. I smirk slightly, as I look at the rather weathered looking Azazel. Artoria, looks like nearly every soul is almost gone from your little hideout. Azazel, tell me, where is your master? Where is the stain on this world? Azazel frowned and looked past me to his base. Azazel. If you speak true, they died serving the light, which is a glorious death. You speak of stains, and yet all I see is you. Her Holiness will not be stopped from saving this damned world from things such as you, and the dark god you serve. Shaking my head, I just rushed him. He has learned that all the constructs of light he summons are useless, and has been doing a wonderful job of dodging my sword, more or less anyway. Not like I am even trying very hard though. Getting that second gate unlocked really was such a large boon. This fight would only go this way if I was using mana burst before. Landing yet another hit on his face with a reinforced punch and sending him flying, I had hid my fill of just messing around. Taking a page out of his book, I created a spear of black water and had it float near me. Artoria, final chance, as Azel righted himself, and coughed up some white blood before smiling towards me. Azazel, you may kill me, but the glorious gods of light, and her holiness will win in the end. There is no hope for you and your disgusting dark god. Having enough of his yammering, I send the spear towards his heart, going much faster than he could even hope to react to. It hit true and impaled him, as the black waters started to invade his body, and destroy it I appeared in front of him. Grabbing him by the neck I smiled cruelly while looking into his eyes. Leaning forward to his ear I start to whisper to him. Artoria, sadly, you will never know if your words will ring true. Your very soul is about to be destroyed, and I will do the same to every other single angel in heaven. Today, your race goes extinct in this dimension. Weep at your weakness. Weep for the fate of all who oppose my goddess. And to my surprise, and pleasure if I was being honest, 
he really did start to weep. Shining white tears of light started to stream down his face, as the corruption from my black water spear was nearly done overtaking him, he whispered his last words, Azazel, my brothers and sisters, I am sorry, I was not strong enough to push back this darkness, and then his tears turned to black as he started to scream loudly. Seconds later, his body simply turned to ashes in my hand, while his soul fizzled out of existence, brushing my hands together as if to get rid of the filth of them. I landed on the ground and turned around. Team RWBY soon rose out of my shadow and all kneeled. Artoria, great job. Now, we're going to go to heaven, and clean up some more stains of the light. They all lowered themselves even more, and much to my surprise, all shouted, RWBY, yes, Lady Artoria. I just stared blankly at them while my mind blanked for a few seconds, blinking rapidly. My thoughts were going a million a second, but then still, as only one remained, did I actually summon the real team RWBY? 211. Chapter 37, Go to heaven they said, it's wonderful they said, quickly getting over the fact that I seem to have summoned the real team RWBY for now, I focus and summon three more, my black water pools around me in a large area, before the three I wanted to add to our little outing rose in a kneeling position, by a slash Salem slash Raven, we greet you, Lady Artoria, a small smile appears on my lips, before I ask them all to stand, Artoria, so, welcome to the current world I am cleaning for Goddess Tiawin, the infestation of the light is heavy, as you all will see, we are about to go to a dimension aptly named heaven, before I continue, are you able to sense the stain of light in someone, Salem stepped forward and said, yes, Lady Artoria, ever since the change, we can now sense the light in someone, We've been keeping the world clean of it ever since you left. Giving her a nod and a small smile I say, excellent. Then, when we arrive all of you can ignore any soul not stained by the light to a heavy degree. Kill everything else. I will be flooding the dimension with my waters. But it will take time. And I want as few light spawn to flee as possible. Also, when we arrive, I will summon some troops for you all. Lead them and wipe out everything that is stained. All of them bowed and said, as you will, Lady Artoria. Turning around, I close my eyes and focus. Since I have the second seal released, I should be able to choose which dimension to travel to now with the spell Lucifer taught me. As I was focusing on the dimensions near, I suddenly felt extreme disgust from one. Probing it a little, I was able to tell this was heaven and it was absolutely flooded with the light. Artoria, disgusting. This dimension is just swarming in the light. Get ready everyone, and enjoy the slaughter. Turning around to them with a vile smile on my face I say, because we are about to bring a race to near extinction, if not to it. They all soon had the same smile on their faces, and looked more than ready to go. So, without wasting any more time, I started to cast the dimensional hop spell. Several seconds later, the spell lit up, and was ready to go. Good. I have way more than enough mana now for the spell. The third seal should let me also use the reality hop version properly as well. Maybe I should go back to the other worlds I went to, and update my black water? Thoughts for later. The runes in the air glowed a sickly purple red. Something that was new to me from the first time I used this spell I noted, and we were zipped away to us. It looked like all of reality just melted around us, only to reform seconds later. Looking around, we were in what seemed to be a meadow of sorts. We could see several human souls just relaxing or chatting all around. Some however, were looking at us with horror on their faces. Artoria, time to get to work, ladies, with a thought. A massive amount of black water started to pool in all directions out from under my feet. As the waters rushed a few of the human souls who were still gobsmacked at what was happening got caught up in the torrential flow. The sounds of screaming soon filled this wonderland of relaxation and ever after. My water has already claimed hundreds of souls so far, but none have survived the baptism. Either too weak, or too corrupted. Oh well, moving on with a thought. Hundreds of thousands of the army men that I played with before were rising out of the waters. But, 
They were full-sized now while still having full armaments. I turned to the girls, and motioned to the troops. Artoria, go now, and lead them. They are mindless, but not stupid. Purge everything. Yang, oh hell yes. Let's go, everyone. Clashing her fists together, she took her regiment of troops and ran off in a random direction. We all just smiled slyly and shook our heads at her energy. But soon, everyone else got their troops and headed in their own directions. While I was wondering where I should head to get to the system of heaven, I heard some yelling coming above me. Turning my head, I could see several hundred angels heading my way high in the sky. I took a quick stock of them all, and no one of note was with them so I immediately rushed them. In less than a blink of an eye, I had covered the distance and was now in front of the angels summoning and swinging my sword horizontally. Question mark colon wa, with my first attack, I had cut down over a hundred angels by bisecting them in half at the waist, while also getting a few completely soaked in my black waters as I had not stopped summoning it the entire time. Question mark colon abomination. Question mark colon affront to all that the light is. We will purge why. The little pigeon didn't even get to finish his taunt. As I was already smashing my palm into his chest, his entire body just exploded into a fine red mist and rejiblets, painting the angels behind him in a wonderful red. Artoria blood explosion and all that wonderful red paint soon exploded into a great ball of death and horror taking out tens of angels all around them question mark colon someone call for reinforcements she's too much we need a seraph letting go of my sword and having it float next to me i formed my hands into claw-like shapes facing inwards they were about a meter apart as i reached out over the rest of the angels artoria gravity well a small black dot had appeared in the center of the remaining angels and as I slowly started to close my hands onto themselves, it started to pull in everything around it. Question mark colon what kind of magic is this? Question mark colon I can't get free. Question mark colon quick, we need to teleport. Realizing they were about to all just teleport out, I stopped playing around and crashed my hands together instantly. The spell reacted accordingly and every single angel was pulled towards the black dot harshly and with great speed. What followed was a wonderfully sickening squelching sound as every one of them was smushed together violently. Soon, the only thing in front of me was a small orb of bio-waste and a whole lot of blood. Cancelling the spell, it soon all fell into the black ocean below me. Suddenly a bright pillar of light appeared several meters away from me, and when it vanished in its place stood one of the four great seraphs. Gabriel. A.N., sorry. No SFW pics of her it seems. So, you. Look her up at your own risk Tilda. Gabriel, how uncouth. When brother Michael said he sensed a great darkness appear, I did not think it would be. Whatever you are, you are disgusting. There is no saving you. Artoria, are you not looking down on me too much, pigeon? Do you think your beauty will be enough to fight me? She merely huffed, and looked at me with a very condescending look. Gabriel, I am more than enough for filth like you. I smirk and say, as Azel thought that as well. She narrowed her eyes at that remark. Gabriel, and where is he now? Artoria, oh, I am sure you could find him around several places as he was scattered by the wind. As for his soul, well, it's gone. Her face turned into a scowl while she said, you expect me to believe that you beat him? Smirking at her I say, no, I don't expect you to believe me. I vanished from where I was, only to appear right in her face as my fist came crashing into her gut sending her tumbling away. Artoria, I expect you to die. A bit of white liquid, her blood I assumed, started to drip from her lips as she righted herself soon after. I noticed that some sort of shield also stopped my water from splashing onto her as it was still just gushing out from below my feet. Must looks like I am standing on a giant pillar of water. Hey, Gabriel, I admit, that hurt. But you won't get lucky a second time, Dark Spawn. She then rushed me while summoning a light spear. Within less than a heartbeat she was in front of me as she went for a stab to my heart. Much like what Azazel had done. Since she wanted to follow in his footsteps, I allowed the same thing to happen again. 
She smiled victoriously for all of half a second before she frowned, and noticed nothing was happening to me, applying reinforcement onto myself to improve my speed. I quickly grabbed the offending wrist with my left hand to prevent her from backing away. Artoria, Azazel did the same thing. Here, let me show you how that turned out. Pulling down on her arm, I brought up my left knee right into her chest. We were able to hear several of her ribs break from the impact, letting go of her arm. I brought up my hands together and slammed them into her back. She rocketed down into the black ocean below. Much to my surprise, a barrier of sorts was indeed around her as it caused the black water to part. Unfortunately for her though, that just let her face smash into the ground rather hard. Another surprise though, was even though it looked like grass there was no dirt or dust from the impact. Just some clouds. So, fake ground eh? Clouds acting like dirt and grass it seems. Interesting, I guess. Turning my attention back to Gabriel, she was coughing up some more of her white blood and groaning. My voice was thick with sarcasm when I said, so. You got me on the ropes. Bet you are glad you did not bring anyone else. Would have been total overkill. She just groaned some more, looked up at me and glared. Smirking at her, I summoned some more random troopers to assault her shield since she was taking this fight a bit too calmly. She grunted under the strain of keeping up her shield. Or that is what I assumed. Gabriel, this isn't the end. Filth. I'll be back. Another pillar of bright light appeared over her and then she was gone. The random troopers I summoned then just melted back into the waters as well. Artoria, what is she, a B-rank villain now or something? I'll be back, with my brother. Could only shake my head at the young mistress-like personality she now had. Now that I had some peace to myself, I focused on where I was. Guess I really am on the third layer of heaven. If I remember, this area is supposed to be nearly infinite in area. So, no reason to not go all out on the black water creation. With another thought, all black water constructs I had summoned, including those from the RWBY universe, also started to create black water. That should speed it up, though, trying to convert it this way may take literally forever. So, I should head up, down, to the seat of heaven where the system is and just take that over. That should speed everything up. Another idea came to me causing me to stop in my tax, and it was a simple one. Why not more? And so, I started to create millions and millions of army troopers, as well as creatures of Grimm. It took me only seconds to have an army of hundreds of millions, and it was continuing to grow. My black water surged forth like an apocalypse of corruption. It was a positive feedback loop of horrifying proportions. Artoria. This part of heaven may be nearly unlimited in scope or whatever, but my army truly is unlimited in scope. With so much of my black water being created, soon the very environment and feeling of the floor I was on started to change. I had personally stopped creating black water, and instead only had it drip off my casually, since I saw no point now with how much it was self-propagating. With so much of it around me. I felt a total calm wash over me as I relaxed. As I watched on as my army literally flowed like a tsunami in all directions I only had one thought. Lady Lilith was right to limit my use of this normally. I wonder how long Gabriel's shield could have held out with trillions of black water bullets hitting it at once. Not even for a second I think. Oh well, time to move up. Or down. A floor. 210. Chapter 38. Smacks heaven this baby can hold so much water. I started to focus on the dimensions of heaven while my waters continued to grow and propagate at an ever faster rate. As I was focusing on the floors of heaven, I noticed that I was becoming more and more relaxed as more black water was created. As I was pondering on this feeling while searching for the right floor to teleport to. I felt a sudden and dramatic shift in the atmosphere around myself. Opening my eyes, I looked around in mild shock. The once pristine looking sky was now pitch black. The holy feeling the place had was also noticeably absent. Instead being replaced with a hard to describe feeling. It almost feels like home. It seems that enough black water has been produced that it is affecting the very dimension around it. Looking up at the pitch black sky, 
I smiled. It started to rain black water, from high above me. Raising my left hand to let it pull on my palm, my smile widened even further. I could feel a connection to this area, to this section of the dimension. And I had complete control over it. So, I did what any sane person would do. I had it create even more black water. I had changed my mind. I will be taking this entire dimension as my own. Artoria, today, heaven will cease. I will take it all, and then ask Lady Lily for a way to move it from this reality, and to have it be near Tierwin's forest. I wonder if Tierwin feels as comfortable with my waters as I do? I then sent a command to the black water and to the people from Remnant. Artoria change of plans. Purge everything. I want nothing to remain but my black water. I then felt a ripple come from the waters as well as confirmation from all of the denizens of Remnant. Smiling and giving myself a nod, I went back to focus on where to teleport. Now that I had a connection to a part of heaven, it was much easier to feel my way through its floors. I soon found an anomaly though. My sight could not get past a gate of sorts nor could I see the floor above it. I knew there was a floor however, as it was like looking at a black silhouette of someone, unable to tell any features, but able to see something is at least there. Focusing on in front of the gate, I used my dimensional harp spell, as reality melted before me, and reforming seconds later I appeared at my designation. Looking around, there was an absolutely massive gate in front of me. Looking behind me, I could see an endless expanse of white. Smiling to myself, I started to once again create black water. Artoria, well, time to get started. Now, what should I do about this gate? Oh, as I was thinking of what to do, I stopped mid-thought when I noticed my water hit some kind of barrier around the gate. The gate itself was massive, and frankly a very offensive white color, as it was a bar-type gate. I was able to see behind it easily and I could only smile a predatory grin as a pillar of light shone, as two people soon appeared. Artoria, hello, Michael. Source, https colon slash slash highschooldx.fandom.com slash wiki slash Michael. Turning my head to the other person there I smirked. Artoria, Gabriel. Feeling better now that you've licked your wounds? At least you don't look like a train wreck anymore. Now that I took the time, I noticed something that escaped my attention before. Both of their halos were no longer golden, but a bright white, while both of their hair was also pure white. Further proof they are nothing but tools of the light now. Hell, even Michael's wings are now white. I am sensing a theme here. Michael narrowed his eyes at me, and then looked past me briefly. I could tell he was not enjoying seeing my waters run rampant and spreading with such speed or ease. Smirking and speaking caused him to focus on me again. Artoria. Enjoying the view? I couldn't help myself. I see your white red door, and I want it painted black. Michael huffed and sounded annoyed when he spoke. Michael, you undersold the problem, as usual. Gabriel. Moments ago I felt the loss of connection to the third heaven. Whatever that is. He pointed at the waters behind me before continuing. Michael, is corrupting the very reality around it, it seems. Even with the armaments and spells from her holiness, I do not see heaven surviving unless we remove the source, the abomination in front of us. Summoning my beloved sword into my right hand as my whole body was dripping of black water, I gave them a cruel smile. Artoria, you sure know how to make one feel welcomed. Are you going to come out and play? or do I need to come to you? Both of them stilled at my statement before turning to me and laughing lightly. Gabriel, brother, look, it thinks it is strong enough to get past the gate our foolish father Owl left behind, nodding his head. Michael had a condescending look on his face as he spoke. Michael, well, she is the slave of a dark god after all. Don't expect intelligence or coherent thoughts from one such as that. Our father our as fake a god as he was, was still powerful, and not being able to talk about him is truly annoying. I really need to get control over the damn system sooner rather than later. I barked a laugh which caused them both to look at me in confusion. Michael, what do you find so funny, creature of darkness? Giving him a predator's smile I say, 
that you think a lump of enchanted metal has a hope of stopping what I am about to do to you. They both just scoffed and waved me off. Gabriel, go ahead, filth, dry. This gate can keep out most god-level beings. Aren't you thinking a little too much of yourself? Having enough of their prattle and this game, I raised my sword with both my hands. I then released my hold on my power, and used mana burst. An extreme amount of pressure then assaulted a massive area around us. Both of the pigeons opened their eyes wide in horror at my display. Artoria. No. You think too little of me. The gate, that they were talking up moments before, let out a loud moan as it creaked and groaned from my presence. My sword erupted in flames and light as I prepared to unleash a burst tear on the gate. Sensing the absurd level of mana focusing on my sword. Michael reached out and grabbed his sister, before I could finish my attack, they both vanished in a pillar of light, as I swung my sword downwards vertically at the gate I smiled at his action, soon, my attack met the gate, and a loud explosion rang out, seconds later though, what happened proved that Michael had the right idea as my attacks breached the gate, because of how heaven was created, there was not a lot of dust or debris from my attack, and I could instantly see the result of it, their once proud gate was nothing more now than molten slag, but it was still impressive, as I noted that my attack had only gone through for about a kilometer in length, vastly shorter than its normal attack range, another thing I noted however, was that whatever was keeping my waters at bay, had not affected my attack at all in any way, and with the gate nothing more than a pool of liquid white metal my waters surged forth to corrupt this floor as well, dismissing my sword, I walked through the gate as my water rushed by me, it always felt nice to be in or around it, sadly though, my pleasant feeling was ruined by a massive army of rank and file angels, none of the seraphs were among them, Artoria, do those cowards really think simple numbers will suffice? While there were indeed several hundred angels with ten wings, there wasn't a single pair above that. I could only shake my head and sigh in disappointment. Soon however, I got a plan that caused me to smile mischievously. With a thought, I summoned the seven people from the RWBY universe. They all rose out of the waters kneeling and facing me. Artoria, since I kind of stole all your fun on that one floor, I'll make it up to you. Wipe out the angel army here on this floor. All, as you will, Lady Artoria. Yang then shot up, and cheered. Yang, I told you guys, she wouldn't leave us blue bowed. Come on sis, first one to rip off a pair of angel wings. Wins. She then shot forward with impressive speed while Ruby yelled after her before using her semblance. Ruby, hey, wait for me. Yang, don't cheat like that. Salem slash Raven, kids. They both looked at each other before chuckling. Raven then drew her sword, and rushed after the two girls. Vice. Well, let's go Blake. Don't want Yang to hold another kill count over us for a month again, do we? Blake sighed and nodded her head as she said. Yeah, let's go. I wonder what their hearts taste like. She had a thoughtful look as she sank into the waters, while Vice just shrugged when she replied. Vice. Most likely bad. They are tainted by the light, remember? She then formed one of her crests from her semblance under feet, before shooting off into the army, using it like a catapult. Pyre. Ah. Wait for me you guys. She then also shot off, much like Yang did with pure physical strength. I heard a sigh come from Salem before she turned to me. Salem. See what I have to deal with? Oh well, I would be lying if I say I didn't enjoy my life a great deal more now with all the changes. Please, excuse me, Lady Artoria. She then bowed, and walked forward a few steps before raising both her arms. A ball of black magical energy soon started to form above her, and rapidly grew in size. Eventually, purple lightning started to arc off the giant death ball before she released a small grunt and threw the ball of death at the army. I watched in interest as the ball that was moving faster than sound collided with a few angels, completely ignoring them as if they were not there before it then abruptly stopped. The spell, which was now in the middle of the entire army, 
suddenly expanded in size to about two kilometers in diameter. Thousands of angels, regardless of number of wings, instantly died. Thousands more soon followed when the thing exploded into a fury of purple lightning. Impressive magic, to be expected of Salem though I guess. With a wave of my hand, I created a throne out of my waters and sat down. This has got to be the second comfiest thing I have ever sat in. Nothing compares to Tearwind's tales though. A calm smile bloomed on my face thinking about Tearwind, before I focused back to the slaughter in front of me. The angels were putting up a valiant fight, but they were fighting against a team of monsters, literally. Maybe if they were here in their real bodies, they might have had a better chance. But as constructs of black water, nothing really worked on the girls. Any light spears that were not dodged or destroyed by instinct, simply entered their bodies and disappeared. I wonder if anything short of a real god that can attack you through realities would be able to do anything about them? I do not sense their souls, but they are clearly the people themselves. Avatar-like bodies I guess, kind of like me. Now that I think about it, mentally shrugging. I just got more comfortable on my throne and continued to enjoy the slaughter, Tilda moments after Michael and Gabriel left Tilda, POV switch Michael as my sister and I materialize in her holiness's main base. I let go of Gabriel's arm. She collapsed onto the floor and was shaking in what I could only assume was fear, and I don't blame her one bit, that was nothing short of a monster in the guise of a human. Gabriel, brother, did. Did that really happen? Was what we felt real? I kneeled down and started to rub her back to comfort her. Michael, yes, sister. Sadly, it was. Heaven is lost, and I fear the only angels that will be left beyond you and I, are the ones who are not currently stationed there. I could hear little droplets of water hitting the floor as Gabriel started to cry lightly. Gabriel, I know what her holiness said to be true, but to see it firsthand like that? Brother, I do not see anyone escaping that darkness without her. Michael, I understand, and agree sister. It was hard to believe that such a thing would ever come to our world. I felt confident in her holiness's power and strength, but I fear even she will face a trial in the upcoming fight. Question mark colon oh, do tell, who do you think is my match? We both turned to the new voice and standing there in all her glory was the envoy of the light gods, Gilgamesh Lightsworn. Before we could say anything though Gil, as she liked those close to call her, rushed over to Gabriel and hugged her. Gil, what is wrong? What happened to make you cry like so, Gabriel? Gabriel couldn't take it anymore it seems, and hugged her back as she started to cry her heart out. Michael, here is what happened, Gil, as she continued to hug and soothe my sister. Her face started to harden as I recounted what I experienced. Soon, Gabriel was calm enough to also report what she experienced. Gil, so, the Dark God finally made a move, eh? I weep for the loss of heaven, and all your friends you too, but we will avenge them in the righteous fury of the light. She may be my match, but I have the light on my side, and it is generous in its gifts to those who follow. We shall come out of this the victors, no worries. She gave my sister one last pat on the back before she stood up and asked me about her name and looks. I shook my head and said, I am sorry, Gil. I did not deign to ask such a creature for its name, but this is how she looked. As I was describing the creature, I noticed Gil start to frown. Michael, do you know of this darkness? Gil, Gil, maybe. It sounds a lot like someone I know, if it is who I think it is. This will be easy. I have just the weapon to deal with her. So there is no cause for concern. Nodding my head, she then put up her arms behind her head as she spun on her heel. Gil, come you two. We need to tell everyone about the fall of heaven, and to prepare for the darkness that is coming. We shouldn't let her have free reign like this now that we know she is here. Let's take the fight to her as soon as we're ready. 204 Chapter 39 the consequences will never be the same again, and a choice to be made. Announcement. Poll at the end, very important Tilda, as reality melted back into place from my teleportation. I looked around at the area I appeared in. It was just a boring looking office with a door behind a desk filled with papers. Being an office in heaven, 
it was also needlessly bright, and gave off a light feeling, the same as those corrupted by it, and white, so much white. Shaking my head, I walked past the desk and opened the door behind it, my eyes widened by what I saw, as it was pretty impressive. This was the system that the biblical God had created, it was massive, truly massive, and was constructed with equally massive golden gears and cogs. The thing looked to be as big as an entire city. It resided in a seemingly empty plain of nothing but the system and clouds for a floor. The area around and beyond the system seemed just as vast as floor 3. I gave out a whistle at the amount of divine mana I could feel in this area. I also noted the distinct lack of any light corruption. She wasn't strong enough to infect this I guess. Curious. My pondering was soon answered though as when I stepped into the room fully I felt a massive wave of divine magic wash over me, trying to displace me. Out of pure instinct, I brought up my new aura shield, and fully unleashed myself while using mana burst. Even with all my ridiculous magic resistance and strength. I could just barely walk forward. This felt a lot like the spell that was used to shove me out of the DC universe. Gritting my teeth, I started to summon my black water at the fastest speed I could. A wave as massive as the gears of the heaven system appeared in front of myself, and rushed forward. But before my waters could get within the final meter of the system, a barrier was raised and stopped it. With an annoyed grunt, I summoned my sword and pushed forward to get near the barrier myself. With each step I took however, I could feel the pressure on me becoming even more intense, and before I could reach the barrier I had to stop, I felt if I went even a centimeter more forward, I would be teleported out. Artoria. This truly is testament to the power of that god. Even weakened, this system is able to resist me a lot more than anything else has, but unlike me, it doesn't have unlimited mana to fuel everything. Finishing my solo monologue, I started to do what I had done on the other floors, create black water constructs, and started the propagation cycle once again. But this time I also had them start attacking the heavenly barrier. Artoria. This dimension will be mine. I will not have the embers of a useless god rest here. Within minutes, billions and billions of constructs were either clawing at or shooting the barrier with millions more being created each second. I also noted with some amusement that some of the constructs were literal tanks and aircraft. With a sly grin I thought to myself, I really am my own apocalyptic army of corruption. After what felt like an hour of the cycle, I could feel the spell trying to displace me weaken ever so slightly. It seems I was correct as I knew I was. It is running out of mana. Unbeknownst to me however, my actions were already having a profound effect all across the planet. Heaven's system had started to stop supplying divine mana to objects on earth in order to keep its barrier up and protect itself. Needless to say, this was having disastrous consequences for the humans who needed said protection. All holy artifacts, relics and swords were starting to lose said properties, and the casualties were already starting to pile up. Tilda somewhere in an unknown location on DXD Earth. Tilda, POV swap third person, in a monastery that was currently under siege by creatures of the night. A priest could be seen praying to God to help keep the nightmares at bay. Tens of villagers were surrounding him, joining him in prayer. On his neck was a holy cross and behind him, a much larger cross glowing in a comforting golden glow. Said object was projecting a barrier to keep out the various beasts of the night that were making yet another attempt on their village. However, their luck and faith proved to be useless this day, as all of a sudden the holy relic started to flicker as if it was losing power. A villager's gasp caught the priest's attention as she pointed at the cross that suddenly stopped its warm glow. Question mark colon God has abandoned us, priest. What? Turning around, his jaw dropped as the once holy relic was now nothing more than a fancy cross. Soon, everyone heard loud crashes as the beasts of the night had broken into their little church. Women and children started to scream as they all tried to run away. While the priest still sat there dumbfounded that the holy relic that has kept their village safe from the night for hundreds of years had suddenly stopped working, even as a beast had run its hand through his back, and was biting his neck, he only had one thought in his mind as he died. Priest, why have you abandoned us God? What? 
have. We, his thoughts stopped, and his eyes lost their brilliant light of life as he was killed and eaten by a beast they had never really feared in the past hundred plus years. This tragic scene was happening all over his village as all holy relics had suddenly lost their divine power. This day, a village was lost to the darkness, and sadly for the humans of this world, their nightmare was just starting. Tilda England, back alley in London Tilda. Two exorcists could be seen fighting what looked to be some devils. They were holding their own with their swords and guns of divine light. They even seemed to be playing with the devils for a time. Question mark colon they sent us after strays again. Aren't the devils supposed to take care of these? Question mark colon no, don't complain, Marcus. Just kill them and be done with it, Marcus. Yeah, yeah, time to die, straight Ilda. But just as Marcus went to shoot the stray devil in the head with his holy pistol, it lost its glow. Even their swords had turned off and were nothing more than handles again. Seeing what happened caused everyone to just sit and stare for a few seconds, before one of the stray devils laughed. Stray, seems your god has abandoned you. Even mentioning him didn't hurt me. Ha. Huh? Both of the exorcists went wide-eyed at that, and quickly pulled out some talismans and holy water, as the two devils charged them. They threw the bottles of holy water at the strays, only to despair as when they shattered the strays didn't react in the slightest. Stray, ha, huh? he has truly left you. Die human scum. The exorcists panicked and tried to use their talismans to channel holy power into a magical trap, or to boost their abilities. Sadly, the two failed them. They could only look on in horror as they were mercilessly cut down by some basic strays they were toying with just moments before. Tilda the Vatican Underground in Wonder Holy Vaults Tilda Several priests, exorcists, and priestesses could only stare in horror and confusion at what was in front of them. The holy vault had lost its glow, and upon further inspection, Every artifact inside was also inert. Question mark colon even the holy sword Excalibur fragments are nothing but lumps of metal now. Everyone was panicking at what this could mean, and what could have caused such a phenomenon. Just as the archbishop was about to comment, a messenger had made her way down to the vault with more horrible news. Question mark colon your lordship, this isn't isolated. We have gotten news that holy relics from all over the world have lost their properties. Everything. We have also gotten info about several towns and strongholds that have already fallen silent. Casualty and missing person reports are also starting to trickle in. The archbishop turned away from the messenger with clear worry on his face as he looked back at the inert Excaliburs. Archbishop, God save us from this darkness. Tilda Japan. Cure. ORC building Tilda. Is I. Is I looked down at the boosted gig hornlet that had appeared on his hand in confusion. It felt different all of a sudden. Maria's looked up from her paperwork, and tilted her head in confusion, as she asked Is I what was wrong. Is I, I don't know, but my sacred gear, it feels different. The green gem on it started to pulse as Drake started to talk to the two of them. Drake. Something has happened in heaven. The constant chain that has been keeping my sacred gear prison in check, is now gone. Issa and Ria's eyes widened at that. Ray eyes. What do you mean, Drake? Gone? Drake. Gone. I don't feel any of the limitations on my gear by heaven anymore. Hell, I bet I could escape from this prison now if Issa were to die. Granted, I'd need a body. Issa, you, Drake. Don't worry, partner. I like you, and won't do anything, but keep this in mind, you too. Something major has just happened in heaven, as the system that manages my gear has never lost its connection. Not once, Is I scratched the back of his head in thought before saying, maybe Artoria did something? Rias looked startled before she said, to all of heaven? Is I shrugged and said, well, we had a peace treaty right? Who else that we know would or even could affect the system up there? Rias hummed in agreement before she started to make a call to her brother to inform him of what had happened. Tilda Heaven, with Artoria Tilda, POV Swap Artoria. I could only smile widely as I was now standing close enough to the barrier to touch it with my hand. The push I felt from its spell has all but stopped a few moments ago as the system is now solely focusing on maintaining the barrier around itself. 
Without wasting any more time, I started to join in on the attack with my sextillions and sextillions of constructs. With each slash, every bullet, every claw swipe, and every bomb the barrier was starting to lose its luster and golden glow. I could even feel the divine mana and aura the place had starting to drastically change finally as I was making headway on the barrier. This is super impressive though. To stall me this much, is no small feat. No wonder that tool of the light couldn't corrupt this, or even have Michael use it anymore. These are some serious defenses. Sadly though for the heaven system, like most things in the universe it had a limit, and it was reaching that limit rather soon. The barrier now had lost nearly all of its golden luster, and the area around was now like floor 3. I had nearly converted this part of the heaven dimension, and this last bit of resistance was about to give. Raising my beloved sword in a two-handed strike, I brought it down with all my strength. There was a loud crashing sound like glass as the barrier finally broke under my relentless onslaught. My black waters quickly rushed the system and soon it was completely drowned in it from the base all the way up to the tip. I hadn't even noticed I was also completely submerged. Shaking my head at my lack of attention I sometimes had, I looked on with a victorious smirk as the gears on the heaven system started to die black. Interesting. So it's going to be converted, and not destroyed him? I honestly didn't expect it to be able to be corrupted. Kinda assumed it'd be like the light, and just be destroyed. Soon enough though, Every gear of the heaven system was a pitch black, and they had all stopped moving. A few seconds later they all started up again and I felt a connection form between myself and the system. Suddenly, I could feel words appear in my mind. Tilda, welcome, mistress, apocalypse system online. Tilda, manage dimension, sacred gear management, holy power distribution, dash greater than dark corruption distribution. Blackwater management and creation. I just stared blankly for a moment, reading what was in my mind. I was not expecting something like this if I were to be honest. No, what I was expecting was the heaven system to be destroyed by my corruption, and failing that I expected it to just become a dark heaven system or something. Not whatever this was, this obviously changed quite a lot from its original purpose. Now, what do I want to do with it? Should Artoria use the system? Yes, Tilda. Votes. 245.77.8%. No, Tilda. Boo Systems Tilda. Votes. 70.22.2%. Total voters. 315 middle. This poll was closed on December 10, 2022, 5 a.m. 191. Chapter 40. The Apocalypse System Tilda. I hummed in thought about what was in my mind after the Heaven System, now Apocalypse System, was showing me. Well, I went through all the trouble of corrupting it so might as well. Even if this wasn't exactly what I was expecting. With a shrug, I mentally clicked on there. Manage Dimension. Tilda Manage Dimension Tilda. Flaws. Default Entrance Requirements. Populous. Laws. With another thought, I opened up. Floors, tilde floors, tilde, add, remove, merge, manage floor hash. This kind of reminds me of some dungeon manager UIs I've seen back when I was human. Selecting on merge, a warning came up. Tilde error tilde, cannot merge. Several floors have sentient entities on them. All floors must be empty to merge. Floors with entities, 1 slash 2 slash 4 slash 5 slash 6. Frowning. I focused on my black water to see what was happening on floor 6. It didn't take long to see that the remnant girls were still having some fun with the angels, not wanting to spoil it for them. I instead clicked on manage floor hash and selected one tilde floor 1 tilde. Notice weak enemy units detected on floor 1295. Perch, a cruel smile crept on my face, which was quickly replaced with a small pout. Artoria, I want to watch this happen, but I have no. Oh, excellent. Halfway in my lament, suddenly a large viewing screen showed up in front of me that displayed an aerial view of floor 1. Looking around, this floor was much the same as the others I've seen so far. That is to say, white, cloudy, full of annoyances. Zooming in on a random location, 
I was able to see several one-pair winged angels going about their business. With a cruel smile back on my face in full force, I activated the purge. The angels all noticed something was wrong immediately, as all of their heads shot up towards the sky, followed by them all suddenly getting pale and running around trying to hide from something. Sadly for them, they only managed to make it a few steps before they all looked like they were screaming as black light was erupting from their eyes and mouths. Artoria, need to find a way to add sound. Still, even without hearing what was going on, I was not overly disappointed though. What I was seeing was making up for it tenfold. A few seconds after the black light had erupted from them, they all fell to their knees. And a few more seconds after that, they all started to just simply fade away as if they were snapped out of existence. Well, that was great. That looks horribly painful too. After the last angel was purged the display in my head changed, and the one in front of me disappeared. Tilda purge complete displaying floor tilde floor 1 facilities units remove floor entrance permissions requirements features slash decorations slash miscellaneous settings when i tried to go into the facilities and units menu it was sadly empty and it gave no indication on how i could fill it with a mental shrug i opened entrance permissions requirements instead tilde entrance permissions requirements tilde open to public yes lock to hostile entities yes divine requirements none corrupted level requirements none accepted units na open to public is set to yes action if breached by hostiles alarm hmm these all look pretty standard for the most part divine requirements is odd though I guess it's to make a floor where only something with a strong divinity can go to. When I went to modify the settings for corrupted level, it only gave me three options, none slash normal slash grim servant. Interesting. So I can deny access to entities who were only just basically converted by my waters then. I wonder if my grim level of corruption is comparable to what Gilgamesh is doing. The remnant girls are different but their personalities are also not drastically changed. I mean sure, they seem to worship me, and are evil. Some may even say monstrous, but their core personality seems to have been kept intact. Right? I just gave a shrug at the thought, and dropped it after a few seconds. Not like I care really, they are having fun, and I honestly think they have a better life now compared to the shitstorm they'd have to go through otherwise. Returning back to the main menu of floor 1, I clicked on, features slash decorations slash miscellaneous settings. In this menu I was able to change how the floor looked, what kind of flower it had, and even the time of day or weather simulated. I could quite literally treat it as a canvas and shape it to how I desired down to the fluffy clouds. I can't design for shit though, so skip. I was about to start purging the last few floors so I could merge everything into one large dimension when I got a message from Ruby. Ruby, we are done, Lady Artoria. Turning so the apocalypse system was behind me. I created a throne from my black water. I had mostly drained this floor of water till there was only a thin layer of it on the ground left while I was messing with floor 1. Sitting down, I told Ruby to have all them come to me. A few seconds later, all of the remnant girls rose out of the water in a kneeling position with their heads bowed down. Girls, we greet you, Lady Artoria. Artoria, welcome back, girls. You may stand, and relax. Did you all have fun? As they all stood up, Yang immediately gave me a thumbs up and a nod with a smile. Yang, sure did, Lady Artoria. While most of them were total weakling, it was still fun thrashing them. All the girls nodded at that, even Salem and Raven. Salem, yes, it was quite the relaxing experience. These bodies, avatars you created for us are wonderful, my lady. They are honestly quite a bit more durable than I normal ones. Raven gave a nod at that and said, that is true. Not having to worry about dodging their spells was nice, and the looks on their faces when they hit us, and nothing happened. Delicious. Vice. Quite. It was also good practice. I was able to fight several angels that had a good grasp of swordplay. It was a nice boon for myself. Thank you, Lady Artoria. Artoria. 
you're welcome, Vice. I am glad you all had fun. So, Salem, how is life on Remnant? Are you happy over all that you took up my proposal in the end? How is Ozpin? Salem smiled at me, while nodding her head. Salem, life is good, my lady. I would say almost 100% of the world is now fully converted by you, with a few outliers here and there, but with very few precious pure water resources left, it's only a matter of time, as for Ozpin, he is doing great, that is to say, he is absolutely miserable, I have him under constant watch if he's not near me, we've had a few incursions of light over the course of the year since you've left, my lady and I don't want to risk him getting that garbage in him. Nodding my head I say, that is a good plan. Are you ever going to convert him, or torment till the light eventually tries to take him? While Salem and I were conversing, I was purging the rest of the floors of any angel remnants. Salem, no, I don't think he deserves to be embraced by your power, my lady. So, I'll keep him as a pet to torment till the light makes a move for him. And when that happens, I'll personally dunk him into the black waters. It's amusing watching those corrupted by the light scream in agony as they melt and flake away, nodding my head. I had to agree with her. It was rather amusing to watch that. Artoria, well, that is everything for now girls. I will most likely summon you all again, and soon. I just took over this dimension and I'm doing some housekeeping, but when I attack the Agent of Light, I'll bring you back to deal with her followers, I can tell you all, even you Salem and Raven, like fighting as much as I do, Team RWBY giggled as they looked at the two adults who shied away from my gaze, Yang, I can't wait, Lady Artoria, don't ever hesitate to summon me like this for fighting, it's a blast, as she said that, she clanged her gauntlets together and had them shoot, I smirked at the pun, and gave her a nod while everyone else just groaned. They all bowed deeply before their forms lost coherence and splashed down. Such a lively group. I do enjoy their attitudes though. I should make an effort to summon them more often. With that note, I focused again on the apocalypse system and had selected merge once again. Tilda floors tilde. Notice. Merging all floors, excluding current floor will cause the removal of all units slash facilities slash settings. Continue. When I selected yes, it gave me a one minute countdown till it was finished. While I was waiting, I brought up the main menu again. Tilda welcome, mistress. Apocalypse system online. Tilda. Manage dimension, 47s till merge is done. Sacred gear management. Dark corruption distribution. Blackwater management and creation. Resisting the sacred gear management. For now, I went to the Blackwater section. Tilda Blackwater management and creation. Tilda. Notice. A permanent connection to the core of the mistress is needed for further action. Continue. I raised an eyebrow at that and went into thought for a few minutes. It didn't take me long, however, as I was already liking what I was seeing with this system. I selected yes. As soon as I did, I felt something latch onto the very essence of what and who I was. Much like how I could feel my sword and scabbard, I could now feel the apocalypse system. Tilda Blackwater Management and Creation Tilda. Connection successful. Notice. Infinite corruption mana detected. Lifting all safeties from all sections of the apocalypse system. Done. Scanning for all sources of black water connected to mistress. Done. Connecting all sources of black water to the apocalypse system. Done. Updating all sources of black water to current level. Done. Resetting all black water sources to their original settings. Done. As the system was doing its thing, I suddenly felt a connection to all the black water I had created in all the worlds I visited. No, that's wrong. It's not a sudden reconnect. It's just I can actually sense the connections now. I never lost the connection like I thought I did. Tilda all tasks and updates done to all sources of black water. Displaying menu. Tilda. Slash backslash. Tilda Blackwater Management and Creation Tilda Worlds Default Properties When I opened Worlds, it had a small list of the worlds I created some Blackwater in, and clicking on such a word would bring up another menu about how I wanted the water to act. Things like propagation, 
what type of corruption I wanted and things like that. An interesting thing I took note of though, was the ability to copy whatever I had corrupted with my waters to use as a unit in my dimension. Curiosity got the better of me, and so I went to the MHA world and looked at the list of who I could copy. Wow, they've been busy, there are millions of names here. While I was wondering just how much time had passed in that world since I was there, I searched for All Might's name. Luckily, the system obliged with my will and his name popped up a second later, selecting him as a copy. I then had the system summon him as a unit next to me. An orb of black water appeared in front of me before it took the form of All Might. I made note however, that he had a grim mask. I guess that means units will not be sentient, but just mindless monsters. This really is like a dungeon manager in some ways, hey, but to make sure. I went through the same steps and copied our ruby. Moments later, she also appeared next to All Might, but just like him she had a grim mask, and was mindless. With a thought, I dissolved both of the units, as I had no need for them at the moment. When I was selecting ruby for a unit, I noticed that there was an extra option for the remnant world and there was for the MHW one, and that was, communicate. Going back to that option. When I selected it a list of names was displayed, deciding I had no reason to not test this as well. I selected Salem. Moments later, I heard her voice in my mind. Salem, I answer your call, my lady. How may I serve? Artoria, I am just testing some features of the new apocalypse system I got my hands on. Do you remember the summonings I did with you and the others by chance? Salem, I see. And I do, my lady. We all remembered being summoned a few days ago. I will be honest. I was worried what might have happened to our bodies while we were in your service. But when we returned, absolutely no time at all had passed, which was a nice and pleasant surprise. As expected of you, my lady. Artoria. Wonderful. I'll let you be Salem. The flow of time is different however, as while it's been a few days since you have been summoned, for me it's been minutes. So... While I expect to summon you in a day or two, it seems it might be a month or more for you. Just a heads up, but it doesn't really matter in the end since you confirmed no time passes for you when you're summoned. Salem, as you say, my lady, it is always a pleasure to speak to you, and I look forward to being summoned again. Killing those angels is a great stress reliever, even if I am not under any currently. Good day. Lady Artoria. And with that, I cut the connection to her. Well, I can now converse with those across realities as long as they are grim levels of corruption. This opens more shenanigans for myself, and the fact that I can summon them as mindless units as well, is a huge boon. I had my doubts about the usefulness of this system at the start, but from the few settings I have messed with so far, it'll be a great boon to myself. Now, let's get back at it. 203. Chapter 41. Chap name at the end Tilda. Tilda merging a floors done. Tilda. Going back into the floor menu to confirm, I nodded to myself. Looks good from here. Just one giant area now. And my waters are flooding and spreading across the increased expanse. Tilda managed I mention Tilda. Floors. Default entrance requirements. Populous. Laws. I then opened up. Laws to see what that was all about. Tilda laws tilde. Active laws. Zero. Add. Remove. Mana available. Na. Not surprised to see no laws in place, since I seem to have done a slight system reset by taking the dimension for myself. Well, let's see what I can add. With a mental click, I open up. Add. I was greeted by the UI asking for the law name, a description of what the law should be doing and how much mana said law is allowed to use to get it done. Raising an eyebrow at the very ambiguous looking UI, I decided to test it out. After creating the law, it displayed it in a nice clean UI, and asked if I was done. I double checked it just to make sure it was exactly written as I wanted it to be. Tilda all the evils barrier tilde. An infinitely dense barrier of black water of the highest order surrounds the entire dimension. Nothing may enter this dimension without first being baptized by this barrier. Entities with hostile intentions are instead ripped apart, soul and all, by all the evils of the true omniverse. Exceptions. Tierwin. 
Allotted mana, NA, decree, revise, cancel. As soon as I clicked on decree, however, a notice appeared. Tilda notice. Tilda. Description for Blackwater does not match with the current ability of Blackwater. The mistress is suggested to travel the true Omniverse to gather more power for Blackwater, decree law regardless, and have Blackwater set to auto-update. Yes, revise law. Well, that answers if this system would be omnipotent if it had enough mana. Expected honestly, but this works just as well. Clicking on, yes, I immediately felt the change to my dimension. The feeling I would always get while surrounded by the black water, now permeated my entire being. I felt an immense sense of peace wash over me as I leaned back into my throne. I may have destroyed the human heaven, but by this act I have created my own. There is only one thing missing. I sigh in near perfect contentment. Artoria, I wish Tearwin was here to share this with me. I suddenly felt a weight on my lap and as I opened my eyes in confusion they could only open further in surprise. Tearwin, Artoria, Tearwin then hugged me and snuggled a bit against my breastplate. Artoria, Tearwin, quickly dismissing my armor so we could properly hug each other. I do just that. Artoria, how are you here? Tearwin, I thought divine law prevented you from coming into this universe? You won't get in trouble will you? She snuggled deeper into my embrace before I felt her shake her head at my question. Tearwin. Nope. Artoria, you are amazing. You not only took over this dimension with your own power, you were able to create an omnibaria. Tilting my head in confusion, I asked Tearwin what that was. Her tails wrapped around us, as she leaned out of the hug while summoning some of her favorite cotton candy. I wait patiently while she nibbles for a few seconds before she looks up at me. Tearwin, an Omnibaria is something that we gods naturally create around our home dimension. My forest for example. Nothing may enter it without my permission, as long as I am stronger than it. But even then, it takes an immense amount of power to break such a barrier. Well, not for big sister Lily. But she's special, anyway. These barriers are the main reason we gods can't just kill each other. And as I said, they're created naturally and not by our own intentions. This is why they are so strong, I think. She stops for a bit to nibble on her candy, and I can't help but start to give her head pats. After a minute of nibbling, she continues. Tearwin. Besides the strength of each barrier, their effects are just as crazy strong. You never know what may happen when you attack an Omnibaria. It may absorb the attack, and send it back, or, just simply absorb it and use the energy to repair itself. With the strength of the Omnibarias and how powerful and crazy the effects can be, it's just not worth the risk. Big Sister Lilith said the gods used to attack each other's barriers back at the start of the true Omniverse, but that quickly stopped when the first few fatalities started to happen. So that's why we attack each other's power base, so to speak, and then summon the target out of their barrier. Nodding my head, I pause though at a contradiction. Artoria, but, wouldn't the summoning be prevented by the barriers? Tearwin shakes her head as she takes a bite out of her cotton candy. Tearwin, normally, yes, but that is where divine law comes into play. By said law, if we have no power base, our barrier will permit us to be summoned. We then have to fight the champions of the offending god, because by the same law, they can't descend. It's a weird system if you ask me. Giving her some scratches behind her left ear. I nod and agree with her. Artoria, that is weird. But, then how are you here? Tearwin then dismisses her empty cotton candy stick, and looks up at me with almost literal stars in her eyes. Tearwin, that's the amazing thing, Artoria. Your omnibaria is so strong, it is actually blocking divine law. Only super duper powerful gods have omnibarias that can do that. But, you pulled it off like it was nothing. I knew you were awesome, Artoria. So, since divine law can't enter your dimension, I am free too because you let me. My eyes widened at that revelation as I realized the implications of such a powerful barrier. Artoria, Tearwin, I have a question for you. She tilted her head to the side as she nodded. Artoria, are we? Well, first, how do you feel about my black water? Tearwin, 
Black water? Oh. You mean the liquefied evil you always have around you, and summon? She then waves her hand over the throne we're on, and over the floor of my dimension. As I give her a nod, she smiles at me. Tearwin, it feels very welcoming, because it's from you, Artoria. Well, I know I said it's liquid evil but we both know that's not entirely right. But, why do you ask, Artoria? You don't dislike it? It doesn't bother your tails when they touch? She shook her head and said, Nope. Like I said, it feels welcoming. I can feel that your omnibaria is made out of said evils, which is causing the whole dimension to feel very relaxing honestly. But that's only because of how you regard me, which honestly makes me feel very happy. She then hugs me and nuzzles into my chest once again. Tearwin, while many dark gods, including me, can summon something much like your black water. At the same time though, we can't as yours is super unique. In human terms, it's much like a nuke. It will just destroy whatever it'd touch. Only yours corrupts like this, and converts. She then makes a point to lower one of her tails onto the floor, and we both watch as it sinks into it. Tear win. Only yours can be selective on who it harms, and even feel welcoming at all. I bounce my chin lightly on her head to show her I understood. Artoria, I see. I am glad you feel comfort from it as I do. Then, my next question is this. Would you like to merge our dimensions? She shoots out of the hug and looks at me with shock on her face. Tearwin, really? You want to merge your dimension with me? Tilting my head in confusion to such reaction I slowly nod. Tearwin sees the clear confusion on my face and starts to explain. Tearwin, merging your dimension with mine would give me the protection of your Omnibaria, Artoria. Since yours is so much stronger than mine, it would take priority. Doing so would also free me from divine law while inside our dimension. Which only really means that I can't be summoned if I were to ever lose my power base. But that is a huge deal. Tears start to form on the edge of her eyes, which surprises me greatly. Tearwin, you'd really do that for me. Artoria, you'd share your home with me? I hug her tightly as I nod. Artoria, I'd share my everything with you. Tearwin, keeping you safe is one of my top priorities. I can hear her sniffle in my chest as she hugs me back with all her strength. Even though her voice is muffled a bit because of the hug. I can still hear the worry in it as she talks. Tearwin, are you sure, Artoria? Really, really sure? You are on your way to ascension. I can tell you'll become a dark goddess like me, one day. You should know, because I am sure you can feel it with your dimension. They are not simply a home for us. They are a part of us, as much as we are a part of them. She pulls back from the hug, and looks me dead in the eyes. Tearwin, by merging your dimension. An essence of yourself with mine, you are saying you want to be family. That you are willing to share your power with me, and I with you. So when you ascend to God Eshud, we will share our power. She then looks down as her ears droop. Tearwin. And you will be so much stronger than I will be, Artoria. Looking back up at me she continues, are you fine with that? With Shah. I don't even let her finish as I pull her into a hug again, patting her head, and rubbing her back. Artoria. S-H-H. I am more than fine with that, Tearwin. I said it before, didn't I? Just a few minutes ago, even. I will share my everything with you. And I mean it, Tearwin. I can feel her tiny arms wrap around me, as she hugs me with all her being as she starts to cry. Tearwin, I was so scared, Artoria. I was so alone, and under attack. No one wanted to help me. I hug her tighter and say, S-H-H. It's okay Tearwin. I am here now. Nothing will harm you. And I will wash away anything that dares to dry. I am not going anywhere. Ever. I can feel her nod her head as she continues to cry. Tearwin. I believe you. I was so worried about you leaving eventually. Artoria. I really like being around you. She tries to bury her head deeper into my embrace as more of her tails wrap around us. Tearwin. I was so scared that you'd leave after all the reincarnated work guild, but I didn't know how to bring it up. I didn't want you to hate me, and think I was trying to use you. I hum a little as I continue to rub her back and give her head pats in an effort to calm her down. Artoria. I would never hate you, Tearwin. While I am not very powerful right now, 
It is only a matter of time, so while I can't take care of all your problems just this second, I am willing to help with what I can. Like those bastard tools the gods of light sent, I pull Tearwin out of the hug, and gently lift her chin to look at me. Artoria, and I will never leave you, Tearwin. They would need to completely destroy my soul before I let something like that happen. Tearwin smiles at me through her tears and nods her head. She quickly returned to hugging me. We just sat there for a few minutes, as I let her calm down fully and rest in my embrace, I then hear a very quiet but sincere Tearwin speak. Tearwin, thank you, Artoria. A notice then appeared in my mind as she snuggled into me again. Tilda notice. Tilda. The dark goddess Tearwin wishes to merge dimensions. Doing so is a permanent action, and has consequences. Accept, reject. Without even needing to read it fully. I mentally clicked on, accept. I, and most likely also Tearwin, felt a shift, not only in my dimension, but to myself as well. I could not only feel a connection to Tearwin's dimension, but to her as well. But it's not complete. I guess it's because I am not a goddess myself, but I can feel that the connection is at least strong and solid. Looking down at Tearwin. I can tell she has fallen asleep in my arms. I smile as I gently run my hand through her hair and feel her squeeze me back in response. A soft smile blooms on my face, as I now bask in the feeling I was getting from my dimension, and because of Darwin's presence. Yes, this was it exactly. This was what was missing from my dimension. Closing my eyes, and leaning back on my throne I tighten my hold slightly on Tearwin. The feeling of my dimension now felt complete, whole. Chapter Name, Hi. My name is Darwin Alter. 204. Chapter 42, Reshuffling of Assets Tilda. After just enjoying the peace with Darwin napping on my lap, I finally decided to do something again. As much as I want this to last forever, it can't while the Light God faction is hounding her. She may be safe from divine law in my dimension but I don't want it to become a gilded cage for her. And I need to ascend to goddesshood if I truly want to call myself her sister. And, if we will truly share our power because we merged our dimensions, this would also make her more powerful. Protecting without stifling her is the only way to go. So with that in mind, I opened up the main menu, and selected, Sacred Gear Management. While I don't want to rely on these as a source of power for myself, Maybe I could give them to Team RWBY and my other servants. Tilda Sacred Gear Management Tilda Distribution Settings Edit Specific Gear Create Destroy Gears General Settings of Gears Starting things off, I went with the General Settings section. Tilda General Settings of Gears Tilda System Mana vs User Mana Stamina for Use 0% slash 100% Host Link Type Soul Bound Lethal if forcibly broken. Allow evolution of gears. Yes. Passive corruption. Off. From the list presented. There wasn't much I wanted to change, as long as there was a single sacred gear not in my hands or attached to one of my servants. I didn't want to have my system supply any amount of mana, nor did I care about the evolution or link types. I was fine with the gears killing their hosts if removed forcibly. The one option that I was only really interested in was the corruption one. Opening up the selection, I really only had a few options. They were off, minor, medium, heavy, and severe. A mischievous glint passed through my eyes as I selected a minor. Power has a price, and that will now be their morality. I had a grin on my face as I thought of all the mayhem this could cause. I was thinking of letting the sacred gears also appear on other races at one point. But with this option enabled, I think I'll leave it as is. Humanity is full of monsters after all. Now, it'll just be a bit easier for them to show their fangs. He 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 Tilda. Feeling Tearwind snuggle into me a little. I started to give her some head pats unconsciously while I moved on. Going back up a menu, and selecting the, distribution settings, I quickly went over what was available. Which, much to my expectations, was nothing fancy. I left it for humans only, but also changed the setting preventing a few of the sacred gears from being used by anything but a few specific types of souls. 
I also enable the ability for sacred gears to be stolen via a new ritual dedicated to corruption. This would bypass the human-only requirement and let anything use the sacred gear. As for what that ritual entailed, and how people will discover it, well, if gamers can find the craziest things I fully expect someone to stumble upon this new setting eventually as well. The one setting that surprised me the most though, was the one asking which world or worlds I wanted my sacred gears to populate. For now though, I left it set to the DXD world. I assume this is just a general overview for the gears, and I can assign a world in the management of a gear itself. If not, I'll find a way to add that setting. Satisfied with my settings so far, I backed up to the main menu again and then mentally clicked on, edit specific gear. To my surprise and annoyance, a notice was displayed first however. Tilda notice. Tilda. Several sacred gears have been disconnected from the system. The mistress will have to manually reconnect the lost gears. Dismissing the notice I looked over the list of gears and made note of which ones were missing from the system. Tilda edit specific gear. Tilda. True longiness. Disconnected. Zenith Tempest. Bound. Annihilation maker. Waiting for new host. Dimension lost, bound, boosted gear, bound, divine dividing, disconnected, regulus nemia, bound, canis liquor on, waiting for new host, sapphiroth growl, bound, why am I not surprised that the two I expected to be disconnected are, been a greedy loot goblin, haven't we agent of light, mentally sighing at the obviousness of this reincarnator, I clicked on annihilation maker, Tilda Annihilation Maker Tilda Host Type Default Corruption Default Worlds Default Mana Usage Default Host Link Type Default Allow Evolution Default Has Soul None HMM Basic But Gets The Job Done Let's Fiddle With This And There Going Over The Settings A Small Smirk Appeared On My Face Tilda Annihilation Maker Tilda Host Type Specific Vaishni Corruption None Worlds Biverse Mana Usage 100% System Slash 0% User Host Link Type Soul Bound Non Lethal Lift Removed Allow Evolution Yes Has Soul None Nodding to myself I hit Accept I sat there for a few seconds Expecting to feel a change of some sort but nothing happened Giving a mental shrug I thought Well not everything has to be profound I guess, hey, hope she likes the new toy, I should get some for the others as well, let's see. Another smirk appeared on my face as I selected Canis Licar on and started editing it. I know just who to send this to. Tilda Canis Licar on Tilda. Host type, specific, Blake Belladonna. Corruption, none. Worlds, by verse, mana usage. 100% system slash 0% user host link type soul bound non lethal lift removed allow evolution yes has soul yes force loyalty to host smiling to myself i accepted the changes and sent it on its way blake should love this thing even if i am forcing loyalty at the start maybe the two of them could become friends one day next up let's see if i can find something for yang the first thing I thought of was boosted gear, as it would go well with her ability to store damage. As I was thinking about it, Tierwin stirred on my lap and woke up. She looked around confused for a few seconds before her eyes shot right up and she turned to me. Tierwin, it wasn't a dream. Artoria. She then hugged me and curled her tails all around us, causing me to smile and hug her back. Artoria. No, it was not Tierwin, though. Now that you are awake I have a question for you. Do you still want the hero chosen by this world dead? Tierwin, the boob dragon pervert? If so, yes. Then her eyes gained a cold look and glowed a light pink as she spoke with Venom. Tierwin, I bet he would lust after you if he could see you. Tilting my head at that, she noticed and blushed. Tierwin, I don't mind if people want to chase you, Artoria. But he would only be interested in your body with zero consideration about your personality. Worst yet, he would lust in plain sight in front of his girlfriend, or, girlfriends depending on the stage of his harem. Zero tact. It's disgusting. Nodding my head in understanding, 
I could see where she was coming from. Honestly, if Deerwin was ever hit on by something like his eye, I would most likely obliterate the section of the world it was in. Artoria. Then it's a good thing he'll die from what I am about to do. I am sending some of the sacred gears to the Wyverse world and giving them to my servants there. And I think the gear Isai has, would mesh well with Yang. Tierwin, boosted gear and Yang. Yeah, I agree. She would make great use out of it. Before you send it off to her though, bring the sacred gear here. Let's have a talk with the dragon inside. Nodding my head, I entered into the system and disconnected the boosted gear from Isai, and summoned it in front of us. And like that. This world's hero died an inglorious death that he most likely never even saw coming. Seconds later, the booster gear appeared floating in front of us as its gauntlet form. Tierwin and I sat there for a few seconds waiting for Drake to notice the sudden change, and it wasn't long before the green jewel on the gauntlet started to pulse with light as he spoke. He let out a long sigh before speaking however, so, mind telling me why you killed my host and summoned me? Artoria, Artoria, well, little dragon, I have a much better host in store for you. Besides, Tierwin here wanted to talk to you before I sent you on your way. Drake, a better host, eh? We'll see about that. And who might the little lady be? Tierwin, hi, my name is Tierwin Alter. And your disrespecting attitude towards Artoria is starting to annoy me. Please correct that. My eyes widened slightly when Tierwin used my last name as hers, and then they went a bit wider as she started to release an immense amount of divine power out all over. She did say merging our dimensions would make us family, and the fact she was so quick about taking my last name actually makes me ridiculously happy. As I was in my own little world smiling warmly at Tierwin, Drake on the other hand was shitting his imaginary britches. Drake, I am sorry. Goddess Tierwin, I did not realize I was in the presence of divinity. I meant no disrespect to Artoria, that's just how I am. Tierwin glared at the gauntlet for a few seconds before she reigned in her divine power. Tierwin, that's good then. Now, the main reason I wanted Artoria to summon you, was to see just how much like her you are, and you two may have the same feeling as each other as red dragons. Overall you are nothing like my Artoria. Drake. Ah right, I'm. Sorry? Shaking her head, Tierwin summoned some of her favorite candy and started to nibble on it. Still mostly lost in my own little world, I didn't miss how she said my Artoria though. Sensing that Drake was about to speak up and interrupt Tierwin from eating, I raised my index finger to my lips while looking at him. He took the hint and instead just floated there waiting for her to speak up again. While we were waiting I started to give her head pats again. Her eyes narrowed in contentment as she continued to nibble away at her candy. After a while she stopped nibbling and spoke up again, it's fine. I honestly expect you to have fun with your new host. You like fighting strong things, yeah? You'll get your chance when you're bound to Yang. She's a battle nut like you, Drake. I see. I do like to fight, yes. I wonder how she'll do against this generation's white emperor when they appear. Tierwin. Oh, that fight won't happen. A lot has been happening behind the scenes of your world. Here. Tierwin then snapped her little fingers, and a second later Drake shouted in indignation. Drake. What? To think a fate worse than our current one befell Albion. Ah. She must have shown him that Albion's sacred gear is with the reincarnator, and is practically guaranteed to be corrupted by the light fully. Drake, may I ask a favor of you two? Both Darwin and I tilted our heads in the exact same manner as we waited for him to ask. Drake, ah right. I was hoping I could be there when you engage Albion. I want to be there when you kill him. I want to be there. When you free him of this. Horror. I shudder to think of how he would have been changed by this light. Waving him off I say, that's no trouble. I'll most likely summon Yang and the others to deal with any extras this reincarnator might have. So that is an easy request to fulfill. Drake, thank you. Tierwin, Artoria is the best. Just be loyal to her and I am sure you'll love the life that will follow. A lot more than being turned into a boob dragon. Drake, I am sorry. What? With another snap of her fingers. I could hear Drake take a sharp breath. Drake, oh shit. No, so much no. I dodged a bullet there it seems, 
Tierwin giggled and nodded, you sure did. Now, off with you. Go meet your new host. With one final snap of her fingers, I saw all the settings change for the boosted gear in my system before Drake vanished. Tierwin. He seems like a nice dragon, if not a little blunt, but it's easy to see he's not used to dealing with entities that are much higher than himself. Artoria. I am glad he didn't mind losing his sight too much. Granted, they didn't know each other for very long before I showed up. Tierwin, and without such a strong connection to Isai, showing him what became of his reputation as the Opai Dragon really squashed the feelings I think. He has a lot of pride this early in the timeline still. Artoria. I guess so, yes. Anyway, I am glad you're able to control the system that was linked with my dimension. Tierwin makes things much easier. R. Speaking of, where is your forest? I really liked it. Smiling at me she said, when we merged our dimensions, I was also connected to your apocalypse system. It's a cool thing, honestly. She turned her gaze to the massive gears behind me and nodded. Tierwin, much different compared to the systems the other gods like to use. As for my forest, I am glad you like it. I worked hard on it. As for its location, it should be just below this one. It merged with, and kind of took over the only other area you had. Nodding my head in understanding I said, Okay, good, I would have been sad if it was gone. Oh, another thing I was wondering, if you have a connection to my system do you also get unlimited mana now? Sadly, she ended up shaking her head in denial. Tear win. Yes, but actually no. I have unlimited mana for anything that could be done through your system, which is limited in scope till you ascend. But, once you ascend it'll become redundant anyway. And since I know you're going to ask, yes. Once you ascend into Godeshud, our powers will fully link and I'll get unlimited mana through said link. My power will also explode in scope. But like I said before, yours won't as I can't output like you can. You'll gain some of my abilities though, which I'll save for a surprise hee hee. I ruffle her hair playfully while nodding. Artoria, sounds fine to me. Now, we have a few more gears to send off to my servants. Want to help Tear win? Yes. Patting her head and earning a giggle out of her, we continue in gifting some sacred gears to the Biverse. Artoria, the last two I want to handle at the moment are Ruby and Salem. I think I'll create a new gear for Salem though. So that leaves rubies. I was thinking of Delos Karma, as a kind of joke against her Uncle Crow. Tierwin nodded her head and giggled, yes, that is perfect for her. She'll probably love the irony as well. With a snap of her fingers Delos Karma was taken from its current host, changed in the system, and sent off to Ruby. Artoria. And now for Salem. Let's make a new one for her. Agreeing with me. Tierwin summoned another stick of candy as I navigated the windows of the system. Artoria, by the way, Tierwin, do you also see the system in your mind's eye? Can you see what I see in mine? Tierwin nodded her head as she nibbled on her candy and then spoke up a few moments later. Yes, I do. And yes, I can see what you're currently looking at if I focus on your connection to the system. It's handy that there is no outer display for other gods to hack into. Honestly, I don't know why they all go with the phased panels. Anyone with enough power can see them and interact with them. As I hummed in agreement, I brought up the sacred gear creation menu. It looked much like the lore menu in layout and features, so I went about creating a first draft so to speak. Tilde new sacred gear creation tilde. Name, Moramiza. Type, Sword. Ring ability. By channeling a sliver of null, this sacred gear has the power to kill anything, or imbue the user's attack to achieve the same effect. Before I could even ask Darwin for her input, the display shifted in my mind. Tilde new sacred gear creation tilde. Name Moramiza. Type Sword. Ring ability. By channeling a sliver of the true abyss, this sacred gear has the power to kill anything or imbue the user's attack to achieve the same effect. Tilda noticed Tilda. You are not nearly strong enough to grant the blessing of Null yet little Artoria Tilda. Maybe in time, but if you try to create that sacred gear, 
it would have just erased itself out of existence upon being created tilda try the true abyss first it should be more than enough for what you have in mind for salem tilda both of our eyes were wide at the notice before i looked up and said i understand thank you for your leniency and guidance lady lily nodding her head dear wind said yup Big Sister Lilith is awesome. The true abyss can be something just as terrifying as null to a lot of creation. Artoria, I see. Well, the main idea I had for this gear was for Salem to gain the ability to kill the brother gods should they ever come back to that world looking for trouble. I know she would love the chance. Tearwin. I agree. Those two gods are kind of like a neutral party in the eternal war between light and darkness. They never chose a side when they ascended. I wonder what they're up to these days. Shrugging my shoulders, I finalized the new gear and hit create. Moments later, a ring appeared in front of us floating. Source, https colon slash slash www.etsy.com ca slash listing slash 12519758812 slash cool redstone ring red jewel adjustable. Gandascore order equals most underscore relevant and Gandascore search underscore type equals all and Gandascore view underscore type equals gallery and Gandascore search underscore query equals red plus black plus stone plus ring and ref equals sr underscore gallery one six and col equals one and sds equals one and organic underscore search underscore click equals one. The black metal part of the ring almost looked like it was flowing like my black water, and if you looked closely into the red gem it seemed to have blood flowing in it calmly. Artoria, that's a cool ring. Tearwin. Yeah, I love it, and I think Salem will too. With a snap of her fingers, the settings for the ring were finalized and it was sent off to Salem. Artoria, all right. Let's change a few more things. Then I really should be getting back to killing the garbage infecting your world. Tear win. Onward. 198. Umk 2. An unusual holiday for an unusual family. Tilda. Artoria. I hummed to myself as I was lazily looking over a large case that had some expensive jewelry on display. I was about to give up when I suddenly saw a piece that caught my eye. I reached down, totally ignoring the glass as if it wasn't even there, and picked up the item. I twirled the finely crafted necklace around slightly in front of my face as I asked, What do you think? Waiting a second but not hearing a response, I frowned and turned to my right to look for the reason why. There, pinned to the wall with a black water construct stakes right through their heart was a very dead Thor god of thunder and hammers. Artoria, dead already? Could have sworn the Asgardians were made of sterner stuff. I huffed in annoyance. As I had even gone through the trouble to make myself visible to the mortals, my eyes passed over the rest of the store, and another sigh escaped my lips. The rest of the Avengers were similarly staked to the walls of the store like their teammate Thor. Even the Hulk was limp, dead. What a disappointment they all turned out to be. Artoria, really? Wipe out one city, by mistake even, and they got all pissy about it. Another sigh as I look back at the jewelry in my hands. It was a beautiful fox pendant with a purple jewel of some kind for its eyes. However, as pretty as this was, I just tossed it aside as I made my way out of the store. Artoria. No, I am going about this wrong. As usual, Tearwind deserves something a lot more personal than some trinket made by a mortal. Ignoring all the bodies on the floor as I stepped through them, and the Avengers staked to the wall, I exited the store with a frown on my face. Artoria, I need some ideas. A fresh perspective on what to get Tearwind. A smile appeared on my face as I thought of just the man. But before that, with a snap of my fingers my shadow rushed forward and covered a large area. Seconds later, four people started to rise out of it. Team RWBY, Goddess, how may we serve? Huffing in annoyance before speaking I say, Apostles, this universe has outlived its usefulness and further still disappointed me. Cleanse it. Raising her head with a bloodthirsty smile Yank said, it will be our pleasure, Lady Artoria. No luck on a gift for Lady Tierwin. Slumping my shoulders a bit I shake my head, sadly no. Honestly, I don't know why I even tried this universe in the first place. Ruby. It's okay, Lady Artoria. I am sure you'll find the perfect gift for her. 
The other girls nodded their heads at that and all voiced their agreement. I gave Ruby a smile and thanked her. Artoria, now, off you go girls. I place no limit on how you may go about cleansing this universe. I don't want you missing the party I have planned for dear win tomorrow after all. Team RWBY, thank you. Our goddess. They all bowed and then separated by running in the four cardinal directions. As they were running away, I heard them shout out to each other before I left the universe. Vice, dibs on the Asgardians. Ruby, what? No, please share. Vice, their hearts are so good. Blake, dibs on the Celestials. Not sharing Tilda. Yang, damn it he. Smiling slightly at my apostles, I snapped my fingers and a rip in creation was created. Stepping through the tear. I hummed in boredom as I walked outside all of creation itself before another tear opened up and I stepped back into creation. Question mark colon R. Artoria, to what do I owe the pleasure? Looking around, the place hasn't changed in all these years. Looking at the man who greeted me, I gave a small smile and answered. Artoria, Lucifer, I've come for a bit of a social visit and to get your opinion on a matter, but before that, how have you been? I walked over to one of the couches in his lounge and sat down, and he quickly followed suit. He summoned a tea set on the table between us and poured him and myself a cup. Passing me the cup, I gave my thanks before taking a small sip. A small smile threatened to appear on my face as I took in the taste. Artoria, your tea really is some of the best. Lucifer, nodding his head, he enjoyed a sip before setting the teacup down. Lucifer, well, I've had an incredibly long time to perfect it. As for your question, I'm doing great. So, what brings you to my little corner, Arturia? I took another sip of tea before placing my cup down as well and leaned back into the couch. Arturia, a few things. But before that, I looked around, but I couldn't sense anyone else. Tilting my head in slight confusion I ask, where is your wife? Is she still struggling with the changes? Lucifer barked out a laugh before he also leaned back into the couch while crossing his left leg over his right. Lucifer, I see you are still bad with time if it doesn't involve Lady Tiawin. Artoria, it's been well over several trillion years since you had liberated Chloe from her mortal existence and blessed her with your corruption. If she was still struggling to this day, I would be more than worried. A smile cropped up on his face while he shook his head. Lucifer. No, she is doing fine, trust me. At this moment, she's in another universe purging some light gods that got to our pity. They had tried to send a few reincarnators to take over one of the worlds we like to use for our dates. One of the little bastards attacked us while we were on a picnic. The saying hell hath no fury like a woman scorned is a thing for a reason. She was so mad and so sexy. I could only smile wryly at that. He wasn't wrong about me losing track of time if it didn't involve dear Wim though. Not my fault nearly everything other than fighting is boring if it doesn't involve Tiawin. Artoria, she is certainly feisty. Even more so after I had blessed her. That's for sure. Lucifer nodded his head and said, Oh my, yes. She was a freak in the sheets before the change. But after, let me tell you. Shaking my head at that I interrupted him. Rather you didn't. Anyway, it's good that both of you are still going strong. Now, for the reason I am here. I need some tips or suggestions for a present for Tiawin. Giving me a cheeky smile. He nodded his head as he took up his teacup before relaxing into the couch again. Lucifer. A present for Tiawin is it? She'll love anything you give her. But that's not what you want to hear. Ah, how about you create something for her? I slump my shoulders and flop my head back while sighing. Artoria. I can't make shit though. You know this, I just can't stand sitting around long enough to learn a craft, and making something with a snap of my fingers feels cheap and Tiawin doesn't deserve anything but my best. Nodding his head Lucifer said, true, true. Then, why not create something that falls within your skill set? Getting back into a proper seating position? I tilt my head in confusion. Artoria, you know my skill set is really only corruption, fighting, and killing right? Lucifer lightly snorted at my admission and said, Oh, I am aware. My eyebrow raised while I said, 
and you still suggest I use that skill set? He had a sly grin as he nodded his head. Artoria, and how exactly should I do that? He sighed a bit and opened his mouth to answer before he was interrupted by a black portal opening near us. We turned our attention to the portal, and a few seconds later his wife, Chloe, stepped out covered in golden white blood. She held a head in each hand, one male and one female, with a look of pure horror frozen on their dead faces. She noticed me, and was about to kneel down but I raised my hand to stop her. Artoria, it is fine, Apostle Chloe, your hands are full. He he, I take it those were the two light gods who ruined your picnic. She gave a small bow and smiled when she answered. Chloe, greetings, goddess. Thank you. And yes these other two took me all of five days to find and kill their champions so I could summon them. Artoria. And? Her smile grew as she said, six more worlds have been added to your and Lady Deerwin's control. Would have been seven, but I lost my temper with these two shits. So that world is nothing but a wasteland now. I shrug my shoulders at that and say, hey, easy come easy go. She breathed out a sigh of relief that I wasn't mad at the loss of a world and I honestly couldn't care less. It wasn't a planned incursion so nothing was spent. And Deerwin and I gained six worlds in the process. Artoria, ah, that's it. I know exactly what to give Deerwin. Thanks Lucifer. Your idea is perfect. He turned his attention away from his wife to me and gave me a nod and a smile. Lucifer, I am glad I could help. The party for Lady Deerwin is still on for tomorrow? I stood up from the couch and gave him a nod. Artoria, it is. I hope to see you both there. Chloe, we wouldn't miss it for the world. Goddess Artoria, Lucifer, as my wife said, will be there. Smiling at them and snapping my fingers, I created a rip in creation. As I stepped through, I gave them a wave goodbye. Artoria, I look forward to seeing you there. Goodbye Tilda. Chloe. Goodbye, Goddess Artoria. Lucifer, see you then, Artoria. Walking outside of creation again, I couldn't help the crazed smile that made its way up my face. Artoria, I know exactly what I want to get you, my precious little sister. I'll have to be quick about it, but I can't wait to see your reaction to it. Tilda time skipped to just before the party for dear Tilda. As the rip in creation closed behind me. I dismissed my armor and clothes as I quickly headed for the shower. I could just snap away all the grime, but a shower is still just too nice to pass up even to this day. Got to be quick though, I don't have much time. After a quick ten minute shower, I stepped out and started to dry myself off the mundane way as I looked over myself in the mirror. I remember way, way back when I was still sealed by Lady Lily. How I looked then, and how I changed over the years. I am glad I aged up, if I am being honest, among all the other changes I've undergone over the years. Smiling at myself, and feeling a bit narcissistic and summoned my dress. Feeling Deerwin was in our favorite place, I smiled as I willed myself to be there. With less than a heartbeat later, I was standing in Deerwin's Sigura forest. I closed my eyes and breathed in. After all this time, it's still the same and it still provides the most wonderful feeling to just be here. I sighed in contentment and when I heard the voice I always loved to hear a smile bloomed on my face. Tearwin, Artoria, sister, you've arrived. Turning around, I catch the small fluffy ball of adorableness. Artoria, of course, Tearwin, you know nothing could keep me from you Tilda. I see you're back in your child form. She gave a sly grin and nodded. Tearwin. I just don't like being tall, if I am being honest. I fit much better on your lap when I am small. I barked to laugh, and nodded. Artoria, that's true. I am sorry I was almost late. I had to clean up quickly. Getting your present took a bit longer than I had expected. She beamed a large smile at me and hugged my chest. Tearwin, it's fine. You're the last one to arrive though. Let's go. I want to give you your present already. Propping her up on my left shoulder, I nodded and we teleported to where I could feel our guests. As we appeared on the stage that was set up, everyone in the area had gone silent. I smiled inwardly at how quick everyone was, and took a minute to enjoy the view. Creating a small section that is like Deerwind's forest for this part was the right call. 
This looks great. While there was snow on the ground, and a bit of it falling from the sky, it wasn't cold, and the syrah trees still had their leaves on them in full bloom, but were simply covered in a bit of snow. It looked really great in my opinion, all the look of the human holiday Christmas, without all the corporate bullshit the humans have attached to it. With dear wind still on my shoulder, I cleared my throat, welcome, everyone. I am glad you could all make it to this year's winter gift holiday. Relax, and enjoy yourselves today. You're not here as our apostles, you're here as our friends to enjoy the day with. Let's get this party started. Tear win, yay, everyone. Ooh. Everyone went back to talking amongst themselves as Darwin and I left the stage and made our way to the table reserved for us and a few others. Artoria, do you want to stay on my shoulder, or do you want to sit down Tierwin? Tierwin, stay here, thank you. Reaching up and giving her a head pat, I nodded mine, very well. Now, before you give me my gift, I would like to give you yours first. Tierwin, that's fine. Sis, smiling at that, I gave her another head pat before I walked past our table a bit. Artoria, now, credit where it is due, Lucifer had helped me with this idea. So, be sure to thank him for giving it to me, okay? Tierwin, I will. With that, I snapped my fingers and a viewing portal was created. I heard Tierwin gasp as she looked through it. Tierwin, Artoria, are those what I think they are? I nodded my head and said, they are. I figured it was high time I took care of it, and turning them into your present was just the perfect idea. Do you like your present, Tierwin? I felt her hug my head as she wrapped her tails around us. I could hear her sniffling a little as I felt her nod her head against mine. Tierwin. I love it. Thank you so much, Artoria. Raising my right hand, I scratched Tierwin a bit behind her ears. In the viewing portal, were dozens of planets. All of them were aligned in a grid to make them look like a sheet of paper. On each world, were the corpses of every inhabitant aligned to spell out something. To my lovely sister Tierwin, may you be free of the light and the dark. These were the core worlds of every light and dark god that had threatened Tierwin over the course of time. Artoria, I am sorry my selfish desire for fun combat prevented me from taking care of them much sooner. I felt Tierwin shake her head as she spoke up, it's fine, my lovely sister, I know you as well as you know me, and the fact you killed off so many fun playmates for my present, means so much to me. I know how bored you can get sometimes if I am not around. So to see this, thank you Artoria. I love you so much, and I am glad we are family. Artoria, anything for you, Tierwin. We just sat there for several minutes, watching the planets float in space with my message written on them. I couldn't help but internally smile at the surprise all the gods and goddesses had on their faces when I had summoned all them at once. The looks of pure horror on their faces will remain with me forevermore. Tierwin, right. My turn for your present. Please set me down, so I can go and get it. I did as she asked, and she quickly ran away to where she had hidden my gift. Hearing a whistle I turn and see Lucifer enjoying the view of the planets. Lucifer, well, damn me thrice. You really went and did it, eh? Shrugging my shoulders I turn back to the view as well. Artoria, she's worth it. Lucifer and I turned around when we heard Deerwing call out to me, and we saw her dashing back to me with a rather large present being carried above her head. Lucifer, she sure is. 159, Chapter 43, and so it begins. It's been several hours since Deerwing and I have been changing things to our dimension, tweaking things with the apocalypse system. And for everything we couldn't change via my system, Tierwin would step in and use her godly powers instead. While it's true she didn't have infinite mana, technically, when not interacting through my system, she was still a goddess, and she wasn't sitting around doing nothing while I was hunting the light shits in her worlds, oh no. She was quite active, and was listening to tips from Lady Lily growing her power and influence, which all leads to a single thing, my little sister is a badass, though, she did like to keep reminding me that a lot of what she was doing to our dimension was because of exactly that, it was our dimension, it seems that it was much easier for her to mold since we united the two, Tierwin, 
It's because your barrier is keeping out divine law, Artoria. I don't have it pushing back on any changes anymore, is the reason she had given when I had asked her. In all honesty, I just didn't really care as long as she was having fun molding our dimension to her liking. I also appreciated that she would also always ask for my opinion as well before she would change something, not like I could say no to her, like, ever, in the end, our dimension had several flaws as it were, and I honestly loved it, the first floor was the one we were on, we ended up leaving it looking exactly like it was, the only thing on this floor was my dark quarter on the ground, with a massive apocalypse system. The sky drop was just a muted grey, and had no clouds, it most likely gave off a depressing atmosphere, exactly how we wanted a floor housing something called the apocalypse system to be, but to us it felt comfortable, because of the amount of black water that was around. For the second floor, we left it as Tearwind Sigura Forest, we did however, add in some black water lakes and ponds. While some might say a black pool of water in a pink forest might look ugly, we both would disagree, it gave a nice contrast to the whole thing, while also giving off the comfortable feeling when we were around it, we didn't care if we, and those blessed by it, were the only ones to feel relaxed around it, the third floor was modelled after heaven's old one, but with a dark twist, this was where the believers of Tearwin, and myself eventually she said, would end up after they died, funnily enough, this was also where the old believers of heaven will end up too, though they would show up as playthings for our believers, and when they were all but broken, the used up souls would be thrown into the sea of reincarnation. Eventually, when we had finished setting up that floor, Tearwin and I were able to hear light laughter from far away. Tearwin and I both had an inkling that Lady Lilith was enjoying the situation the souls found themselves in. As not even a picosecond after we had finished creating it, souls started to pour in from both the sides. The contrast of looks on each believer's faces when they looked around really was funny, and I could see why Lady Lilith enjoyed the outcome. The fourth and final floor was the floor Tearwin wanted for annoying entities. This floor was pretty much our own hell so to speak. Now, at first I was worried that we might one day end up with an entity that we couldn't control if we brought them into our dimension instead of killing it. But Tearwin had put my unease to rest rather fast. Tearwin. Don't worry, Artoria. Remember, I have unlimited mana through your system. As such, I can use it to enforce our own sets of divine law so to speak to anything in our dimension. It's very likely that only Big Sister Lilith would be able to resist our will inside our dimension at this point. That had caused me to ask what was stopping us from creating a weapon or some such and taking outside to just instantly kill all the gods of light. Tearwin. Divine law, simply. Maybe one day when we're strong like Big Sister Lily, we could do that. But the moment you step out of our dimension you are subject to divine law again and it would simply erase whatever you brought out. Honestly, divine law is super finicky, and no one really understands how it works exactly. I had asked Big Sister Lilith once, and she said I was simply too young to know. She did say it was much easier to block divine law from entering a personal dimension, than to disobey it out in the wild. That brought up another question that I had asked her. Was she able to use that to grow in power? Tearwin. I could but it would be ultimately useless, for the same reason why you can't make a weapon. The moment I would try to exert myself outside of our dimension, divine law would suppress my influence, power to the level I would be at without the power up. The only way to truly power up is to wait for your ascension. I was a little sad she couldn't permanently power up until I had ascended, but it was what it was. This divine law was annoying but it was a force that governed the true omniverse, so I expected it to be near Lady Lilith in terms of power, at least somewhat anyway, but the main thing was that as long as Tearwin stayed inside our dimension, she was unbeatable, unkillable, and all-powerful. My drive to ascend to Goddesshood only heightened in response however, I did not want our dimension to become a gilded cage for her. As we were finishing up and I was getting ready to head out to finish the hunt for the current agent of light, I remembered something. Artoria, oh, 
Right, Tierwin, what happened to all the entities that Heaven had locked up? Tierwin, I simply shattered all of their souls and forced to reset on them so to speak. I really didn't want to bother with any of them, to be honest. She looked down a little and blushed a tiny bit. I couldn't help but smile and shake my head. Artoria, so, if I remember correctly, that basically means they are now like brand new souls. She looked back up to me with a nod, yup, after I was done with all of them, I threw them all back into the sea of reincarnation. She got a mischievous look in her eyes as she continued, though, I may or may not have sent them to worlds under my control. I let out a good chuckle and nodded my head at that, that was a good idea, Tierwin. Now, before I go there was one sacred gear I wanted to mess with before I leave. With a snap of my fingers and a thought later, the sacred gear I wanted to use appeared before me. Tierwin was quick to teach me how to instantly control the system without having to navigate its menus. Floating before me was one of the, well technically it was three, holy relics. Sapphiroth Growl, though, like all relics and such of the DXT world, it now had a much much weaker holy presence for obvious reasons. With another thought, I forced the three cups back into one via my control from my system. I reached out and grabbed the singular sacred gear and brought it up to my face. Artoria, huh, not what I expected. It's just a fancy golden cup. Why do I feel so disappointed? With a shrug and a head tilt from Tierwin, I tried to connect to the sacred gear and bind it to me. But after standing there for a few moments, nothing was happening. I tilted my head in confusion and asked Tierwin if she knew what was going on. Tierwin, oh, I know. Yeah, it's simple. You can't use it because... She suddenly stopped talking, and a second later her tails and ears drooped down. With my head still tilted I asked what was wrong. Tierwin, I am sorry, Artoria. Big Sister Lilith said that I can't tell you. She said it would be spoilers. Raising an eyebrow at that, I simply nodded my head. Artoria, don't worry about it. Tierwin. Lady Lilith wants me to find out some other way, which means it'll be more interesting for her and myself I guess. I walked over to Tierwin and gave her some head pats to emphasize that I wasn't really that disappointed. She narrowed her eyes in content as she nodded her head. With that, I just dismissed the floating sacred gear back to the system to find a new user. Giving Tierwin a quick hug, I stood back up and resummoned all my armor. An idle thought I had back when I was in the Overlord universe came back to me though, and I just had to ask Tierwin. Artoria. Tierwin? Do you know why I am aging? She gave me a smile and nodded her head a few times. Yup. Because your body, soul is adapting to your increases in power and it is also taking in your unconscious desires as it changes so it's likely to change slightly every time you gain power and have to adapt to it it also changes a bit when your black water as you call it changes or grows in power and abilities i hum in acknowledgement and then start to cast my dimensional jump spell artoria alrighty Tierwin, back to work for me. I'll make sure to stop by every now and then now that we can see each other beyond just me going to a new world. She beamed a smile at me and said, Okay, have fun, Artoria. I flashed her a smile just before the spell took effect and reality melted away around me, before it reformed itself as I appeared in Serzak's office. This caused him to look up from his paperwork in surprise for a second before he smiled. Serzix, R, Lady Artoria. Perfect, just who I needed to see. Do you have time for a quick inquiry? Raising an eyebrow I asked, Lady. Serzix rolled his eyes slightly and said, It doesn't hurt to be extra polite to an entity who can wipe out a dimension such as heaven in less than a day. A smirk appeared on my face as I motioned for him to continue. Serzix, thank you. I have a few questions if you wouldn't mind. The first being how you are responsible for the change in the world regarding holy power, as it is completely gone now bearing anyone that can naturally generate it, which is frankly next to no one outside of the angels. Nodding my head I say, that's because when I took over heaven, I also took over the system left behind by the biblical god. That system was where most of the holy power was being generated and supplied from. Next question, 
He nodded in thought for a few seconds before continuing, Sirzix. Secondly, I take it you were the one responsible for the death of my sister's pawn? One is I hi Audu. Again I nodded my head in confirmation as I spoke up, yes, I had a better use for the sacred gear that was bound to him. Sirzix leaned back into his chair with curiosity gleaming in his eyes. Sirzix, could you have taken the gear without killing him? A cruel smile crept up my face as I dismissed my visor so I could look him directly in his eyes. Artoria, I could have, yes. We stared at each other for a few seconds before he started to chuckle. Sirzix, my little sister is better off without that little shit. Honestly, sure, he was loyal, but honestly, it felt like he was loyal to her tits, not her. He shuddered in disgust and I could only nod my head and agree with him. Resumning my visor I was about to ask him a question when all of a sudden, a bright white sigil appeared underneath me, tilting my head in confusion as Sirzix stood up in alarm as he looked down at it with anger. Sirzix, that's the magic sigil Gilgamesh has. She is summoning you? The audacity of- I didn't get to hear him finish his outburst when my vision went white. Several seconds after basically being magically flashbanged my vision cleared up. Looking around in curiosity I was standing on the damn moon of all places. Taking a passing look at the blue globe, I turned my attention to who was in front of me when I heard someone speak up. Question mark colon so. It really is you, Saba, though. You look different than how a normal altar looks like. Before me was Gilgamesh, and flanking her back and sides was a host of angels and other races, a small little army one could say, but nearly my entire focus was on Gilgamesh. My voice spoke out with an absolute alarming amount of venom to it. Artoria, Gilgamesh, or rather, a fake using his face. Something in me snapped. Something primal, core to my very being rose up from within, and that something was pure, unadulterated hate, hate for the face of the person who stood in front of me, I knew that wasn't really Gilgamesh, I knew it was just some pissant mortal using his powers and body, but, it didn't matter, my power exploded out of me, uncontrolled and raging wildly, my new aura also formed around myself as I summoned my beloved Excalibur. Space around me was whining and screaming from the pressure I was giving off as my mana burst also exploded out. And finally, black water started to drip from my body and pulled behind me. Several bodies rose from the waters in a kneeling position. Artoria, you will rue the day you took up that face. I will drown you in darkness for opposing my goddess. The area of the moon I was standing on exploded as I rushed Gilgamesh. Her eyes widened as I instantly appeared in front of her with a fully primed burst her. Artoria. Die. 200. Chapter 44. Versus Gilgamesh. Announcement. So, I felt kind of bad because of that nasty cliffhanger. So, here is a super ass long chapter tilde. Really? It's like two to three in one. Enjoy tilde. POV Gilgamesh lights worn. Tilda sometime before Artoria was summoned Tilda. My vision cleared up as we finished teleporting to the moon, of all places. We sure this is a good place to fight her, Trinity. Why not have this fight in the underworld? That disgusting dimension should be more than adequate to host this battle. While I agree with that, Gil, the problem is we have no presence in the underworld really. While in this dimension, we can draw on your connections you've been making and the light elves you've been creating. Remember, they can't leave the dimension they were created in. But the planet is no problem. Is that the reason why you changed your mind while we were planning the ambush? Part of it. Gil, this dark champion didn't destroy heaven. She claimed it. And not only that, she somehow erected a barrier that I know the light gods can penetrate. Do you know what this means? I nod my head in understanding and then think, I have no idea. I had to hold back my giggling when I heard Trinity sputter. I could almost see her do a classic anime fall at that slapstick response. Damn it Gil, sigh never mind. What it means is this dark champion is working on ascension. We're powerful Gil, very powerful. But we're going to need to pull out all the tricks and aces in this fight. 
Do not underestimate this champion. She's not like the others we have killed that were sent after us. About that, I thought God said that this dark god was alone, and hated. Why are others trying to save him? They aren't. We are getting very strong, Gil. I bet it's causing a bit of a stir. I had to agree with Trinity. Ever since I was sent to this world for rebirth, and I was able to safely start the grind I have been going at it. There is just too much shit in this universe that could wipe me out for my liking. With some pride, I brought up my status. Name, Gilgamesh Lightsworn. Age, 1834. Sex, female. Race, human. Level, 3031. Light, 51%. Magics, expand plus. Abilities, expand plus. Skills, expand plus. Passives, expand plus. Quests. One active, one unaccepted, one emergency. Store points, 8432. Attributes, health, S plus. Mana, SS plus. Strength, triple underscore A plus. Vitality, S plus. Dexterity, S. Intelligence, A plus. Wisdom, A. Defense, SS plus. Resistance, SS plus. I smiled as I looked over my sheet. I had worked hard and the results speak for themselves. I think we're good to go. Trinity, you are worrying too much. Plus, don't forget I have the augmented divine dividing. A shame we had to use Albion's soul like that, but he refused to work with us. Maybe the light gods can set him right. Maybe. Well, most likely. Anyway, I'll start summoning your supporters and have them bring your light owls. It'll make setting up your domain a whole lot easier. While I do that, you go ahead and start prepping yourself. MMM, sure thing. I think the domain is overkill by the way. But, since this will be the second time I am going to use it, I don't really mind. I swear I could feel Trinity roll her eyes at my little comment. While she was busy summoning everyone we were able to convert to the light, I got to checking that my weapons and armor were good to go. Pulling a mirror out of my Babylon gate. I looked myself over. Source. https colon slash slash www.penguin.com slash and slash free png hoak. No matter how many times I see my own face, I can't believe it. Becoming the gender bender version of Gilgamesh was my best wish. I recognized I am being quite a bit narcissistic, but I am sure everyone understands me. I am fucking Gilgamesh. Nodding with a smile on my face to my own reflection, I eventually store my mirror back in my gate, looking up at the big blue orb in the sky. I couldn't help but relax. This was the world I was fighting for, to bring into the loving hands of the light. It is some things wrong with it, like every world does, but it deserves to be under the light's splendor just as much as any other world. Beautiful isn't it? It really is. All set? We are all good to go. The light tells are all set up around the moon to help maintain your domain when you use the ability. And all of your followers are here. Gil. Michael. Can you have everyone gather around? Michael. At once. Your holiness. Their changed attitude used to bother me back when I was getting started. But I guess I've just gotten used to it. I imagine it was a bit jarring going from a normal human to. Well, you. Ha. Huh? You can say that again, Trinity. Several minutes later, my veritable army was all assembled before me. Deciding to show off a bit, I started to float upward so I could see everyone and have my voice heard easier. Gil, thank you, everyone, for responding to my summons with such fervor. All, our duty and pleasure. Your Holiness. Smiling wide I spread my arms out and started my little speech. Gil, soon. I will summon the dark champion that has been sent after me, again. I could hear several people snicker at that. Gil, I know, I know. Evil never learns. But, this is no ordinary champion. They have destroyed heaven itself, nearly wiped out our brothers and sisters in the angel race. Tell me, what is our response to such an unprovoked act of near genocide? All, righteous retribution. Gil, that's right. The gods of light will shine on us today, as we burn out another shadow that is upon us. I won't lie, our enemy will be strong, very strong. A great deal of you may very well die. But, do we need to fear death? All. No, the light protects its own. Gil, 
correct. Push forward, and fight back this darkness. Should you fall, trust that the gods of light will be there to pick you back up, for the light. All, for the light. With that, I give a smile and turn around to start summoning the dark champion. Not a bad speech for a skill that isn't even maxed. A, eh? I am not much for speeches honestly. <clears throat> This summon is taking a lot longer than it should be. You sure she's no longer in heaven? Positive. Here, let me check. Ah, you don't have enough mana to summon her it seems. What? Hey now, that's a really big problem, Trinity. Nah, it's fine. Here, let me spend your shop points on a forced summon ticker decks. My eyes widened at that, and I was glad I was facing away from my army right now. A next ticket? I'll only have 432 points after that. I wasn't joking when I said we needed to pull out all the stops, Gil. I guess. Okay go for it. My heart cried out in pain watching 8000 points vanish, just like that. I was so close to that vaunted 10k and getting my first non light X skill. Oh stop being a baby, Gil. Clearing this emergency quest will give you 50k points back along with a lot of other goodies. Oh yay. My smile and good mood was sadly cut short when Trinity used the ticket and summoned the Dark Champion. Out of the magic circle with my crest, appeared Saba Alter. Though, her appearance caused me to activate my accelerated thought skill to have more time to look her over, just like I thought. But, why is her armor white? She looks older too? Lights identify name. Arturia Pendragon Alter. Age, 19,502,341. Sex, female. Race, corrupted heroic spirit. Level, NA. Darkness, percent. Magics, unknown. Abilities, unknown. Skills, unknown. Passives, unknown. Attributes, health, X plus. Mana, X plus. Strength, X. Vitality, X plus. Dexterity, X intelligence, X wisdom, X defense, X plus resistance, X plus if my body could move at the speed I was currently thinking at, my mouth would have dropped and hit the moon. What the shit is up with her status page, Trinity? Also, she is old as hell. Like I've been saying, she's on her way to ascension. Her stats are indeed crazy, but we have skills and abilities to bridge the gap. But you know what this means. We are on a time limit once the fight starts. Right. Time to get serious. Gil. So. It really is you, Saba. Though. You look. Different than how a normal alter looks like. As soon as I started speaking I had turned off my. Accelerated thought. Skill. Really wish I could use it and move at the same time. Something to work towards after I win this. My voice caught our attention. And she turned her gaze towards me. The longer she was looking at me, the more pressure I was starting to feel. Trinity, what's going on? Her battle intent is starting to build up. You should be fine. Should be. Might want to prepare a few aces already to be honest. Yay, I am with you there, damn. Artoria. Jill Gay Mesh. Or rather, a fake using his face. Damn. The amount of venom and hate dripping from her voice was immense. I forgot that Artorias and Gilgay Meshes don't exactly get along. All of a sudden, the pressure I was feeling exploded in strength, and my danger sense skill was blaring like it was New Year's. Her presence had exploded in intensity by such an alarming degree, and it was continuing to grow in strength. Then something new that I knew Artoria shouldn't be able to do happened. A red field of some kind wrapped around her like a protective shield just above her skin. What in the hell is that? Unbelievable. What a monster. Gil, that is her bloodlust. She. She actually managed to weaponize her immense bloodlust. It's protecting her like some kind of shield. What the she? Unfortunately for me though, it seems she wasn't done. As she suddenly exploded out into power. Purple black flames with lashes of red were erupting from all around her and over her sword. Mana burst. But. Isn't that supposed to be, you know, a burst? How can she hold it like this? There's more? What now? After all of that, and feeling the absolutely and frankly stupid amount of pressure she was giving off, her armor started to drip a black liquid of sorts. Gil, 
Never touch whatever that is without some kind of defense to keep you safe. That is almost like pure liquid darkness and evil. Yay. I can feel it as well Trinity. What the shit is going on anymore? As I looked on slight worry, I did a mental check on the survivors in my army. Yes, survivors. It seems a great deal of my army was already dead, and all Saba did was release the shackles. Soon my attention was pulled back to Saba though, or rather the beings that were rising out of that black stuff. Oi. Are those who I think they are? It seems so, people from the Biverse that you know of, or rather, grim versions of them. They are going to be super dangerous, Gil. Their bodies are literally made out of pure darkness and evil. I'll let the remainder of your supporters know to be extra careful about them. Artoria, you will rue the day you took up that face. I will drown you in darkness for opposing my goddess. Hearing Saba's voice pulled my attention to her again. But she was already in front of my face swinging down her odd looking Excalibur Morgan. My eyes widened at how fast she was. Cheat death's effect of, Bastion of the Light, activated. For the next 30 minutes, all entities attuned to the dark will deal 95% less damage to the user. 100% of this effect has been spread to your allies for the next 10 seconds. Then it will be reduced to 50% damage reduction. One week cooldown starting. Holy fuck I am glad I have that skill. Even with me only taking 5% of the damage she can deal out. Her attack hurts like hell. Right, fuck this. Going all out then right from the start. Domain of the light. Power flowed out of me as I felt the domain start to create itself. Within nanoseconds, it was done and our surroundings went from a dusty moon. To what could honestly pass for heaven. Domain of the light, has been activated. While the domain holds, light attuned entities are filled with valor. Increasing attack and defense by 50%. While entities attuned to the dark are weakened by 25%. Notice. Light alankers detected. Effects increase to 80% slash 50%. I am damn glad I listened to you, Trinity. Don't get cocky or comfortable. Gil, the fight is only just starting. Artoria, TCH, you think the vaunted light will save you from me, imposter? I couldn't help but give her a cocky smile when I responded. I trust in the light, Saba. Too bad you are too far gone. I pulled out just the weapon I needed for this fight from my gate. Holding up the demon sword, Caliburn, I gave it a few swings before addressing Saba. Gil. If I could have saved you with the light, we could have gotten Ma. Artoria, shut your mouth, filth. She swung her sword down aimed at my neck with a grace that only Saba could pull off. Even with my sword master skill at S rank, I felt her swing was beyond beautiful. Savage and controlled. Maybe there is a rank beyond S I can. Once again, I didn't get to finish my thought as even though I was going to block perfectly with Caliber and my eyes widened and I had to change tactics. Time seemed to slow down as I used my, thought acceleration, by instinct to watch in morbid fascination as her sword was cutting through mine. That, shouldn't be possible. Right Trinity, no, it shouldn't. This is obviously not a normal Excalibur, it seems to be just as strong as its wielder, a soul weapon perhaps? I mean, it is her noble fan. Much to my surprise though, Trinity actually interrupted me. No. I mean a genuine soul weapon. While a noble phantasm is a type of soul weapon, it is limits, as I am sure you know, that there though, that is a true soul weapon. In order to break that weapon, we'd need the power to obliterate her, which we don't have. We can whittle her down, but a one shot, no deal. Sadly, I should stop being surprised. She is over three million years old. A lot can happen in ten years, let alone millions. That would be for the best. Are you going to use it? Ha! Huh. Am I going to use it? Do you think we have a choice? We don't. Time started to speed back up as I chanted, flash retreat. Even though I saw it happen in slow-mo, I still couldn't help but hold up the broken Caliburn in my hand to look at it. Artoria. A fake. Wielding a fake has no place before me. I told you, you were drew the day you took up that face. I am going to feed you your own heart. My left hand flashed as the sacred gear for the former white dragon appeared. I made note that she didn't seem surprised at all that I had it, most likely because of her takeover of heaven. 
mentally shaking my head. I activated my balance breaker. My whole body glowed a brilliant white and armor made from the light itself covered me. This is the first time I've used it since you augmented it, Trinity. Now that I think about it, it feels wonderful. You did a great job, Humphrey. Of course I did. I also wish I still had that spear. It would have not helped. You would have been dead or did you forget that the skill you bought with the store points you got from it is keeping you alive right now? Fair. Smiling internally, I gave Sava a serious look. Gil, playtime is over. Artoria. Oh, I very much doubt that. Giving her a smirk, I summoned out my EA. And like I was expecting, that had caught her attention. I was about to taunt her when she vanished and appeared once again in front of me slashing downwards. Raising up my sword to meet hers. I didn't want to take the risk that even EA wasn't enough. Light's blessing of purity and strength. My sword gained a slight shimmer as the light encased it, enhancing it to a ridiculous degree. Or rather, what would normally be ridiculous. The reason for that thought was because as soon as the two swords met, sparks flew everywhere and a nasty vibration went through my arm. Sadly for me, this kept happening as we started a dance of steel. Once again, I could only marvel at her sword play as we exchanged blows. I was now convinced there had to be a skill level above S. There's just no way there isn't when I see something like this. Her attacks are vicious, and seemingly out of control. But I could tell they all had a purpose, and were all being executed by a mastery beyond what I had. Focus, Gil. She's pushing you back, slowly. Use more abilities and buffs. You already burned eight minutes of light, Bastion. We're dead as soon as that ends. Right, sorry. Haste of the light perfect perception. My speed exploded to heights that the denizens of this universe wished they could achieve. And yet, still Sabo was keeping pace with me. Though, I was finally starting to get a few glancing blows past some of her attacks. But much to my annoyance, they were bouncing off her bloodlust shield. Still crazy she can do that with her. Focus. Giving the grumpy trinity a grunt, I used push of the guilty. To force some distance between us. And as expected, she wasted no time rushing back in. Thankfully because of my buffs I could actually see her moving. Finally, Gil, chains of the light. Massive chains of brilliant light rushed into existence from my sides and shot off to entangle Saba, as they wrapped around her and restricted her movement she merely scoffed. Artoria, feeble. I gave her a cocky smirk as I then summoned Inkidu from my gate. And much like the light chains, the wonderful golden chains rushed off to shackle Saba. They wrapped around her neck, chest, arms and legs. Then shot off to the ground, and pulled her with them. As they forced her to her knees, and made her lean to the back I could only grin in victory. I was right. She has a very faint sliver of divinity growing inside of her. It's strengthening your chains. As I floated down to the bound Saba, I couldn't help but chuckle. Gil. It's my win, Saba. You will never break those chains. You have a small spark of divinity in you, and it has made my chains all but impervious to what you can do. When she heard my taunt, she stopped struggling and looked directly at me. Even chained as she is, my danger sense was going off like mad. I honestly don't know why though. She was totally suppressed. She was on her knees, pulled back with each arm also being pulled strongly away from her body and yet she showed nothing but contempt for me. She just gave me a smirk and said, like I said before, a fake with a fake, you cannot keep me bound. Then her struggle increased in intensity, and I could swear I heard my chain starting to let out greeks and groans, not wanting to risk it, I raised my still buff TA and pushed it towards her heart. Wow, but much to my continued annoyance, my weapon was stopped in its tracks as it hit the slim red shield around her. I was stunned that her bloodlust was able to withstand a direct attack from a buff TA. Glancing at my buffs, I only had 10 minutes left on Bastion of Light, and seeing I couldn't even get past her bloodlust, I decided to just say fuck it. I know I said to go all out, but... Are you sure, Gil? I didn't even answer, as I used my newest, strongest skill. Gil, Avatar of the Light, my body. No, 
My entire being exploded into light as I finished uttering those words. Getting blinded by my own skill wasn't really great in my opinion, but I couldn't do anything about it. Besides that, the power I felt flowing through me was, intense to say the least, Avatar of the Light, activated. All stats raised by 1000% for the next 5 minutes. 10 day cooldown. I feel like a gono, I shouldn't say that. I feel like a demigod, taking a quick look at my stats, all my attributes were now also in the X range like sabers, I looked down at myself, and noticed my balance breaker was now gone, replaced by an armored dress of pure light, clearer, and more pure than my breaker could ever hope to be, not a big loss really, since it lost the ability to divide things since Trinity used Albion soul to augment the gear for attack buffs. This feels great however, and I look great too. Stop marveling at your new form, Gil. It will only last for 5 minutes, and has a 10 day cooldown after all. Let's finish this. Giving Trinity a nod in my head, I raised DA a second time, and plunged it towards Saba's heart again, and this time, her bloodlust shield thing offered up no resistance as my sword pierced everything. From her shield, to her armor, to her very body. Black blood poured from her wound, and down my sword that had plunged right through her dark heart. The whole time, she had kept her face towards me with the same taunting smile. Even now, as her black blood was running down her white armor, she held that smile. Artoria, congratulations, you fake. You managed to deal a wound to me. The visor covering her face crumbled away, revealing her strange eyes that burned a bright gold but also colored with a depth of hatred I don't think I will ever see again. More of her foul blood started to seep from her lips, but yet she still held that smile. We held our focus towards one another with ironclad determination, but I can tell, she was starting to finally fade. There, if I am being honest, beautiful golden glow in her eyes was starting to weaken, and her struggle was becoming non-existent. What a waste of such beauty and power. If only we could have saved and converted her. I am just glad it's over. I don't know if you noticed Gil, but we're the only two people left. Everyone else is dead. I elected to ignore Trinity for the moment, and kept my gaze locked on Saba. She was fading faster and faster and the glow in her eyes was all but gone. But the hate was still there, if anything it was increasing by the second. It was an odd contrast as her body was losing strength and her eyes struggled to stay open, yet they burned ever brighter with that hatred. I pulled my sword out of her chest, and she ended up coughing up quite a large pile of black blood. Or rather, mana I guess. I never really paid attention to the finer details of a servant's body and makeup. As my chains loosened a bit to let down her body, she started saying something. But her voice was so weak. It sounded like a whisper and I was only able to catch the last word. Artoria, Grace, POV switch Artoria, Tilda several moments after she was stabbed Tilda, I was mad. No, I was beyond mad, I was absolutely furious. This fake, this, this mortal playing god wearing his face managed to land a fatal blow. I could feel the power of the light trying to rip me apart from the inside. My own darkness was fighting it off as best it could, but it was a losing battle with all the buffs she had going. As she pulled the sword from my chest, and I was starting to lose focus, I heard just the voice I wanted to hear in a situation like this. Tearwin, Artoria, no, no, Artoria, please, focus, listen to my voice, Artoria, as I slumped forward. I could only answer weakly as my strength was leaving me at an alarming if not expected rate. I had a hole where my heart was supposed to be, with the light running amok in my body after all. Artoria. Tearwin. How? Tearwin. Artoria. Focus. You can survive this. Please. Listen. You have another object, another soul weapon. You have to use that. Please. Artoria. Another. Oh. Avalon. But. It. Tearwin. No. Stop, focus, trust me, it can save you, don't think, just focus on it, use your instincts, don't leave me alone, not after we finally became a family, Artoria, fam dot dotly, I, no, I can't leave you, I focused on Avalon, and I felt it vibrate on my hip, 
I can tell, somehow, that it wants to save me. It wants to help. I just need to ask. So I did as my precious little sister asked me to. I gave in to my instincts, gathered my last burning embers of strength and I let the words pour out of my mouth, hoping they would not be my last. Artoria. From the foolish dreams of a damned king, realize that Avalon is a lie, for no man is without sin, and thus none shall ever pass, so instead embrace madness, corruption and the power of sin. Relish in decadence and corrupt all who believe in the foolish dreams of the damned king. Light has no place in the realm of the corrupted. Pandemonium's grace. Suddenly my body exploded with darkness, and I felt the light within vanish. I could feel my body change as it rapidly healed itself. I watched in morbid fascination as the hole where my heart should have been flooded with liquid darkness, not unlike my black waters I realized, and leave behind perfect looking skin. Whatever was happening wasn't done yet, nor was it satisfied with just healing me. I watched in silence as the darkness spread rapidly, consuming everything around me. Not even the fabled Inkidu chains were spared as they were covered faster than my new heart could beat once. They vanished in a puff of black smoke, releasing their hold on me. I had long noticed that this imposter Gilgamesh had jumped back, but I paid her no mind. I was too busy watching as the darkness took exactly half of this domain she set up, and turned it into an abyss. I took a second to look down as my body had indeed changed, as did my armor. Gone was my white armor I had gained from the grim pool, and now I was donning armor that was pitch black. Due to the open nature of my new armor, I was able to see my corruption lines. They were now a black so dark the light seemed to die when it touched and were outlined with a glowing blood red. An, with said corruption lines along her body, and her eyes still with a black clearer. Source, https colon slash slash steamcommunity.com slash shared files slash file details slash question mark it equals 13327941000. Though, this said had no visor, so I decided to fix that and summon one. I looked over towards Gilgamesh, and rewarded her with a blank and unimpressed face. I was about to engage her when suddenly the black water that was always running through my veins reacted to something. I wasn't the only one to notice. As both Gilgamesh and I turned our heads towards a black portal that formed suddenly right between the black abyss I had created, and her light-stained land. Moments later, a woman and a thing stepped out of the portal. I say this, because I had a strong suspicion that it was a god. I was unable to make out exactly what it looked like, as it was all sorts of shifting colors and gave off a divine feel I had gotten when I was summoned by that light god. But it wasn't light aligned at least. Turning my attention to the woman who was looking around in wonder, I couldn't help but do a double take. Is. Is that Raven? It is. She's been corrupted by the grim pools for sure, as she gives off the same feeling. But she's not the raven I corrupted. Looks different. What exactly are they doing here? Even though she couldn't see my eyes directly because of my visor, I knew we had locked them nonetheless. Her soul is really strong, like, really strong. She doesn't seem to be struggling against my aura, even if I am not currently using mana burst. Damn, that's impressive. And she is actually pretty sexy. I guess no matter what, Raven will always be a dummy mommy. Sadly, our look was cut short, as the god, that was with her quickly grabbed her shoulder and pulled her through the portal while it shut nearly instantly behind them. Their connection I felt to her. No, not connection per se. Resonance maybe? Let's go with that. How curious of an encounter though. She had no system, and she was not stained by the light. I think I'll go visit her when I get stronger, one day. Even now I can feel where she is in the Omniverse because of this resonance I have with her noted for later I guess. Turning my head back to the rage-inducing fuckerette, I could only let out a low growl. Artoria, you lost your chance to finish me. Jill Gamesh. Snapping her attention back to me, she went to say something, but I was no longer in any mood to entertain her. She nearly took me from Tierwin. Using mana burst, and covering my right fist in an inky shadow from my newly named partner, I appeared in front of her before she could even react. I slammed my fist into her stomach, 
causing her to spit out saliva and blood. As she collapsed onto her knees in pain I had gotten an idea. Looking at the digital ghostly person draped around her neck, I covered my hand once again with my inky black aura. I reached down and wrapped my hand around this little shit system's neck, and I pulled. I was rewarded with two wonderful sets of blood-curdling screams. One human, and one distinctly less and sounding more digital somehow. I placed my foot on Gilgamesh's back, covered my other hand in shadow and used it to pull on the system's left shoulder. They both screamed and screamed as I pulled, but sadly for them, something had to give. And it wasn't me. With a curious digital-sounding meaty rip, I had successfully pulled her system off her. Whatever form she had going instantly faded, as did her entire domain of light. With a bright flash, we were back on the moon, as my darkness rushed around to corrupt the new environment it found itself in. With Gilgamesh laying on the ground whimpering in pain, I looked at the digital human thing in my grip. Much to my surprise, and frankly epic arrogancy, it started to painfully talk to me. Question mark colon mo. Man. Monster. Ho. How, Artoria? Because fuck you. That's how I am going to enjoy this creature of light. Perception of infinity. Soul rot. My hand holding the light system glowed a deep black and purple while my spells washed over it. Soul rot was a new one that had come to me after Great Red went frolicking in my past memories. A few things had, honestly. Now, soul rot was kind of like blood boil. Except, for the soul and damn. Was it a horribly painful spell if the screams this thing was letting out were any indication, as it was disappearing from my hands, screaming all the while? I wasn't worried it would make it back to its masters. Avalon, or rather pandemonium I should say, had taken care of that little detail by imbuing my spells with a corrupting darkness that is beyond what even my black waters can currently do. As the final vestige and scream was let out from the system when it flaked out of my hands I turned my attention back to the mortal pretending to be Gilgamesh. I honestly can't decide what pisses me off more, the fact that it's his face, or the fact that this fuck is using it and debasing his legacy and image. The real Gilgamesh couldn't be controlled by Oz. There's no way he'd fall to the light either. Using my magic to raise up her body to face me. I could only give her a smile filled with all my hate and cruelty for what I was about to do. Artoria, remember what I promised you? My voice seemed to snap her awake slightly, as she looked at me with horror. Gil, no. No, please, stop. I don't want to. To die. Like this. Artoria, perception of infinity. This is quickly becoming my favorite spell, or one of them anyway. I then used my right hand to crush her lower jaw and pulled it down to hang there loosely. I followed up by plunging my hand through her chest, and ripped out her still beating heart. I stifled her screams by shoving her heart into her mouth and down her throat a bit, bringing both my hands up to the sides of her head. There was nothing but utter contempt and hatred on my face for her. With my hands glowing that same black purple I said, now swallow. And with barely any force, I crushed her screaming head in and downwards. It exploded in a wonderful display of gore and as she died, there was another ethereal scream as her soul was destroyed from the corruption I had poured into it when I had crushed her head. Releasing a sigh and the effect of pandemonium I fell backwards. As the effect left me, I felt my body change back to what it was before and my white armor returned. I closed my eyes before I hit the surface of the moon. However I felt myself instead hit some grass. I smiled as I felt a cool comfort wash over me, and it only grew when I heard my little sister's voice call out. Tearwin, Artoria 199, Chapter 45, Evil Needs Hugs to You Know Tilda, Artoria, Hello, Tearwin. I smiled and dismissed my armor as Tearwind dove on top of me and cuddled into my chest. She wasted no time in covering both of us in her tails as we continued to just lay there without saying a thing. After what felt like a comfortable few hours, Tearwind spoke up, but her voice was so tiny, and filled with regret. Tearwin, I am sorry, Artoria. If I had found that reincarnator sooner, you wouldn't have nearly died like that. Wrapping my hands around her tiny body, and caressing her hair, 
I simply shook my head. Artoria. No, it's fine Tioan. Honestly, even though I nearly died and got a power-up like a damn anime protagonist, that fight was really fun. Mind you, I have to ignore the fact I was fighting a fake Gilgamesh. Honestly, I still can't decide what I hated more about that. If it was his face, or some pissant using it, I could feel her tails tighten slightly around us as she asked. You're not mad at me? Not disappointed? I lifted her up a bit to bring our faces closer so I could snuggle against her check. Artoria, never. She released a little giggle at the action before I let her get comfortable in the crook of my neck, as she snuggled to get more comfortable. I couldn't help but think about the strange event that happened near the end of the fight, a random god, and an alternate raven ha, huh? I can tell she has taken a dunk into an inferior version of my black waters. The resonance I have with her has strengthened considerably, I wonder what would happen if she were to take a dip in the full power of my black waters with pandemonium buffing it, would she become my servant like the others, or take what she can from it and become more? I would be fine with either honestly, but if I had to guess, I'd say it would be the former. She seems different from the standard ravens of the multiverse. Well, she has the attention of a god after all, and the strength of her soul is honestly staggering for a mortal like her. As I was lost in thought I felt Tearwin poke my cheek, causing me to hum in curiosity. Tearwin. What are you thinking about? Artoria. Near the end of my fight. Some god, I think anyway. And an alternate raven appeared from a portal for a few moments before they ditched. Tearwin. Right. I forgot about the pulse of divinity I had felt. Artoria. Are you able to tell how powerful that god was? I felt her shake her head at my question before answering. Not really. He was pretty good at suppressing his presence in the universe. But... The fact he was in the universe at all means he is strong enough to evade divine law to a degree, so he must be rather old and has an impressive amount of power when compared to the upper level of gods. I hum in acknowledgement at that, Artoria. Well, as long as he's not after you, I don't care what his motives are really. Tearwin, agreed. He might be a neutral type of god, that does his own thing. Kind of like Big Sister Lily, Artoria. Well... Hopefully that raven is going to get stronger, as having the attention of one god like that will inevitably attract others. Do you think my black water could help her? I could feel Tearwin tilting her head to and fro as she mulled over my question. Tearwin, she would have to be absurdly powerful to withstand your waters, Artoria. I don't think you understand just how unique they have become. One second, I am going to ask Big Sister Lilith something quickly. Nodding my head, I started to give Tearwin some head pats as I waited patently. It only took a few seconds sadly, but I resolved to continue to give her head pats anyway. Tearwin. Okay, I am allowed to tell you. So, you know that when an entity ascends to godhood, they usually start to claim an authority right? Like, with me it's fluff, fate, and darkness. The last one is just a general one though as all dark gods have that in some form. I raise an eyebrow at that and say, fate, huh? I could feel the smugness and pride in her voice when she responded, yup, I am rather powerful for a new goddess you know, Artoria, and Fluff. Instead of answering, she just rubbed one of her tails against my cheek, Artoria, point taken. She giggled for a few seconds before she continued, anyway, you have done what only a few have done before, that is to say, you have claimed an authority before ascending. You're kind of like doing it in reverse, is how Big Sister Lilith explained it to me. Instead of ascending and claiming an authority because you are great at something, you are instead ascending because you practically are that something, and that something is corruption, war, and darkness. I frown a bit in thought for a few minutes as I digest the information. Artoria, doesn't that mean my corruption is like what the light gods and reincarnators are doing? I could feel Tearwind's head bob up and down slightly as she said, yes but actually no. The key differences between the two is you are warping them to the dark, but you leave their core relatively intact. So, they become the darkest reflection of themselves. If you use the full ability of your black water, like what you did with the RWBY world, the reason they are subservient to you, is because of your budding divinity. 
It formed a link between their souls and yours, like what happens when someone follows a god or goddess. This link isn't permanent and can be broken if you treat them like garbage. However, mind you, it takes a lot to break that link, but it can be done. I nodded my head at that. Artoria, so, if I want to keep them around, I should keep them happy? Tierwin shook her head and said, No, you don't need to babysit them like that. Like I said, your link is really strong to them. It would take you destroying their world and killing most of them for no reason other than shits and giggles for the link to even start to wane. Artoria, doesn't that practically make them slaves? Tierwin, a little. Yeah, they can refuse you, but the likelihood of that is next to nil. After all, you are already a goddess to them. Serving you fills them with satisfaction that can't be attained via mundane ways. It's why gods have so much power over mortals most of the time. We're like a drug to them. Naturally, there are exceptions. So, don't take my word as divine law. Tierwin then snapped her fingers, and I found myself sitting against a tree with Tierwin in my lap. Smiling at her antics, I just scratched her ears some while giving her more head pats. It didn't take her long to summon some of her now iconic cotton candy to nibble on before she continued. Tierwin, and finally, for the light. What they are doing is not warping someone to the light. They are rewriting them, core and all. When someone becomes fully attuned to the light from that corruption, they are practically a new being at that point. Soul and all, Big Sister Lilith said the light used to warp corrupt like how you do it, as it does have a much stronger effect. But they didn't like their agents not having 100% unbreakable loyalty. One thing you should note about this corruption method is that the slower they do it, the more power they can shove into the person converted. However, no matter how slow they take it, it'll never match the power your corruption can give. I could only really say ha to the whole thing. Artoria, the light seems more evil than the dark gods. Tierwin giggled at that and said, Oh. The Dark Gods do that as well. You are the only one who actually warps these days, Artoria. After all, unbreakable loyalty is too much for the gods to pass up, even if the subject will be weaker overall. And you should know that the light and dark faction war is not a good versus evil war. The light can be just as evil as the dark can be just as good after all, Artoria. True. As Deowin went back to her candy, I fell into thought about my own authorities I apparently already claimed. Artoria, so, why did you say that Raven would need to be absurdly powerful to survive the full power of my black water? Tierwin quickly finished her candy stick and as it dissolved into pink light she said, because of just how overpowering your black water is. It'll force a link between you two and she'll start to see you as her goddess. And while her core will remain intact like I said, her values will be completely warped. An example is this, let's say she loves her family with all her heart. Currently, she'll do anything to save that family right? But, she might hesitate to say, destroy an entire universe of innocent people to protect them though and instead try to find a better way or even take the hard way that could very well end up with her family dead. After being corrupted by your Blackwater however, she wouldn't even bat an eyelash if she had to wipe out an entire omniverse of innocent people to protect her family. Her love for her family wouldn't leave because of your corruption, it instead will take on the absolute darkest form of it. Artoria, and all the while, I'd get her loyalty, but said loyalty wouldn't be permanent. Would she gain anything other than becoming warped? Tierwin, correct. And of course, much like the Wyverse people, her body, and soul, would be reforged. However, she would go to peak demigod levels. Artoria, and if she could resist my waters? Tierwin then giggled a bit and shook her head. Tierwin, no no no, Artoria. That is her resisting your waters. If she wasn't strong enough, her soul would be destroyed and she'd become an empty shell. My eyes opened wide in shock at that. Tierwin, I know what you are thinking, but you had asked about the full power of your black water, at its full strength. It can now corrupt a god of below average power. C. C. Sister. My thoughts ground to a halt as I registered what she had just said. Then the memory of our little chat when I was having my, frankly, shown like power up came rushing back to me. Artoria, Tierwin. 
I couldn't help but almost squeal out in joy as I practically smushed Tearwind's blushing face against mine as I rubbed our cheeks together. Tearwind started to giggle as she wrapped her arms around me to hug me back. Artoria, I honestly thought I may have been delirious when I was dying and just imagined you saying we were family. I also thought I couldn't really call myself your sister until I ascended. Tearwind, no no. We became a true family the moment we merged our dimensions. Hugs hugs hugs. I started to giggle like a child myself after her declaration. Tearwin, let's play some now, sister. You killed all the growth sister muses, so you can relax for a few. Smiling wide I gave her a nod and said, that sounds great. Tearwin, POV swap third. Tilda unknown reality tilde, several entities made of pure darkness were around a rather large table, discussing amongst themselves. Suddenly, they all stopped when they felt two ripples in the omniverse. Question mark colon it seems that the newborn has found herself a very capable champion. Question mark colon selling it a bit short there hash dollar exclamation mark a dollar hash at. She has already claimed a few authorities. Surely you can feel it? Question mark colon I can, as I am sure even the light can. A true corruption goddess. This doesn't bode well. Should we send some of our own champions after her? Question mark colon I think that it would be a good idea, yes. Question mark colon you know she is watched by Lady Lily, right? Several members started to murmur amongst themselves when one of them raised its hand. Question mark colon that is fine. Lady Lilith likes to be entertained and this will provide it, I would like to think. Question mark colon bar. Who cares about that old fossil? While it was amusing watching the newborn's champion wreck some light champions, and even take a world from them, I don't want to risk her getting more powerful, let alone ascending into godhood. I'll just wipe her from existence when she leaves her diamond. Suddenly, the entire room somehow became darker, and a light giggle could be heard echoing out. Lily, oh Tilda, you want to ruin my fun? Now do you hash dollar percent carrot exclamation mark hat? It seems that all of you children among the firstborn have forgotten just who I am Tilda. A finger snap echoed out, and the upstart dark god started to scream in agony as he slowly gained a mortal body. All the other dark gods watched in horror as the third oldest amongst them was stripped of everything that made him divine. Several minutes of screaming later, all that was left was an average looking male instead of an ancient and powerful dark god. All of the attendees shuddered in horror when another giggle echoed out. Lily, anyone else feel the need to ruin my entertainment Tilda? All, no Lady Lily. Lily, good kids Tilda, do not mess with my entertainment. No, let me rephrase that. Mess with them if you like Tilda, but do not simply remove them from the board. Send your champions. Enjoy it like I do Tilda. And when she is strong enough to give an entertaining fight, you could even fight her yourselves. Tilda. Suddenly, the now very much mortal and powerless man started floating. Lily, don't think I forgot about you Tilda. I have no use for you. Maybe Kimberly would like a new toy Tilda. Thoughts for later, I guess. I'll give him the option, and until then you can suffer Tilda. Bye bye now children, make sure you behave Tilda. Then the former god vanished as he started to scream, and the darkness became just a tiny bit brighter as the presence of Lilith vanished. Question mark colon fool. He nearly destroyed us all. Anyway, you heard her. The newborn's champion is free game as long as we stick to the normal divine laws. Let's shelve it for now however, as there was a second ripple. From your failed planet no less it would seem. One of the dark entities that had dragon-like horns that curved backwards on his head sighed and nodded. Question mark colon yes, so it would seem. She has some light in her as well, but it's faint. Question mark colon still think it was a good idea to try and make a world with your brother? The horned entity merely shrugged its shoulders. Question mark colon could have been something wonderful at least. It's likely my brother will act though. He has quite the temper for someone of the light. Several of the other dark gods scoffed and one said, They all have a temper. This is not new. So, what do you plan to do? Question mark colon wait and see what my brother will do I think. We can't convince the newborn's champion to join us, as we clearly burnt that bridge I feel. But, 
Maybe this one from my world could be swayed? They all nodded their heads and agreed. Question mark colon so, we'll take a wait and see approach for now. All right, moving on. And the meeting between the dark gods continued, with several of them looking at the spot where one of them used to be every now and then and shivering slightly. 182. Chapter 46. More time with dear Wintilda. It's been about a week since I've dealt with the last growth system user, and I've been doing nothing but hanging out with Teowin. It was so relaxing, to just be around her and my black water so much. Currently, we are playing hide and seek. You'd think the little cuddle ball with large tails would be easy to find, but that is not the case. Teowin is a genius it seems. Well, it's easy to forget she's a goddess after all. A kit soon one no less. Trying to get past her illusions without cheating is very hard. I smile with amusement at remembering the last time I had found her. She was actually standing out in the open on one of my lakes of black water. The only reason I even found her though, was because she was giggling the whole time and forgot to hide her voice. Shaking my head, I focus on the aura I was releasing. Tierwin had the brilliant idea of also making this little activity have some training mixed in. The rules were simple. I couldn't tap into my control system of the domain to find her. I had to use only my natural senses. So, using the power she had given me when we first met, I am trying to have my aura act like a radar. Instead of applying pressure to souls around me, I am having it instead bounce off souls kind of like an echolocation in a sense. Getting my aura to do that was the easy bit, as the training I had done earlier with Deowin really helped. No, what was the hard part was trying to pick out the real soul resonance of Deowin from all the fake illusions she has spawned, as if on cue. I picked up a resonance above me, but I was able to tell it was a fake being this close. Looking up, I see Deowin in a grower. I am a monster. Like Pose. I couldn't help but smile as it shimmered out of existence though. Artoria, so cute. But I can tell that was a freshly spawned one. Tierwin, I am getting better. Several more Tierwins suddenly shimmered into existence in front of me. They were all in some sort of excited cheering pose holding a sign with a ten on it. I couldn't help but bark a laugh and in return I gave her a twin thumbs up. I suddenly heard the sounds of giggles coming from further ahead and to my left. Artoria, aha, you're this way. Tierwin, hee hee, haven't found me yet though. I then heard the pitter patter of her tiny feet as she started to run off further away from me with more giggles before vanishing again. With my voice flooding with mirth and playfulness I yelled, you can't escape me forever, Tierwin. Here I come. With that. I dashed after where I had last heard Tia win, while pushing my aura out further to try and find her. Tilda one week later Tilda, I was currently sitting against one of Tia Win's trees near a black lake while watching said little goddess playing with Team RWBY and a few others in the water. Salem and Raven were next to me playing chess with each other while also looking up from time to time to watch the tomfoolery happening. Salem. I can clearly see why you go to such lengths for Goddess Tierwin, my lady. She is just adorable. Raven, yeah. Watching her and Yang play brings back some fond memories. Smiling and turning to look at them. I could only see soft smiles on their faces. Their real faces. It seems when I took over Haven, and made it my own. I had connected all the worlds that have my black water in them. It wasn't a strong connection that just anything could use to world hop mind you, but it was more than perfect and adequate for myself to summon my servants in their real fleshy bodies. Noticing the gleam coming from the ruby ring on Salem's finger, I smirk while asking about it. Artoria, so, Salem, how are you liking the new ring I sent you? Salem gained a bit of a sly and sinister grin while she said, it's wonderful. Lady Artoria. I even got to use it already. Some self-claimed champion of the light paid us a visit a few months ago. Raven, I can still hear her screams as she dissolved. Such cries of primordial fear and pain were bliss to the ears, and the look on Ospin's face as his hope was crushed once again was also a delight. Salem, quite. 
Though I did notice something interesting happen to our little resident torture toy, his soul seemed to double in size and power suddenly one day. Mind you, it didn't mean anything in the end, but it was interesting to see it happen. If I didn't know better it looked like he merged souls with himself somehow. Nodding my head with a bit of interest I say, that can happen. After all, Yours is not the only remnant to exist. Something must have happened in one of them that caused Ozma's soul to be ejected from it. Raven and Salem, interesting. Artoria, and you, Raven, how are you enjoying your new sword? As I gave a passing glance at her, I could see her eyes light up in joy as she lovingly patted the sword that was laying on the ground near her. Raven, it's awesome. Lady Artoria, when it bonded with me, I felt my semblance expand in power thousands of times over. Being able to cut through dimensions is such fun as well. I've gone to a few other worlds to have some fun since you gifted the sword to me, and I had an absolute blast fighting some of the natives. Never managed to go to another remnant though. Artoria, my guess is because you're just blindly world hopping, so no surprise there. Be careful out there though. Raven. Some worlds have very strong defenders and gods. As I turned my focus back onto Deerwin who was having an absolute blast playing some water polo I saw Raven nod out of the corner of my eye. Raven, of course, my lady. Smiling at the pure smile on Deerwin's face, I casually asked about the champion of light they had killed. Salem, not much to tell, she was only in the world for a day or so. She arrived via a bright white portal according to reports. She immediately started to kill all the civilians that were around, but she soon stopped and started to complain about not getting EXP for it. Giving a nod I say, sounds like a growth system user then. Or maybe just a powerful scout who was not done growing. No way to tell really unless I am there. And I bet the reason they can't get TXP from the kills is because she didn't actually kill anyone. Again out of the corner of my eye, I could see a highly amused smile on Salem's face as she nodded. Salem, yes, us being immortal as long as there is some of your holy water in existence is most convenient. We abuse that fact most heavily. Raven, damn right we do. We have a lot of battle junkies on our planet now. So we have set up colosseums that have death battles running 24-7. They are a major hit, and also double as relief and training for our junkies and armies. Even Yang and myself take part in them regularly. Artoria, that is a smart way to keep everyone calm and yet advancing at the same time. I'll have to find a universe that I can release you all on, to see how you all do and to let you all have some fun. Raven, please, do. That sounds wonderful. Salem, yes, that sounds perfect. We look forward to that day, Lady Artoria. Yang, no fair using all of your tales like that, Goddess Tierwin. Tierwin, no one said I couldn't. Take this. With a wide grin on my face, I could only shake my head in amusement at seeing Tierwin use her tales to catch and send balls back to the others. It seems they were now playing water dodgeball. I could understand why it was just Deerwin versus everyone else though, as she was completely dominating them. Raven, adorable. Salem, very much so. When you first talked about Goddess Deerwin, Lady Artoria, I did not envision her to be like this, but this is so much better and cuter than anything I thought she was going to be like. I am going to commission several statues of the two of you. I think we've been praying to Deerwin for a while now, but no one knew what she looked like till today. My eyes widened at that, as my hand covered my face in embracement. Artoria, wow, my bad. It totally slipped my mind that you wouldn't know what she looked like. I thought she would show you one day or something. Guess she's been a lot more busy than I assumed she was. Salem waved off my blunder with ease and said, It is fine. Lady Arto era. Just knowing her name was enough to start. But, this will help reinforce the religion a great deal. Artoria, what is the doctrine you have everyone following by the way? Seeing her raise an eyebrow, she asked with some amusement in her voice. Do you actually care enough to know? Returning her question with a sly grin and a shrug I shook my head. Salem, as expected. But, I'll give you the short version of it. It really just boils down to worship of the both of you, while also obeying your commands should they ever receive them. We don't need much else. 
as the gift of the holy water has brought everyone closer. We don't need something like religion to tie us together, as we have something much more concrete and real. Nodding my head at that, I reach out and catch a ball suddenly thrown at me. Twilling it on my index finger, I look at my little sister with amusement in my eyes. Tierwin, come play with us, sister. A massive smile split my face as I nodded my head, and stood up. The dress I was in melted to give way to a one-piece more suitable for water. Throwing back the ball to the gang in the water summoned a popsicle stick. Artoria, I hope you're ready, little sis. I then created an inflatable Excalibur Morgan that looked like my old version of it, and a water pistol with its colors and gave them a massive mischievous smile. Source, https colon slash slash fate grand order dot fandom dot com slash wiki slash artoria underscore pendragon underscore rider underscore alter, artoria, for I will win this war. Have at thee. I then charged while laughing and shooting out blasts of black water from my pistol at the group. Tierwin laughed loudly and glee and quickly summoned weapons for everyone to use. And thus was the start of a legendary war, that history would later remember as the Great War of the Water Goddesses or not. But, we had fun for a very long time. Tilda two weeks later Tilda currently. Tierwin and I were resting under one of her trees by the same lake we all played at a few weeks ago. Tierwin was sitting on my lap leaning into my chest with her tails wrapped around the tree and us. Currently she was watching one of her worlds looking for signs of the light scout. She had found two already, but the third one was a little tricky it seems. Artoria, think they might be in this world? Tierwin hummed and nodded her head. Serious Tierwin is cute too. Tierwin. Something tells me they are here, it would be a great world to hide a scout in, a total wasteland, and the slow nature of power growth most scouts have would be a perfect fit here. Taking a peek into the little window she had conjured, revealed a toxic wasteland with Drek all over the place. Artoria, looks like several nukes hit that planet. Tierwin, that is exactly what happened. In a bid for power and to sell more of their vaults a company raised tensions between the world powers behind the scenes till the nukes actually did drop, a prime example of the short-sightedness of greedy humans. I hum as I bob my head gently against Tierwin's. With a sigh though, I speak up, I think I should head out though Tierwin, I want your worlds cleansed of the light. Even though the scouts can't do much of anything, they are still an ugly stain, and they give the light god sight they don't need. Tierwin's ears drooped a little bit, but she still gave a nod, dismissing her little viewing portal spell, she turned and gave me a hug as I stood up. Tierwin, I understand, which world do you want to go to first? Artoria, actually, before that, I want to stop by the DXD world again before I head out now that I think about it, there are a lot of powerful devils left that would make great servants, don't you think? Tierwin gave me a hesitant smile and her ears drooped even further. Artoria, what's wrong Tierwin? Tierwin, can. Can I ask that you don't? I am actually very interested in how the world will change with everything that has happened. And, I'd like all the strong people to be there. Giving her a warm smile, I caress her head softly before I snuggle our cheeks together. Artoria, of course, anything for my cute little sister. Well. Since you've asked I think I'll go to that dungeon world first, do you mind if I pick up a servant or two from that world? She was still giggling as I continued to snuggle with her, but she eventually managed to talk through the fits. Tierwin, I don't mind. That world has a boring fate overall. Knock yourself out Tilda, tickling Tierwin some, causing her to laugh even more I then hug her and set her down gently in front of me. She snapped her fingers as a portal opened up near me, and I gave her one last head pat before I summoned my armor. Artoria. Alrighty, I'll have a bit of fun with the gods or deities or whatever they are called for a while. After I kill that scout though. Don't have too much fun without me in the meantime, Tierwin Tilda. Tierwin threw her hands up in the air before running off and shouting, I promise nothing sister and then she was gone with a puff of cigarette petals softly giggling to myself while shaking my head at her antics i step through the portal the normal comfort of her portal travel was over quickly as per usual and i stepped out looking around me 
I was standing in a giant plain of grasslands, yet, I could tell it was not outside, and I was in a dungeon, the fake sky really gave it away. Suddenly, there was a massive roar behind me that caused the dress part of my armor along with my hair to whip around wildly. Annoyed, I turned around to see what was making such a racket. Artoria, just who I was hoping for, but it seems you need to be taught some manners first. Before me was a rather large black dragon missing an eye. I smiled in glee at the thought of my soon-to-be new pet, but like I said, it needs some manners beaten into it. So I released all of my bloodlust in wild abandon, while also letting go of my power. I didn't use mana burst however, as there was no need. The dragon suddenly froze before it started to slowly back away from me. Artoria, and where do you think you're going? Without wasting any more time, I appeared just above the dragon's snout, and landed a relatively weak, for me, axe kick on it. The dragon's head shot down and embedded itself into the ground below. Landing softly next to the crater its head made, I let out an ominous chuckle. Artoria, you're the big bad dragon. You can take more, right? I lightly taunted the thing as I reached down with my magic and pulled its head out of the rubble. I then used the same magic to launch the dragon with reckless abandon and smiled in glee as it crashed into the roof hard, as the dragon's body slowly fell out of the new hole in the sky. I heard a loud roar coming from behind me. Turning around, I saw another black dragon starting to form and pry itself out of the fake sky. This dragon was much, much larger however. I couldn't help the sinister yet gleeful smile that appeared on my face. Artoria. Two for one. Excellent Tilda. 174. Side story. Tearwind's Adventure. Part 1. POV Tearwind Adler. It's been a few hours since Sister Artoria has left, and I still haven't found the stupid Light Scout. I really wish I could at least see what denizens were corrupted by the light, but divine law prevents that. Tearwind. Gah. Stupid divine law. I want to kick. Oh, who is that? As I was shouting against divine law for the billionth time, I suddenly felt someone coming to my universe. Tearwin. No divinity. A reincarnator? And not hidden from me. I reached out, and captured the mortal before it entered my universe proper. It was heading for the world that I was viewing no less. As the mortal materialized several meters away from me, I kept her unconscious for a second. But, not feeling the stain of the light. I just shrugged my shoulders and let her awaken. As she was waking up, I took note of her appearance. She looks like a person from the remnant planet. Source, from Seko underscore Kabaragi personally. Tilda Neapolitan I think her name is. What is this adorable creature I see before me? I heard her whisper to herself. She quickly made her way over to me, making sure to avoid my sister's black water that was in puddles all around. The aftermath of our little war to war we had a few weeks back, looking at her with a bit of suspicion, I asked, who are you, you don't belong on my world, not with the light though, I got a quest to help a newly established goddess out, invaders, ring any bell, she said while her hand twitched a bit, I narrowed my eyes at her in thought as I looked her over, she has an ingrained system, not unlike the growth systems, though. This one had a few extra bells and whistles in it, it'd help her grow, and a quest system that I couldn't get into myself, but I could view it, I was able to also see the skills it was gifting to her soul, and noted a few were hidden, one of such was that it made her, and anyone connected to this chat group she had, immune to light or dark corruption. Finishing my inspection of the curious system I internally smiled as she seemed to be trying very hard to not pet my tails. While I was considering letting her pet my tails, I noticed the quest that had sent her my way had signs that it was very likely to have come from Big Sister Lily. A quest. Oh. Maybe from Big Sister Lily. Yes, I have some invaders from the Gods of Light. You're here to help. My eyes glimmered with excitement at the thought of this mortal helping me. While she wasn't my sister, she seemed fun from all the messages I was able to read in their chat. <laughs> Unfamiliar name. A. Eh? Roll with it. Yes, I'm here to drop a mother. Lover. Gotta be fast though. 
I was torture interrogating someone who irritated me she said before she had unconsciously given in to the supreme fluff of my tails and started to gently pet one. I permitted her the petting, as it wasn't unpleasant while I nodded my head to her explanation. Ah, Sister Artoria does that once in a while as well. Mostly when someone insults me though. Let's go then. I said as I couldn't wait anymore to have some fun. With a snap of my fingers we appeared on the planet she was originally sent to. I really need to work up the courage to ask Artoria if she'd let me come along like this. With our domain, I have more than enough protections to appear as a physical illusion. Artoria, the mortal mumbled as she looked at the old sign off to the side of the road. With a tiny sigh filled with nostalgia she read the sign out loud. Good springs. The mortal then suddenly started to remove several of her clothes while grumbling. A nuclear winter, that would be better than this heat. I lightly giggled at her shenanigans, catching her attention. She gently plucked me from her shoulders and held me up near her face. I had shrunk myself down to what my sister would call plushy size. I remember the day I showed her this transformation, and her squealing that plush win is so adorable I am going to die. The cuddles and head pats were gotten in spades that day. Ah, I should introduce myself. I also want to know her name, as calling her mortal sounds rude for some reason. Tierwin, hi. I forgot to introduce myself. He he he. I'm Tierwin. I gave a little wave and smile as I introduced myself. Neo, I'm keeping you forever now. Well, nice to officially make your acquaintance. I'm Neo, the Drip Queen. Prankster extraordinaire and fader of reincarnators. As she put me on her now bare shoulders as all she had on now was a leotard, pants and boots. I couldn't help but get curious at the new word. Tearwin. What is drip? I giggled a little as the word sounded a bit silly. Did she mean she was a water queen of sorts? A fairy of the lake like from my sister's tale maybe? She is beautiful enough for a mortal. That's for sure. Maybe Artoria would like her for her looks as well? Clothing. Stylish clothing. No. Clothing so stylish it kills the morale of your enemies. Neo explained while walking under the shady entrance of the Prospector Saloon, where an old man was watching her seemingly talk to herself. No way am I going to let anyone stained by the light see me. Or anyone for that matter, it'd only cause Neo here more trouble than she needs. Nodding to myself I say, oh. I see, like the clothes big sister Lilith has, and Artoria. While Neo seemed confused at my statement, I couldn't blame her. She's never seen either of them, but if she had I am sure she'd agree that they would have drip. I frowned as I looked down at the clothes I've been using since I've come into existence. Tearwin, I don't have drip do I? Neo hummed in thought before she said, not yet but you're with me, so you will. A tiny little yukata maybe? Or tiny dark shrine maiden clothes? She tilted her head to the left a bit and made a point to ignore the old man that was now staring at her like she was bonkers as she was just talking to herself and standing in front of the saloon's entrance. Neo, wait Artoria. You mean like Pendragon? Temporarily ignoring her question, I instead snapped my fingers and dressed myself in some dark shrine maiden clothes. Nodding to myself I ask like this? I then answered her previous question before she could answer mine. My voice was filled with pride and sisterly love as I talked about Artoria. Tearwin, and yes, that's the one. She's my sister, and she's on her way to ascension. She's been super hard at work helping me with light gods invasions. Neo nodded her head along while I talked about my sister, but she seemed a little distracted by my change of clothes. Tearwin, in fact, you had just missed her by a few hours when you suddenly entered this world. She then started to move again, and I giggled lightly in glee as I enjoyed the ride. She entered the saloon, and as she made her way to the bartender I saw her skillfully swipe several bottle caps that were loosely hanging around on the tables. I was impressed as she did this all naturally while still talking to me like this was second nature to her. Neo, sounds like she treats you well. Good. The clothing trick though? Amazing. Now why don't you fill me in on this light god stuff? I've fought crinny reincarnators but this seems a little different. She then bought a drink named Susparilla from the barmaid who was named, Trudy it seems. She looked totally flabbergasted as she watched Neo walk away. 
most likely from how beautiful she is. Her system is also helping by granting her as she is beautiful like Koro around her. But I was also a bit flabbergasted that she didn't know about the light gods. She has a system and a passive that protects her from the factions. Well, it's hidden. So maybe whoever reincarnated her didn't tell her for some reason. Tearwin, you don't know? How interesting, you have a system. Well, I am part of the Dark God faction. I am also a newer goddess, so that makes me relatively weak in the grand scheme of things. My tails and ears drooped at the thought of my situation before I had met Big Sister Lilith and Artoria. Tearwin, so the Light Gods want all the universes I control to add to their own power base. Divine law prevents actual god versus god fighting for the most part, so they instead send reincarnators that have been corrupted by the Light. They also try to spread said corruption. It's super annoying. I huff and cross my arms across my chest in annoyance. Neo, wait. What the hell is light corruption? Are people forced to go to church? Oh my god. Do they get forced into becoming Mormons or Scientologists or something? Neo asked with a shiver and sat in a free booth as Trudy raised her brow in interest at the topic. Tear win. Ha ha. No silly. It's so much worse. I then gesture to everyone in the bar sitting around us. Tearwin. Every single person here is corrupted by the light. They are slowly being rewritten down to the core of their soul to be agents of the light. Neo ended up doing a wonderful spit take mid drink, which caused me to giggle a bit. Neo, rewritten. What, like they die or get enslaved by mind control? I was about to answer when a mortal in the next room shouted something. Question mark colon oh praise the courier. My shooting skills improved tenfold. I saw Neo frown and her body tense a little from the sudden yell. She then looked like she ate a lemon with a scowl on her face. Giggling a little at her face I gently pat her head and say. Your first guess is the one that is mostly right. Who they are slowly gets changed so they are followers of the gods of light. You can think of it as soul control instead of mind, but it's permanent, and you can only stop it a few ways and that is only if you catch it soon enough. Let's take you for example, if you became corrupted, you'd slowly start to despise me, and anything dark related, and you wouldn't even notice the change. It'd be like you were like that from the moment your soul was created. Her face somehow started to scowl a bit more while I continued my little lesson in how we gods fight. Tearwin, eventually, everything about who you were, your likes, dislikes, who you consider family, totally, and completely, will be light aligned. Her face started to pale as the realization started to sink in just what it meant to be corrupted like this. Tearwin, if your friends, lovers, or even family have any dark traits in them, you'd either seek to corrupt them too if you were able, or call a champion to do it for you. Or failing that, you'd kill them because you'd be disgusted by their very being. And that seemed to be the final pushing point for her, as she quickly got up and threw away her drink into a trash bin. She then carefully observed everyone trying to detect the corruption, deciding to help her out a bit like her Patreon. I gave her a hidden skill that would let her detect anyone corrupted by the light or dark, while also letting her destroy the souls so they wouldn't just return to their respective gods. As soon as the skill took hold, and was gifted to her soul, her eyes lit up in understanding. She nodded to herself, and started to act. Tilda five minutes later Tilda, Neo was walking down the road as I enjoyed the ride still on her shoulders. The entire town of Good Springs was alight in flame and was currently burning down. She spent most of her time getting spoils and loot before taking only a minute to actually start burning the town down. She took everything she wanted from the general goods store, and some kind of device from a person she called Doc Mitchell. I couldn't help but giggle in glee at the carnage and destruction she wrought with such speed. She managed to kill everyone really fast and the look on their faces was priceless. Tearwin, that was fun to watch. You got some good items from your looting? Neo shrugged her shoulders and said, Well there's the Pip-Boy. It's this world's version of a smartphone but, worse, but better in some aspects. Thanks for telling me about this corruption business. I hate that their freedom was so casually taken by this holier-than-thou piece of garbage. But on the bright side, I know he could only go two ways. North, 
to get stung to death by Cazadors, or East, to meet more people. Neo was in thought as we were walking past some gang-like looking people. They were clearly going to attack her, but as soon as they got within a few meters of her, they were all dead, neatly falling into bloody pieces as she ignored them and continued on. With a sigh she said, Hopefully they didn't go corrupting everyone or I'll have to nuke the entirety of Vegas. She was clearly dreading the amount of work that it'd take. Putting a finger against my chin I said, from what I see, they try to get main people they think are important or someone they like. This reincarnator has been here for a while though. I sulk and my everything droops as I think about my failure. Tear win. It's my failure for not being able to find them for so long. Like I said before. I am young and new to all of this still, only a few thousand years old. With a sigh I say, it's one of the reasons I am working up the courage to ask big sister Lilith to let Artoria spread her black water, as she calls it, in all my worlds. Neo, now now, we're doing it now, aren't we? Besides, if you did it a millennia ago, I wouldn't have been able to come out to help and screw around. Given that they've been here a while, I say we should clear every town we come across. Mercy kill the corrupted people and find the protagonist and kill him and whatever faction they are aligned with. She started to give me some head pats, and I couldn't help but push into her palm a little bit as I perked up. Tear win. You give good head pats. Not as good as Artoria, but still really good. Neo, that sounds like a challenge. I can cook for your affection too, you know? But enough about me, we're reaching Prim now. I looked ahead and saw a decently sized, for the wasteland, town that consisted of a few small houses, a large hotel, a casino and a Mojave Express courier office. Though it looked like it was under military control, as a few soldiers were patrolling the streets. Tear win. You've been here before? I don't really like these kinds of worlds. Wastelands are boring. With a chuckle Neo said, I know this place like the back of my hand. It's interesting, not in the sense of power scaling but the people who live in it and the factions vying for control. See? These soldiers? They belong to a democratic republic that wants to bring America back. Called the NCR, you know. The America that helped end the world. On the other hand, there's a bunch of misogynistic dudes dressed as Romans but with sports gear and machetes that listen to this old guy with stupid ideals. They're called the Legion. The protagonist we're gonna kill chose the NCR. It looks like, idiot doesn't even realize the true evil of the NCR. I nodded my head, and was only able to catch the last bit she mumbled because I was a goddess or because I was right next to her, who knows. I scrunch up my nose in disgust as I say, I see, explains the heavy light presence here. It would be so much easier if divine law didn't prevent me from just washing them all away. I watched on with mild curiosity as she paid a toll of 15 bottle caps to enter past the NCR checkpoint and entered the town proper. I wonder if she will grab those back when she kills them, since a lot of these people are corrupted. Shaking my head I say, I am only allowed to be here because of you, by the way, normally we can't even send an illusion or anything. We need a foreign element in the universe to act, it's dumb, and I don't get why it's like that, Neo hummed in thought before answering, because what fun is there if every god and goddess were descending down. Worlds get destroyed, plots ruined and nothing but violence ever happens for a long time. Bet those gods trying to steal your territory would have loved to go down there themselves and start converting people to the light. As I pondered her words, I casually noticed she was marking the people stained with light for extermination. Tear win, oh. That's true. While I enjoy the good slaughter as much as anyone, I don't want to do it all the time. I'd rather spend time with my sister, Artoria. I smiled at the thought while Neo nodded at my statement. We were currently making our way through the casino she had entered. Humming to myself in thought for a moment I say, I guess that is why divine law prevents us from corrupting our own universes with the light or dark ourselves. I smirk slyly and clap excitedly as I say, so that means Artoria's corruption is a loophole. Hee <laughs> hee. I knew she was awesome. Another point for Artoria. Chuckling Neo said, yeah, just a shame so many gods just seem to use these poor, deluded fools like that. 
not you. Of course, it seems like you really cherish her, the way family should be, Tierwin. Of course, big sister Lily, and sister Artoria were the only ones who wanted to help me. Everyone else abandoned me. Neo suddenly stopped walking, and was silent for a moment before she plucked me off her shoulders and gave me a soft hug before then raising me up to her face. Neo, I understand. Really, I do. I felt the same way. Maybe it sounds awfully mushy but I was abandoned too. Maybe not physically but, now, we're in a better place. A way better place. And I'd be happy to officially befriend you and add to that little circle of people you have now. I just stared at her while I died as she gently rubbed my head. Small tears formed in the sides of my eyes before I yelled out in pure joy. I quickly latched onto her face and hugged her with everything I had, tails and all. Tear win, I would love to be your friend, Neo. Enjoying the hug for a few more seconds I then said, and since we're friends now, I can give this to you now, and not have to wait till you finish helping me. I just know you'll love it. Without letting go of the hug, I snapped my fingers. I then saw the new ability form in her system and gift it to her soul along with the notice it displayed for her. Skill unlocked. Unlimited drips ability. 137. Chapter 47. Is it wrong to pick up Bokum Coffin Dungeons? As I watched this new black dragon rip itself free from the roof and start to fall down, I couldn't help but the slightly manic grin that was on my face. This beast was at least ten times bigger than the original one-eyed black dragon. I watched on with untempered glee as the new dragon landed on its feet with the aid of its absolutely massive wings and released to roar to disperse all the dust. I think I remember reading somewhere that the dungeon was at its limit or something. Maybe it was holding back all this energy to birth three new terrors? But, my presence caused it to dump all that energy into one being? My casual musings however were interrupted by a loud and obnoxious roar from behind me. Turning around with a scowl on my face, I stared down the one-eyed Artoria. What's this? Gain some balls now that your big brother, or sister, is here. You need one more lesson it seems, and that lesson is this. I vanished from where I was standing, and appeared above the one-eyed with a crack as I casually broke the sound barrier. Artoria, trash should know its place in the dirt like the garbage it is. I cast reinforcement on myself and punched down as hard as I could with my right fist on top of its head. There was a sickening crunch sound, and its remaining eye blew out of its socket from the force of the attack. Its head shot back down and created another massive crater upon impact. Ops, may have overreacted there a bit. Guess I got some aggression built up I need to work out? Shrugging my shoulders as I couldn't really be bothered. I softly landed on the dragon's back, still alive, good, level 10. Or was it 11? A, higher levels have some nice durability to them. Now then, glancing at the other dragon that for some reason was just watching on, I started to create some black water in a matter of a few of the dragon's heartbeats. It was fully submerged. Idling noting the new dragon had backed away several large steps when I started making my water. I couldn't help but notice that I could actually feel my black water absorbing the evils of this world into itself, giving my scabbard a gentle mental pat. A small smirk was on my face. Seems some of the changes from Pandemonium's release were permanent. Suddenly, the small pond I had created started to ripple, and soon the one-eyed dragon was rising out of it, jumping off its back so I could see the rest of it. I floated off to the side slightly. Maybe a weak lizard, but I am sure it'll make a great pet for Ruby. Source, https colon slash slash www.deviantart.com slash sakuklia slash art slash gusharladera of Grim 8379097000. Artoria, well, at least you look fearsome. Off you go now. I am sure Team RWBY, specifically Ruby, will love to play with you. Behave or I'll be upset. Am I understood? As the dragon started to sink in the water it had just risen out of, it let out a low growl, giving a nod and ignoring how I somehow knew that simple growl meant yes, my god decide turned back to the more interesting dragon. Artoria, how polite of you to wait. Don't worry. You'll be joining your junior soon enough. But first, 
I want to play, unknown to me. My eyes were shining a brilliant gold with a tint of madness behind my visor. Artoria, show me your moves. The ground around me exploded and the air cracked as I broke the sound barrier to appear in front of the dragon. But much to my surprise and glee, instead of its head, I was met with a massive claw swinging down at me. Since I still had reinforcement running, I wanted to see what would happen when my tiny fist met its massive palm. When our attacks met, a massive wind burst was produced from the impact, and a deafening sound almost like metal also rang out. The sound waves caused visible damage to the ground below the dragon. There was no silence after the attack however, as my crazed laughter could be heard as I prepped another punch. While the dragon had stumbled a little from the impact, I didn't move an inch, and I took total advantage of that. I rushed forward, and landed a blow against its mighty chest, its scales, and maybe some abilities even, did a wonderful job of lessening the impact of the hit but it wasn't enough to fully stop the attack, not even close. As my fist dug into the dragon's chest lightly, it soon shot off into the distance, but it didn't take the attack sitting down, as it managed to crash its huge tail into me when it was flung away. I was sent flying past the speed of sound into the roof while it was sent flying further into the grassy plains. With a sigh of contentment I thought, this is great. A fight without having to worry about the light. Just a good old fashioned fight with a dragon, but still ripping myself out of the rock like roof. I roll my shoulder a few times and crack my neck. Seeing that the dragon was already getting up and was more or less unscathed, only caused me to start to release battle intent alongside my bloodlust. Artoria, you are most likely the strongest thing in this universe next to the gods with a released arcanum. I am going to milk this fight for a bit, so I hope you're ready. The dragon released a roar in defiance, which was either well timed or it actually heard me somehow. With a mental shrug, I shot off to engage it once more, displaying its impressive speed. It took in some air and then released a staggering size of torrential fire in my direction. Artoria, you know what they say, fight fire with fire, bringing back my right hand, it started to glow a deep black red as my mana started to gather, as the dragon's fire was closing in, I pushed my hand out while casting a spell I've not used in a while, Artoria, flames of purgatory, however, much to my unexpected surprise, Instead of sickly green flames what was produced was purple red flames, with splashes of pure abyss like black, and when the two gigantic torrents of fire met, it wasn't even a contest. In fact, the dragon's fire seemed to only feed mine as it traveled towards the dragon at an impressive speed. The dragon wasted no time at all in noticing the power difference, and with a single beat of its massive wings shot off into the sky. Right towards me, Artoria. I love your grit. Come, dance with me. Closing my hand to cancel out the spell. I also shot off to meet the dragon head on, its massive red eyes glowed brighter and I felt the movement of mana surge around it. There now seemed to be a slight green shimmer around the dragon's body, and my curiosity at the spell used was answered seconds later as the dragon's speed more than quintupled. Another surge of mana, and its front claws started to shine red and give off heat, and just as we were about to exchange attacks again. There was one final surge of mana around its entire body as it glowed purple, only for it to seemingly vanish from my sight. I could only scoff as I caught the tail from its attempted stealth attack and grunted as I used magic to counter the force. Artoria, better and faster entities than you have tried that, and failed. Down you go for the disappointing show. With another grunt, I used its massive tail to throw the dragon hard towards the ground. But I wasn't done yet as I felt a little insulted that it thought such a cheap half ass tactic would work. Flooding my body with mana, without actually using mana burst, I increased my speed tenfold. Basically teleporting to the neck of the dragon with my extreme speed, and laid down ten consecutive punches in less than the blink of an eye. The extreme impacts of the punches caused the dragon to pick up speed instantly, and it practically teleported and embed into the ground. Not wanting to deal with the massive dust cloud it had kicked up, I used some casual wind magic to push it all away. 
The sight of the dragon twitching and bleeding from its mouth had put a sadistically twisted smile on my face, while my eyes radiated the same kind of glee. I gently landed on its stomach and then looked up at the roof with a snide smirk. Artoria, no idea if you're actually sentient or not tower, but thank you for the wonderful pets. Looking back down at my new pet, I wasted no time in flooding the area around us with black water. When the dragon was submerged, I gently floated away from the large pond of black water and relaxed in the air. This dragon was a great deal bigger than the other one, but it only took a few seconds longer to convert it. While it was making its way out of the black depths, I finally clued into something. They had artificial souls. Interesting. But they worked just fine and were able to be connected to me like a regular soul. Maybe I should look into that one day? Thoughts for later. When the dragon was out of the waters fully, it released a loud roar and shook off the remaining droplets. And much to my expectations, its transformation looked exactly like the other one. Well, they were identical down to the soul makeup from how they felt, so no real surprise there I guess. I wonder if all species share the same blueprint for the artificial souls, or if it's one general one that is modded as needed. Shrugging my shoulders at the idle thought, I looked up at the dragon that was patiently waiting for a command. Like a big, deadly puppy floating up to its snout, I gave it a good pat and rub. Artoria. Good be dot girl. Ha. Huh. Weird how that just came to me. Oh well. You will be Salem's pet. Find her through the link and go to her. Don't destroy shit if she's indoors though, she'll be quite cross with you Tilda. The dragon released a low growl, that I once again somehow knew the exact meaning of, as she started to walk and sink back into the waters. Shaking my head, I was about to launch myself into the air when I suddenly had a great idea. Landing back down on the grass, I summoned up a mirror of ice, dismissing my visor. My eyes widened in shock at how I looked. I am definitely older now, much closer to Lance Aratoria, than Sabi now. My eyes are practically gold and glow now as well. Happy that I was aging up into a more adult form, I focused on my eyes. It took a few seconds, but they slowly went from a gold glow, to a red glow. A dark yet playful smile graced my face at my success. If I remember right, all creatures of the dungeon have glowing red eyes, why not fuck with them some then? He he Tilda. With a wave of my hand, the mirror shattered into diamond dust and faded away. I had almost resummoned my visor out of habit, but I quickly caught myself. I also suppressed my strength, aura, bloodlust and battle intent back to my normal levels. Looking up at the fake sky above me, a vicious and dark smile was on my face. Artoria. Don't worry, you'll only feel a slight pinch. I used reinforcement, and flared a mana burst for a split second and rocked up and through the roof, floors, of the dungeon. As I was crushing my way through the floors towards the surface, I couldn't help but mentally snicker. That was the first time I used mana burst the way it was originally intended. Hey, 150. Side story. Tear wins adventure. Part 2. Announcement. Some parts were just CP from C's part. Sorry not sorry Tilda. POV switch Damien. Tilda courier 6. Lucky 38 Casina Tilda. After a long day of solving issues in the strip, the courier, the man who reincarnated, finally got to relax as he got to his penthouse suite. He had solved the White Glove Society's weird cannibalistic tendencies and rescued a Brahmin Baron's son. Just before that, he had stopped the Omitter's plans to take over the strip when the Battle of Hoover Dam would kick off. He was understandably tired. Turning on the radio, he checked his status via his system and listened to Radio New Vegas while relaxing on his bed. Congratulations, Damien. You officially reached level 25. Do you want to pick your perks or invest in your super soldier physique? His system asked, making him think as he stared at his screen. The system he had had a vibrant and pleasant personality that he quickly got accustomed to. They very quickly bonded and although he could not see her form, he knew she was a girl. Being that she was with him the whole time while he faced the Mojave, he developed a crush on her. Though he tried to hide it while making plans to get her a body of her own in the future. Thanks, Alice. I'll go with a perk. Let's see.
Yeah, shotgun sergeant sounds good. Damien mused to himself while looking in his inventory, which was full of weapons. Very few were truly special, as he had taken most weapons from dead enemies, like the raider group known as the Fiends. He was saving up caps to buy the really good weapons from the gun runners, though that was a 40,000 cap investment to get everything. As he was counting his caps, he heard the voice of Mr. New Vegas on the radio. This just in, it seems the town of Good Springs was hit by the Legion recently, as all the town's residents were found killed by a blade and the town's buildings were set ablaze. There were no survivors. Damien stopped and stared at the radio in shock. Wait what? He tried to remember if this series of events happened in the game but he drew a blank and slowly, panic began to creep up into him. Wait, it's true. I don't feel them anymore, Alice responded in despondence. Is it that Dark God's work? Maybe they sent someone to fight for the Legion? That bastard. Damien cursed with a frown. I might be able to catch them in Novak if I hurry. Damien stood up and threw on his courier duster. Right. I'll mark the location on your display. Alice responded with determination. I just hope they don't kill anyone else. Damien muttered as he hurried out of the casino. POV switched to Owen Alter. Tilda Prim Tilda. Neo and I were sitting on top of the hotel with me enjoying the view on her right shoulder. The first thing Neo had done after I had gifted her the new ability was to create a tiny little black cowboy hat that was a custom fit for me. It had little holes in it for my ears and everything. This is the first thing I've gotten that wasn't from Big Sister Lily or Artoria. I will keep this forever. I don't think Divine Law will mind if I make it an existence beyond reality so it'll never get damaged. If it does, I'll just have to ask Big Sister Lilith to do it then. Smiling at the precious gift on my head, I looked over Neo while she was peering down at the town. After she created my hat, she had given herself a new wardrobe to deal with the bullshit heat of Mojave as she said. It consisted of a white duster coat with open sleeves, a black short skirt and long white boots that went up to her thighs. She even created a white cowboy hat that matched mine, with a pink white and brown bandana that went around her neck. It even had a mini picture of me on it. When she created that bit, she gave me a wink and said it was only natural. Currently, she seemed to be looking at the 22 people she had marked with one of her abilities. Most of them seemed to be soldiers, though a few were civilians. All were corrupted by the light though. She had a thoughtful look on her face while she hummed before she snapped her fingers and looked at me. Neo, hey, Tierwin? Wanna see something cool? Seeing the small smile spread on her lips, caused me to get excited when I said, I am always up for cool things, Neo. Show me, show me. I saw a small amount of magic flare around her hand as sparks traveled between her fingers. Looking up above us, the sky above the town started to quickly become cloudy. I also noticed Neo took out some bullets with .308 written on the back of them from her system inventory. Neo, while I could just destroy the town and go, that'd be kind of overboard. Like using and rebounds the game to kill a spider. As Neo explained her reasoning, she flipped one of the bullets like a coin and then flicked it. The bullet traveled instantly, and straight into the head of an NCR soldier where it exploded in a mess of blood, bone fragments and brain. It looked as if he was flicked by the hand of a god. I smiled at that thought. Tierwin, that is cool. You're using your lightning to accelerate the bullet to such extreme speeds. Again, again. I clapped in glee as I found the whole thing amusing and interesting at how she was able to get so much gore with such little magic. Neo, I knew you'd get it. Now for the 100% speedrun of Prim. Neo then flicked up 21 more bullets, and focused before she entered what she called a pseudo-judgment cut state. All of the marks she had placed prior all hummed with slight magic and glowed. Soon as the first bullet fell, it almost instantly tore through the heart of a soldier, quickly followed by another and another. Until all the soldiers in town had rather explosive deaths. One of the more impressive hits was against a man named Deputy Beagle who was inside a building eating a gecko steak. Neo had angled the shot through a tiny crack in the door frame, and caused his head to explode when he bit down on his food. I had laughed when the screams started from the people near him, 
as it looked like his food was responsible for his sudden case of spontaneous explosive head. The town of Prim was deadly quiet, as within a second, it began to rain blood as dark clouds billowed over the town. It was until after a few minutes did the remaining survivors discover what had caused the rain, but by then, Neo and I were long gone as she had already looted every house when we pasted the checkpoint. Neo did as I suspected she was going to do and reclaimed her fifteen caps. As she was walking she started to sing a song while I was busy cheering in glee and making pew-pew sounds as I imitated what she had just done. Neo soon turned on the Pip-Boy's radio though, which gave me an idea as a mischievous glint passed through my eyes. Tear win. My sister would think this would be an appropriate song. With a snap of my fingers, the song Let the Bodies Hit the Floor started to play, causing Neo to nod her head in appreciation. Wait for it. However, as soon as she started to sing the song changed from Let the Bodies Hit the Floor to I Can Only Count to Four. I lightly giggled as she choked back to laugh. Neo, good tastes. What a cultured individual your sister is. Next up is Nighton R. Already burned to the ground. Looks like Novak is next. Little community with an uptight sniper. A bitch who sold the sniper's wife into slavery. A handicapped ranger. An ex-pilot. A nerd who wants to sell toys and a big dinosaur statue. As Neo rocked her head to the silly song, I clapped my hands in excitement at the fun we were sure to have. Tear win. Onward. About an hour and at least ten songs later, we arrived at the town of Novak. There were some silly raiders who fired at Neo, but they died right as soon as they pulled the trigger via flying energy blades from her sword, Yamato. Upon reaching the town proper, we quickly noticed some commotion ahead of us. Some mortal in a basic, boring, totally not in any way drip, duster coat arrived with a few people around the same time as we had. Neo had narrowed her eyes as she noticed they all were corrupted by the light. However, one stood out to me a lot more than the rest. He was practically glowing with the light. He had a system, and it even had an intelligence attached to it, much to my surprise. I quickly lost my composure though, and I started to ooze killing intent while a pink chorus surrounded me. Tear win. That's the scout. The dog working for the light that is after me. However, before I could do anything else, I suddenly felt my energy leave me causing me to slump onto Neo's shoulder. Tear win. Divine law. Uck, I can't even get mad near them. Mew you, I'll be okay. I just can't help you at all if you need it. Neo, oh, don't worry your little head. However, she was cut off by the notification sound from her system while I took a peek at what was happening. System detected. Intrusion attempted. Intrusion repelled. Intrusion attempted. Corruption detected. Corruption destroyed. Piss off. Her system sounded quite annoyed. A suppressed AI that will only intervene for moments like this maybe? It really is a very unique system. POV. Switch Damien. I noticed immediately once I saw Neo. Nobody looked like that in New Vegas. This bizarre attractive woman was definitely responsible. I tried to activate, observe, but it was blocked completely. Alice, can you help me here? I can't tell what her deal is. I whispered. Of course. Let me try. She's not dark aligned. Well hey. Okay fine. I'm sending light over to her. Maybe we can turn. Her. Oh no. Damien, run. This system. It's different. Alice warned me as I slowly nodded and started backing up, though I was interrupted when I heard Alice scream in agony. What? How are you? She managed to speak before her wailing echoed in my head. I began to run away in a panic as I tried calling Alice over and over. The only response I received was an agonized cry. POV swap dear win alter. Tear win. How do you like it, stupid light? My new friend is awesome. I yelled after the mortal while letting out a rather sinister chuckle at what was happening. Neo, totally could have killed him there. But, take heed, Tierwin. We got to crush his spirit too. That's rule number two. After we outstyle them, we break their spirits. Did the same thing with this one cultivator guy. I cucked him and shattered his pride. Neo laughed before taking her sword. 
Yamato, out and killing the multiple infected people in Novak, though I took notice of the extreme measures she took against the old woman who sold another into slavery. She didn't even have any light corruption, it just seems Neo values freedom that much. Fortunately for the town of Novak, it only had ten or so infected mortals. Neo was quick to murder them and loot their bodies before she left the town at a leisurely pace in the direction the light scout fled. Clapping my hands in joy and cheering I yelled, yes, style on him, crush both of their spirits, break them for daring to interrupt my time with my bestie. I stilled for a second before I felt myself blush at my slip of the tongue. Tear win. I mean attacking me. That's what I meant. Neo was clutching her chest and trembling while she said, it should be illegal to be this cute. She quickly composed herself before she gently grabbed me and lifted me above her head. She then started to run and yell after the light scout who was running as fast as he could when he looked back and saw her. Neo, nobody messes with my BFFF and lives. Without getting eyes kied to hell, with my voice filled with dark glee I yelled, prepare for the Neopocalypse. POV switch Damien. I had been sprinting for over an hour, trying to calm Alice down. After half an hour, it worked. Though I could tell she was injured. Very much so. I had to gather my allies in the NCR, since this woman had some kind of counter to my system. I had heard sadistic laughter behind me until the 45 minute mark in my mad sprint, when I passed Boulder City. Somehow, the woman kept up with me so easily. We, we need to destroy her. Damien, she's dangerous, Alice commented weakly. Damien, I know, I know, I'm going to Camp Mukaran to get reinforcements from the NCR. I only hoped that would be enough. POV switched to Irwin Alter. Tilda Boulder City Tilda, Neo and I decided to take a small detour when we detected more infected soldiers inside the nearby city. Boulder City. Neo wanted to be thorough, as to not leave a single light corrupted on my world. So she spent 15 minutes butchering all the NCR soldiers stationed here. They were quick to find out they were not even close to a match for her when two squads of full auto assault trifle wielding soldiers saw Neo catch their bullets. She then countered with an arcing slash wave that had cut them all in half. The despair on their faces was beautiful, and I was sure my sister would have loved to see it. I was brought out of my small daydream of spending some time with Artoria and Neo when the last light corrupted soldier was impaled and flicked off her blade with a scoff of disdain. However she released a sigh of disappointment which is what caught my attention. I looked down, and there was a splatter of blood all over her clothes. As she was cleaning it off, I stood up and gave the side of her head a little hug. Tear win. Don't worry. Remember. Your new ability gives you full control over your drip, however, I felt a lot of indignation towards the lowly mortal who bothered my friend, as I stared down at him, I followed the course his destroyed soul was taking before locking onto it, I carefully raised up my hand in preparation for a finger snap, I wanted to make sure divine law wasn't going to be pissy about the action I was about to take, waiting for a second, and not feeling anything trying to stop me. I snapped my fingers, I saw Neo tilt her head in confusion out of the corner of my eye, she cleared her throat before asking, did you, do something, as she nudged the body with her foot, I nodded my head while a smug smile spread on my face, tear win, yup, since he had the audacity to bleed on you, I decided to send its soul somewhere special, instead of letting it go back to the seat of creation where all destroyed souls go. Big Sister Lilith had sent someone who called themselves the one above all to the same universe stripped of all their divinity and authority. I thought they could use a sister. Neo, the one above all? The Marvel God? I thought you just sent him to the Shadow Realm, the real. Ah, the reincarnated guy escaped, didn't he? Maybe that's for the better though. We can kill off all his infected friends, then his system and then him. I also wanna rob the gun runners too on the way. Neo tapped her chin in thought at getting something special from these so-called gun runners. Tear win, yup, that's the one. And sounds like a plan to meet Ilda. As we were making our way out of the now further destroyed city I decided to tell her exactly where I had sent that foolish mortal soul. Tear win, by the way, if you're curious, Lilith called the universe I sent him her to, 
the Goblin Hunter universe. She and a former god are now cursed to eternally live out their lives as human women with a penchant to want to be adventurous Tilda. Well, at least till that universe dies anyway. I could feel Neo shiver a little at my clarification. Neo, Goblin Kelly, Goblin Cosby. I pity them. She then saluted to the sky. I thought it was funny and so I imitated the gesture while giggling. 136. Side Story. Tia Wins Adventure. Part 3. It had taken us a few hours, but we had finally cleared out the out edge of the outer Vegas area of the Corrupted. The only place left was a Camp MC Karen, as that was where Neo thought the Light Scout would be. Her main reasoning was that it had the most of those soldiers stationed there and she suspected that the Light Scout would try to use them to reinforce his feeble attempt to resist her. She had one thing left on her checklist before we attacked though, and that was to get some loot from some people called the Gun Runners. It didn't take her very long, or much of any effort though, as all she had to do, was bonk a robot into next week, and bust into a pathetic shack and stash all the weapons into her system inventory. No one tried to prevent her from leaving either. Several were overcome by pure lust because of how awesome she is, while others were cowering at her casual display of superhuman feats. She broke some reinforced glass with a simple knuckle tap of her hand, and it exploded like it was hit by a tank shell. As we were making our way to the last, and largest, base these NCR soldiers had, Neo suddenly got a thoughtful look while rubbing an imaginary beard on her chin. After humming to herself for a few seconds she said, You know, I actually have an artoria of my own, kinda. My ears perked up at that and I was instantly looking at her in curiosity and asked, Oh, Neo, yup. Though you can't exactly call her artoria. She came into being in a pretty unique way. Wanna see her? Tear win. I do. I do. Neo then started to interact with her chat group thing the system provided her. It was quite an interesting feature, and I was fascinated by it. Whoever created this system has some power behind them. It tunneled through reality to send the chat messages to each of the entities connected to Neo's so via the system. If I wasn't sitting right on her like this, I wouldn't even notice that she was talking to other people at all. I couldn't resist, and decided to read what was happening. Greater than Neo squared. Hey Mama Bird. Is Archeria near you? Greater than Yang Sumi Mummy. She's currently beating on Excalibur while we're teaching the kids. So yeah, she's here. Greater than Neo Squared. Mind sending her over? New friend wants to see her and I'm on my nefarious shit. About to make a crater. Greater than Ice Cream Bee. I love the sound of that. Greater than Yang Sumi Mummy. One second. Oh and get back here with Blake soon. Turns out you were right and those reincarnators are on the moon somehow. Greater than Neo squared. Shouldn't be too long. Thanks, Ray. After about a minute later, I felt someone trying to tunnel into my universe using the connection they had with Neo. I wonder if I can only feel that because I am sitting on her as well. A few seconds later. A connection was established and a portal opened up. A woman who looked like my sister but several years older, and a lot more mature looking stepped out. Her blue robes that either failed to hide her impressive bust or deliberately accentuated it flowed around here eagerly. She quickly locked eyes with Neo, rushed to her, and brought her into an almost bone-grushing hug. Archeria, Master I should have gone with you to that other world to begin with. I are uh, it is good to see you. Archeria lightly smiled before putting Neo down and then noticed my presence on top of Neo's head. My eyes opened wide at how she looked, and I giggled as her hand passed through me a few times when she tried to give me a head pat. Tear win. Woo. She's super interesting. She looks like a more mature form of Artoria and she isn't a human either. Cool. After looking at her for a few seconds, I tiled my head in thought. With a hum I said, but, she looks weird without the corruption lines my Artoria has. Neo, oh yours is an all too then? Nice. Neo nodded appreciatively as Archeria blinked and looked at both of us with a bit of confusion. Tear win. Alter? My eyes glowed pink for a few seconds before I put a fist in my open palm and had an aha. Look about me. With pride I said, yes, she's an altar. 
but so, so much more. Neo then started to resume her walk towards base MC Karen while nodding her head and speaking. Neo, yeah, I'm talking appearance-wise. I'm under the impression there's quite a bit different about your Artoria. With amusement in my voice I said, Also, I think the name Yang Sumi Mummy is a funny name. I couldn't help but giggle at the name for her even in the chat group. Neo, it's the truth and nothing but the truth. She is, in fact, yummy. Neo tried to hide the sudden lust on her face as she thought about Raven, but I could see it a mile away. Internally I smiled and nodded. As I had to agree with her, Raven really was beautiful. As Neo coughed to try and school her face some more, Archeria had a question. Archeria, Mars. Neo, Neo. Archeria, Neo. What are you talking about? Do you know of my past wielder? I couldn't help but giggle wildly while raising my hands up and swinging them around with vigor. Tearwin, know her? He he, she's my sister, though, I very much doubt that my Artoria was your exact master. The Omniverses are huge after all but she's at least one version of your original master. Yes, Archeria had gained a thoughtful face as she mulled over the small revelation. She seemed to be deliberating something with herself before she nodded and looked up at Neo. Neo had raised an eyebrow but I could practically feel the anxiety she was feeling. Smiling at Neo and shaking her head, she spoke with utter confidence. Archeria, then I hope she is well. Manio is my current wielder. Something about her makes her worthy, though I won't say exactly what now. What is our goal, Neo? I am sure love has a huge part of it. You just need to realize it, Tilda. Smiling at Archeria, Neo said, Thanks, Archeria. We're off to go kill a reincarnator and the people he infected, we'll explain on the way there. As I saw Neo grab Archeria by the waist and pull her in, I couldn't help the mischievous glint that appeared in my eyes. Conjuring up two dolls that looked exactly like the two, I started to giggle. Tear win, now kiss. My giggling and the sweet tone of voice I used attracted their attention. When they both looked up at me, and saw what I was doing. Neo smirked while Archeria started to blush wildly. Archeria, WH. What? Yo, why would I? I mean not that master isn't. She couldn't handle it anymore, and tried to reach out to grab the dolls but sadly for her she just phased right through me. Neo had taken out some sort of candy from her system inventory and then looked at Archeria with a sensual gaze while raising and lowering her brows repeatedly. I silently giggled as I could see the metaphysical steam rise from Archeria's head as her blush deepened even further. Unable to take the teasing any more, she reverted to her weapon form and was caught by a laughing Neo. Giving Neo a few head pats I said, she's cute. I approve. Neo, right? You're good at messing with people. Good job, plush win. She then popped the candy in her mouth and kissed the base of the lance Archeria had turned into. The lance that I recognized as wrong a mini ad now, hummed in surprise. Well, I also heard her soul yelp in excitement too, but I kept that to myself. Over the next ten minutes we explained the situation to Archeria of how the light corruption was completely rewriting the people it infected along with the basic enslavement that seemed to irk Neo the most. By the end of the explanation, we had finally reached the base camp. MC Karen where a large number of infected soldiers were waiting. Neo was grinning with maliciousness as she approached the heavily defended gate. Looking down at the lance I said, You may not be my sister's Excalibur Morgan, but I feel great power from you. I can't wait to see you in action. End of block 2